Let me take you back to the uh, mid 70s, my preteen years. I was a military brat. Now, being a military brat, I had grandparents in North Carolina and also in New York. Now, let's take you to North Carolina. Uh, came from a small town called Messick, M-E-S-I-C. Population was about 200 people, pretty small. We didn't have sidewalks, no street lights. We had one shop that was up the road, and that's all we called it was up the road. I think it was called Tony Shop. It was not only a barber shop, it was a pool hall, it was a candy shop, chicken shack, all that, right? The town was so small, it was actually acceptable to actually hitchhike because nine times out of 10, whoever was coming up the road was family. Now let's take you to the flip side to New York, right? Totally different, Jamaica, Queens, right? To get to the corner store, you had to pass through a couple different neighborhoods. Just, we're talking three blocks, right? So each block fought one another. So as a child in the 70s, this was actually quite scary, but I always wanted to get to that corner store and everything. So one of the things that I've learned through growing up in my early teen years, uh, actually preteen years, was that, you know, life, life just will throw stuff your way and you just have to adapt. That was just life for me. I, I didn't see any difference. It was just you dealt with and you just played the hand that you were dealt. <laughs> Picture this, an 11 year old boarding a plane to leave to another country. That was life for me as a military brat. You know, I was both scared, but also intrigued at the same time. What was it gonna be like to live in another country? I was open for it. So we get over to Korea and we lived like two miles off base. And in order to get to the activities that were on base, I actually had choices. I could either walk, I could take a cab, I could take the bus. But when it came to the cabs, you could either take the American cab or you could take the Korean cabs, right? But it was up to me to get to base. Now, when I got to base, here's the thing. They had plenty of activities and I was actually pretty good at a lot of different sports and activities, but I was inconsistent, right? I wanted to break that inconsistency. I've always wondered why the people that were really good all the time were actually really good all the time. So I always made it a point to hang around people that were smarter, faster, more creative than me. That was my life as an 11 year old. One of the things I learned very early on was that if you wanted things, you had to have money. You had to pay for it. So. I always wanted to work. I remember back living on a military base, uh, I used to collect newspapers, uh, aluminum cans. I would wash cars or cut grass in order to make money. And um, there's a point where we moved back from Korea, being a military brat, once again, I would spend summers with my grandparents. Now, picture this, I'm 12 years old in small town, Messick, North Carolina an opportunity came for me to come go and work at the shrimp factory. Now, let me explain to you what working at the shrimp factory is like. So the boats would come in, they would dump the shrimp out in front of you on this, on this big table. You would grab the shrimp, stick your thumb through the necks, pop off the heads and put the shrimp on the conveyor belt. And you got $3 a bucket of heads, right? They would stamp your little thing on the back of your shoulder. But here's what the challenge that I had. I was working with a bunch of adults. They could grab way more shrimp than I could. But guess what? I did the best that I can. And I actually lasted longer than some of those adults. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, 
I've, I've had some setbacks. I've had some experiences. I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person. And, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. Now, if that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch. And um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. Let me take you back to 1988, graduating from high school, going to the mailbox, opening this letter, inviting me to go to George Mason University. Yes, along with some of my classmates, we packed our bags, headed out to this wonderful campus. First semester, hey, it was going great, except for my grades. But second semester, went to this, another mailbox, different letter, inviting me not to come back. That's when I learned that college wasn't for me. I initially got a job, and then I got another job working for Holiday Termite and Pest Control. Not only did I start the job, I actually had a newborn at the same time. Ten years later, after working for this company, I actually ended up buying the company because the owner decided to retire. And here I am owning Holiday to and Pest Control. One of the things I learned in life, sometimes college isn't in for everyone. And you got to find a way. My way was Holiday. <laughs> Here I am, 31 years old, the owner of a pest control company I worked for for the previous 10 years. All I was thinking, I was making 11 bucks an hour before, and I would go to somebody's house, do a service, and I collect a $180 check. $180 check, 11 bucks an hour. Easy math to me, I'm in business. I really thought it was that simple. I just do all this work, this money come in, take care of everything. But for me, I tried to run the business the way the previous owner did. So I invested in the Yellow Pages big time, just like he did, because I was out there doing the work. But guess what? There was a change. There was a shift. That shift was the internet happening. That was the first time that I almost lost my business. But I didn't give up. You had to adapt. You have to figure it out. And I kept pushing. And here it is 20 years later, and I'm still here. So here I am, several years in, operating Holiday to Mind Pest Control. Overcame some challenges, plenty of big challenges, a couple that almost took me out of business. Um, but I always held strong to making sure that I helped others. 
but as hard as I worked, I've always struggled and didn't know why. I think it was about six years ago, I was talking with a friend and she said something to me about CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, right? Where you can take short-term therapy to get to one solution. So I said, you know what? That's probably what I need so I can figure out what's going on. So I went, met with a therapist, and we were working on goal setting because I struggled with goal setting. I struggled with doing things on a routine basis. And she shared something with me. She said, Cleveland, I think you need to go get tested for ADHD. And so I did. I found a psychologist and got tested for ADHD and come to find out I showed up on the spectrum. That was such a life changing moment because now I knew what was holding me back and I could do something about it. And my business actually took off from that point forward. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. One of our core beliefs at Holiday to Mighty Pest Control is just doing right by people. Doing right by people. Let me explain to you what I mean by that. A lot of times when it comes to having a pest inside your home and you think about calling an exterminator, you think about them coming and spraying or putting traps down or bait stations and such, but there's way more to it than just that, right? We didn't spend this time studying and getting certifications for nothing, right? You got something in your house, there had to be a reason why they're in your house, right? And then there's a reason why it, before it even became a reason to come into your house, right? So we try to focus on the reason why you're having a problem before we come up with a solution. We treat people the way we want to be treated. So growing up as a military brat, we were always taught respect, respect for 
people, respect for elders, respect for authority. And that's one of the uh, core values that we have at Holiday to Mind and Pest Control. You know, I remember, uh, I've been doing this for about 30 years now. It's 10 years as working for the company and 20 years in ownership. And I remember a story that one of my clients told me. Um, she's been a client for over 20 some years and she said, Cleveland, she said that you don't know this, but you have the nicest technicians ever. They, while they didn't know my, during a period where my husband passed away, you know, and you having people come to your house, that brings a level of comfort knowing that you have nice people coming to, nice, respectful people coming to your house. And that really hit home with me. And when that hit home, that really shaped how we move forward with the business, really focusing on doing right by people, respect for everyone. <laughs>I am so thankful for being a part of this industry, uh, pest control industry. And with that, one of our core philosophies is giving back, right? We give back in a number of different ways. Uh, me personally, um, this industry has allowed me to employ people, employ people that they're able to use this job to be able to take care of their families. Now together, as we grow, we take that opportunity to take care of others. We've done things like uh, went over to Haiti after um, the earthquakes. We've uh, we've helped build homes in after Katrina. We've been able to help the local community uh, with respect to supporting local nonprofits who work with uh, school-aged children to put them in better posi positions to do better by themselves. Like we've been blessed to be able to do. So I have to say that one of our core philosophies is giving back. I'm sometimes asked, why do people do business with Holiday to Mind Pest Control? And, you know, I really take that to heart. Uh, I know what it's like to go online to order a service provider to come to your home because you don't know them. You have no clue. And we've experienced that ourselves. So it is very important to us that we show up professionally, knowing what we're doing, deliver the best services that we possibly can, and be clear with respect to what you're purchasing so that when we leave your home, you feel like you made a great decision when you chose Holiday to Mind and Pest Control. We want to make you the hero of your household. What I enjoyed most about um, the Make Another Entrepreneur today was the snacks. There, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you know what? They, um, you know, I was challenged to dig deep, really, and to really understand, you know, who. Who, who am I, you know, as it conveys to uh, uh, not only uh, my clients, you know, to my family, to my friends, to the general public, and having that experience of, of really digging deep into who I am is, is, um, is just rewarding. I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like <laughs> banging at your door. How would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very closely because this might be you, so listen very carefully. 
they're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, Easy saleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. The making of an entrepreneur, you know, the making of Marcus say right, the creative right mentality. Where did this journey start? It really started in 1971, February 10th, when I was born. When I came out, my father told me that there is something special about you and you're gonna change the world. You just need to understand what you need to do. At that point, my grandparents were so nurturing. I was so blessed to have my grandparents for as long as I did. They pushed me and made me believe that I could do anything that I wanted to do. So being an entrepreneur was something that I knew that I was destined to be because I had a message that I needed to give to the world, hence right mentality. I created that because you have to have the right mentality to move forward in the world. The world is very difficult. Each day we, we're, we're faced with challenges that all of us have to figure out how we get through them. And for me, the fortunate thing was I had so many people, my dad, my mom, my grandparents, both on both sides of the family, pushing me through, helping me understand that I could do whatever I wanted to do. So I knew right then and there, right mentality was what the world needed to see. So I created it, and it's been fantastic ever since it started. Remember, it did start February 10th, 1971, and now we're in 2022, and it's just evolved. There's so many things coming your way that I can't even begin to tell you, but the right mentality will touch you, your team, your heart, your businesses, and everything else in the world that you're trying to do. Why? Because we help you understand that you can do anything that you want to do as long as you put your mind to it. And we show you how to do that. So as I told you about myself a little bit, where I started February 10th, 1971, now I wanna bring you a little forward to my life, being an adolescent, right? Starting to play football, favorite sport in the world. I know a lot of people will probably laugh about this. Favorite team in the world is Cowboys. I'm a diehard Cowboys fan, right? We were on top in the 70s, we were on top in the 90s. Now we kinda, you know, gotta rebuild everything. But that's how life happens. Life happens that way. We have to continue to evolve. We have our ups and our downs. So going back, to my childhood adolescence, playing football, one of the most important things in my life for me. Oh man, let me tell you, being on a gridiron, 
playing with my friends, learning how to get things going, but I didn't know what was happening to me. I didn't understand that I was developing leadership qualities. I remembered my dad told me there was something special about you. You have a mission that you have to do. And I remember my grandparents and my mom pushing that along and helping me to understand that. But it didn't click until I started playing football. And then it clicked, something just happened. At that very moment of being on the team and then being the leader of the team, helping people on the team to understand their positions, getting them hyped up for the games, because you know you gotta be hyped up when you get out there to play a football game. You can't be sitting back, relax. You have to be ready to go. So boy, when I got out there and I was telling the team what we needed to do, the coach noticed that, Mr. Evans. Mr. Evans was a great influence in my life. He said, Marcus, I think you have what it takes to lead this team. I was like, whoa, that's a big responsibility for somebody in sixth grade, you know, because I had already went through the first two years. But I took the, the, the leap and became the captain of the team. And I helped my teammates understand that we can evolve as a unit, we can get better as a unit, and we can work together, and we can beat every single team that we face. And we did. And our biggest challenge was against St. Mary's of Francis. And we were losing at halftime by two touchdowns. But when we went into the half to start talking, I don't know what happened. I guess the right mentality started clicking at a young age, and I started pushing. And when we came back out, we squeaked by, but we won 24-21. Leadership was when I knew right then and there that I could be the best leader because I enjoyed myself being on the team. <laughs>I got to bring y'all back up to speed. Now we went through sixth grade and I'm enjoying myself. But then I moved beyond that and I went to eighth grade. You know, the important part of junior high where everything matters before you go to high school. Well, at that time in my life, I was still playing football. And let me tell you, I was enjoying everything about it. But then I also ran track. I didn't like that too much. You just did that to stay in shape at the time. But the season ended, the football season ended, and there was the banquet. And at the banquet, this was the first time that the junior, the, the, what do we call ourselves, the Pee Wee League or whatever we were at the time, I can't remember. It was a little bit ago for me, but we had our banquet. And in the banquet, I was sitting in the audience, and they named the whole team, and we all got our trophies and we started to get ready to have dinner, but they stopped. I had no idea what was going on. My dad was there, my mom was there, my grandparents showed up, so I thought that was odd for me. Like I said, I had a great support system. But when my grandparents showed up, I didn't know what was going on. And Mr. Evans, to me, the greatest coach to ever live for a young man learning to play football, got up, and he said, our sportsmanship award, the MVP of the team, the young man that was thrust into leadership to lead his team as a captain and did it with such humbleness, Marcus Wright. Now I'm looking around like, oh, did he just say my name? But he did. And I went up. And I thought it was gonna be just shaking a hand and thank you, Mr. Evans, and sitting back down. They said, you gotta give a speech. Now just imagine being a 13 year old young man having to give a speech in front of 75 people and you have no idea what you're gonna say. But I remember what my father had always told me, there was something special about you. So I gave a speech. It's probably the best speech I ever gave for a 13-year-old boy that never gave a speech. Yeah, I cried because it was so emotional. 
I didn't know what to say, but I knew what to say. But I didn't know what to say, but it all came out so great. And everybody loved the story. And I cried, but I walked away understanding that I had a gift that God gave to me. And I was able to speak to adults and my peers, and they respected that. Wow, right mentality was really taken off. I just didn't know what it was at the time. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The Making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, this one, pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch. And um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. What did I leave off? Oh, I remember. Now I'm done with eighth grade, gave the greatest speech I've ever given in my life. I'm in high school now. Now, I was torn because I wanted to go to two schools. I wanted to go to the school that my big brother, my god brother went to, which was St. Joe's. But then I also wanted to be at Proviso East because that's where my friends were. So that was the first real fork in the road, the decision to decide on where I'm gonna go, what I'm gonna do, which school am I gonna go to. So I ended up choosing St. Joe's because I wanted to be with uh, my god brother. So when I got there, you know, I picked up right where I left off and started playing ball and just rocking it on the field. I stayed there for two years. It was great. And then my parents said, well, we got to transfer you to Proviso East. So I went there without a problem. It was exciting. At least I thought it was when I first got there. Because it wasn't a problem of playing for the position, challenging the other person, even though he was my best friend. It was the fact that things changed. And as much as I was able to and was taught to deal with change, that was a very difficult change for me to transfer from one high school to another high school. I mean, it was great because the first high school was all boys, but this one was a bunch of girls in there. So I was pretty excited. You know, I get to talk to a lot of girls that I went to school with, some of the girls that I liked, but it wasn't the same for me because I felt like the leadership changed in me. The person that I was, I kind of started losing and 
not remembering because I didn't push myself as hard because it was different. It wasn't based on ability, it was based on politics. And I couldn't believe that in high school that politics were already hitting as if I were already in college or in my adult life. So the struggle to get through that was, was difficult. It was hard. It was me trying to figure out who I was. So what happened? My armor, the Marcus A. Wright armor, started to chip away. The right mentality that I knew so dearly, so believed in so much, hearing that I could do anything and be everything, started chipping away. Challenge. How do I move to the next level? How do I deal with the decision that my parents made for me? How do I survive in this new, new arena for myself? I had a lot to think about. My first real challenge. <laughs> Like I said, the challenge hit. It wasn't easy for me. It was difficult. The reason it was difficult was because I had to do something different. I had to really compete against my friends. I had to figure out who I was. I had to begin to understand if I could still lead. I don't know, I think something just came over me and, and maybe it was fear, or maybe it was confusion. I couldn't tell you. But at that time, things shifted for me. Well, as much as I love football, and most people that know me, if you don't, I'm going to tell you, I love football a lot, like a, a whole lot. I sit and watch football all the time and analyze it because I love it so much. But it was strange to lose the love for the game that I love so dearly. I just lost all desire to play. But then it was like, you did good enough. You had enough scholar, you know, college letters come through. Colleges wanted to talk to you. So it was kind of exciting. You were going to these college visits. Everybody's looking at you and they're talking about, oh, you're a pretty quick running back. Let's bring you out here. Let's talk to you. I didn't want to go. I just lost all my desire. But I didn't realize what I was doing was kind of losing myself and trying to figure out who I was. So after that, fast forward a little bit. I go through. I get to college. I stay there a year. I get bored with it. Didn't like it, thought about walking on, didn't play ball, just gave it all the way up. But again, right mentality was always there. Marcus A. Reich was always there. But trying to figure out how to lead seemed to have escaped me. I got lost. I got lost in the world. And it was strange to feel that way. The second challenge of my life, trying to find myself trying to make the entrepreneur that's there. I was confused, dazed, like a punch drunk boxer, trying to figure out what my next move would be. I thought about it, and then I thought about it again. And then I thought about it one more time. I couldn't figure it out. So I made a lot of bad decisions. A lot of them for myself and for the son that I had on the way. It was very confusing. Like I said, confused, dazed, and I had a son. So at that point, I knew I needed to, to take care of him. So my focus was on being a dad at 22 years old. That's what I focused on. I did my best to be the best dad that I could be. But it was difficult because his mom and I didn't really see eye to eye. So that made things really hard. And then the armor, that's right, that Marcus A. Wright armor chipped a little bit more. And it was weird because Nothing really affected me, at least so I thought. Because again, I grew up with a dad that told me I could do anything, with a mom that supported everything that I did, with grandparents on both sides of my family telling me, you have a gift, you're special, and you're supposed to do something. But man, at that time in my life, 
I couldn't figure out nothing. I was completely and utterly like walking through the world like what on God's green earth is happening to me right now. And then I was dealt a blow. My grandfather passed. Man, you talk about hitting like a ton of bricks. I couldn't believe he was gone. Like this was the guy that took me on the expressway, on the highway to drive when I was 15 years old. This was the guy that told me, no matter what anybody says, Marcus, you can do it. In that voice, and I can still hear it to this day. This was the guy that told and taught my father how to be a dad. So I was ready to roll, but when he died, I didn't know what to do. I was confused. Like, I can't believe he's gone. And then fast forward three years from that, the biggest blow I've had in my life, my grandmother passed. And that was hard. That was the most trying thing that I ever dealt with because I had to go to the hospital and I had to literally take control. Why? Because my dad was in the hospital with lupus and pancreatitis. And my uncles were fighting because they were angry because the doctors wouldn't do anything to save her. But she had her wishes, which was, I've lived long enough, I'm tired, I've educated everybody, it's time for me to roll out. You know, like Optimus Prime, transform and roll out. That's what she decided to do. So I took care of things until my dad checked himself out of the hospital and got there. And when he got there, life got easy. Decisions were easy. But you know what? When she passed, even though a part of me passed and my armor chipped a little bit more, I started to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I started to see the leadership in me coming back because I actually controlled the entire situation in a good way to make sure that my family was looking all right at this hospital. So that's what I did. I controlled the situation. I led my uncles. I told them what they needed to do, talked to my aunt, and we wrapped everything up and we did the right thing for my grandmother. So the leadership was coming back. The right mentality was coming back. Man, I can't wait to tell you what happened next. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now, I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience. If you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm going to invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact, and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want, or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm going to invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button. It'll say, apply to speak go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story 
over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Ah, where was I? Oh, I started getting better with leadership. Unfortunately, it was when my grandmother passed. So I thought. 2007, I lost my father. That was difficult. It knocked me off my feet. I didn't know where I was going. My wife, my daughters were all concerned because I was different. I was quiet. I was negative. I wasn't the positive, I could do anything person. The person that was born February 10th, 1971 and taught that he could do anything, I was different. And I started to realize that, but I didn't know how to change it. I didn't know how to fix it. I didn't know how to be different. So I started to get my mojo back for a minute. The right mentality started to come back in me. The market say right started back. 2007, my dad died and I just floated through life. And then what happened? Hmm. In 2014, November 1st, as you can see my hand, I was just rolling through life. Then my younger brother died. My life just went down in my mind. I totally felt defeated that I couldn't do anything at all. All those days of playing football, all those days of being a leader on the team, all those days of being a captain, all those days of listening and believing that I could do anything that I wanted to do. And then my life came crashing down four times in a row. 97, 2000, 2007, 2014. I didn't know what was going on. All that power that I felt that I had, all that power that I was told that I had, all the abilities that I was taught that I could do, they all kind of went away because I just didn't know what was going on. I faced a challenge that I didn't know how I was going to get through it. I was confused. I was more than a dazed, drunk punk, uh, drunk punch boxer. I was knocked out. You know, like Mike Tyson used to knock people out all the time. I was on the canvas. I couldn't get up. I was just out. I couldn't breathe. Food didn't taste the same. I just lost who I was. My wife tried her best to pick up the pieces. My daughters and my son tried to make me feel better but I was just there walking through life. The person that was told he could do anything, the making of an entrepreneur, where was he at? Looks like he was disappearing. He was fading away. I couldn't tell you, not at that time, not at all. <laughs> Yeah, like I said last time, I was knocked out. I was down. But you know, my wife stood there. She picked me up. My daughters were there. They picked me up. My son was there. He picked me up. And I slowly started to feel like myself. Then COVID hit and changed a few more things. But during that time, my friend, my business partner, Sean, Sean Fair called me up. I was like, dog, we've been doing this leadership experience tour for a minute. You got to get up, man. What you doing? Come on, dog. Let's go. It started to feel different. I started to feel a little more like myself. I started to feel like, you know, Marcus A. Wright was coming back. I started to feel like the right mentality was coming back. I had a cheerleading squad on the right pushing me through with my family telling me, you got this. And I started realizing there's not a challenge I can not do. You were born for this. You were born to be Marcus A. Right. You were born to create the right mentality. And I had a friend that God put in my life along with my family. And Sean was there to help his friend. 25 year friendship. 
but he turned me around a little bit. He made me realize that I could just go on and roll through it. So you know me, if you know anything about me, I love comics, I collect them all. Thor is my favorite comic book hero on Marvel, and Batman on DC. I'm gonna tell you why. There's nothing Batman can't do. He puts his mind to it, he has a contingency plan to stop everyone in the Justice League members. And Thor, well, you know, he's just powerful. I'm just telling you, that's what happened. And I started waking up, and I realized I was Batman and Thor, and I was a creator of the right mentality. Now, you've been hearing that right mentality for a minute. Let me explain to you really quick what that is. The right mentality is a mantra to have courage of a lion and resilience of an eagle, two powerful animals that roam this planet. You don't hear about too many of them in the Bible, but you do hear about those two. So God put them here for a reason. So I took them and I modeled that right mentality after that. Why? Because my father, my grandfather, my grandmother, my mother all told me there's nothing I can't do. I can do anything. So I'm telling you, the making of an entrepreneur, you're looking at them. I take names and dominate because that's what I do. And I have great friends around me. So you surround yourself with great people, like my family, all of them, and my friend, Sean Fair. And I'm just gonna tell you, we're about to change the world. Now I gotta finish this. I have to finish this. You know, cause this market say right. That man has started the right mentality. Here, let me tell you this. Going through all the things that I've gone through, having the family that I had to be behind me, man, you can't go wrong with that. So what happened? Well, I learned a little bit more about myself. I like people. So I learned how to read people, body language, microbursts and facial expressions. I became certified in behavior. I became certified in emotional intelligence and definitely adaptability. That's right, I'm certified in all of those. Why are those things important? Well, I can tell you flat out. Even though you have a family that's there and you have a friend that's there, if you're not ready to move forward, you can't. But I can tell you what Right Mentality did. I can tell you what Marcus A. Wright did. He learned to adapt. Adapt to every change that happened to him throughout his life. He became emotionally aware. Self-awareness was the other weapon that he had. Oh, and let me tell you about this brother here. Let me tell you. Nothing he can't do because it's been taught, told, instilled, poured into him from the time he was born that I could do anything. So the making of an entrepreneur is a man or woman that falls and gets back up. I mean, even though they fall again, they get back up. But see, the key is learning to adapt. The key is understanding self-awareness. And the most important key behind those two keys is having the right people around you. So as you're becoming that entrepreneur, you have to make a decision on the people you're gonna allow be around you and in your life. Because I can tell you right now, as you're making that journey, there are some people you're just gonna have to cut out. And you just got to be able to deal with that. Now, some people may have a hard time with that, but the question I have for you today is, what do you want to do for you? How do you want to succeed? You see, every day I start off with a word, a word of the day, the right mentality word of today. I can tell you right now, I got one right at this very moment. Woohoo! Boy, let me tell you, the right mentality word for this segment is unstoppable. Why? Think about a lion roam in the jungle, thinking about trying to get food for his family, for the pride. He is, she is, they are unstoppable. 
So I'm going to ask you a question before I end this. What are you going to do so that you make sure that you're unstoppable? Because you know what? All the stuff I've been through, I didn't realize one thing. I'm unstoppable. There's not a force on this planet that can stop me. The making of an entrepreneur, you looking at it. I make the world go round. Why? Because I have a gift and I need to give it to the people out there. So I thank you for listening. Now you're probably wondering, why do people, why do companies want to work with Marcus A. Wright? Let me tell you. You see, when I go into a place, a place to help some people, to help a company, I'm a problem solver. That's what I do. I'm brought in to look at the situation, to assess it, to figure out what's going on. And it is a lot of fun. It's just like playing chess. You just can't go and rush. You gotta be strategic. And because I'm there to be strategic for that company, because I'm there to help them to better themselves, to understand EQ, that's right, emotional intelligence, the most important skill for any organization, because you have to have emotional intelligent leaders to move forward. And your teams need to be self-aware. So when those are areas that are lacking, they bring in Marcus Hay Wright. And when he comes, he brings the right mentality. And what does that mean? I'm gonna remind you again. The right mentality is to have a courage of a lion and a resilience of an eagle. You see, all companies want to make sure and ensure that they're doing the best for their employees so that their employees can help them make the most money that they possibly can. But in some cases, we have environments that are tough. And what I do and what companies ask me to do is to come right in and solve that problem. Look at the situation, assess it, and give us the best plan of attack. And more than likely, it will definitely surround emotional intelligence, adaptability intelligence, and understanding your team's personality. When you take those three things and you combine them and you put it together, there's nothing your company can't do. It's just like I was taught as a kid. You can do anything you want to do as long as you put your mind to it. You take those three things and you help those people in your company to think that way, to solve that problem, you got to force because you got 15, 20, 30, 40, 100, 200 people working toward the same goal. That's why people bring me into their companies because I help them solve their problem using adaptability, emotional intelligence, and personality. Thank you for your time. Hey, look, let me tell you about this. The making of an entrepreneur. Man, I have been working with the most phenomenal team I've worked with. That's right, media expertise. Let me tell you about this team. This team takes a lot of time to make sure that you are covered correctly in the docu-series, that your photos are on point. And you know what else they do? They make you feel at home. They make you feel like you're not Filming, they make you feel like you're just a part of their team. They're funny. They want to give you the best of them so they can get the best of you. They want to make you feel like you're family. They want to make you feel like you're a part of them. So when you come in, it's going to be the most fun and wonderful experience that you will have. Media expertise, all of them. That's right. They're an expert in what they do. They make you feel pleasant so that they can bring the best in you out in the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. So this is what I would tell you. You need to get down here. You need to reach out. You need to talk to Shea Brown and his team. You need to let him know, man, I heard about this experience that Marcus A. Wright talked about, and I got to have it because I'm going to tell you right now, this team makes you feel at home. They make you feel wonderful. And they're going to help you bring the best of you out. What more could you ask for, ask for when you're going to be filmed or you're going to take photos? So get down here. Reach out to Shea Brown. 
His team is phenomenal. I had a fantastic experience. And I thank each and every one of them for their time, but I also thank them for making me feel at home. Because as I told my story, it was not easy for me, but they helped me believe that I could tell it. What more could you ask for from an organization? Thank you, media expertise. <laughs>
And so that time in my career was a disaster. And so actually something that I look forward to all of my career is something that I choose to forget most of the time now because it was such an unpleasant experience. <laughs> Still a senior manager in corporate America, still yearning to be um, at the next level as a vice president, um, just working within um, the structure that I was working within. I had a boss that actually I adored, but I just could not seem to get promoted under this particular boss. Um, some of the things that she cited was, she cited a misspelled word in an email, but she referenced the email that was several years old um, that was one reason why I couldn't be promoted. She thought that I maybe could use a class in grammar because I misspelled the word several years back. Another reason she gave was um, visibility. Not enough people knew me throughout the organization. But that wasn't true because in my role, I was the most senior individual in that role and I was all over the organization. And so although I adored this boss, um, I just could not get promoted under her. And so as a certified diversity executive, I kind of chopped it off as that it was some sort of unconscious bias that I was experiencing that maybe she wasn't aware of it. Um, and I wasn't aware of it at the time, but I could not be promoted under her. But ironically, when she retired, I was immediately promoted to the next level. So that's kind of how that story ended. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. Now, if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. So here I am a non-traditional student with children three, two, and one, obviously under the age of five that require childcare. I had made the decision to pivot and put my life back on track and pursue my college degree. And obviously I had
quite a few, few barriers. Now I was working full time in addition to attending college classes and I also had a family, but I also had community and support to help me. And through that experience, I learned some powerful lessons. One, to accept help. Um, two, to know when you need help. And three, to anything that I really want to do that I can do, as long as I think through it and see what resources that are available to me to pursue through it. So the lesson for me was that anything that I put my mind to and that I have the resources to pursue it, that more than likely I can obtain it. And so that was a defining moment for me. So here I am a senior manager and I wanna be in leadership. And I don't know any senior leader who looks like me. I can't actually put my hand on a senior leader to ask that individual to mentor me. And so what I did was I did something that was unconventional at the time, this was over a decade ago, is I went up on LinkedIn and I researched and found a woman of color who was in a vice president position. And I shot her a DM and said, will you be my mentor and sent her my resume. And she came back and said, yes. And to the tune of $350 an hour. And so middle manager, Karen, $350 an hour is a lot of money now. And it was certainly a lot of money then. But my working with her for one hour a month for one year, resulted in my being promoted, promoted into senior leadership because she helped me develop a romance for data. And I learned the power of analytics, the power to be able to forecast, monitor, and follow up. So I found myself in an unusual but happy place in my career. After 14 years of being with my employer, I was tapped on the shoulder and told that I would succeed my boss. So everyone would love, anyone who has ever worked any particular job, you love getting a tap on the shoulder and say that the next job in your career progression is yours. No application, no interview, it's yours. So she had announced her retirement. So they, for one year, began to move over tasks um, from her because I would succeed her. But one year passed and she was still on deck. And a year and a half passed and she was still on deck. And then year two, nobody was even talking about retirement. So it was now the elephant in the room. At this point, I knew that she was hesitating about retiring. But as an HR professional, I knew we couldn't force anyone to retire. And so I made the difficult decision to leave the job that I loved, a company whose mission I love because I knew I was ready to go to the next level. And so I resigned and I was promoted to senior leadership for an external company. But ironically, you never know how things are gonna shift out and pan out because I only stayed at that position for eight months. And then I was blessed with the opportunity to get the super top position of CHRO, which is a C-suite executive. And I learned from that experience that you have to trust yourself. You have to be qualified when the opportunity presents itself. And sometimes you have to do something that hurts for now to benefit for later. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. 
you're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. So what would I tell my 21-year-old self? Well, that your ability to pivot will sustain you. And what do I mean by that? Simply, I mean that even the most well-oiled plan, you're going to sometimes come across distractions. And you need to know how to think of a plan B and sometimes C. Use your community, your resources, get help from others, but keep your eye on your prize, your goal, because your ability to keep moving forward towards your goal, your ability to pivot will sustain you. Look, relentless execution will yield results. And what I mean by that is that I was once teenage divorcee, children three, two, and one, and now I am a C-suite executive. There is a lot of experience between those two statuses in my life. I kept moving. I kept moving beyond obstacles. I kept you moving beyond no. I found another way. And the, the goal is to keep moving. The word relentless is unyielding. And so I want you to keep moving towards whatever that it is for you. Just remember, relentless execution yields results. Your circle will elevate your success. And what I mean by that is you partnering with like-minded individuals, you partnering with subject matter experts, you partnering with peers who have like-minded goals, professional goals, entrepreneurial goals, just like you. Seeking those individuals who are a step up beyond you, who are where you want to be. Those individuals will help you get there quicker with less hiccups in the process and sometimes it will save you time and money. So remember your circle and that's your circle of acquaintances, 
entrepreneur friends, family members sometime will elevate your success. So why would an organization hire my company? Well, only three to 4% of women are senior leaders in business. And it's not because of a lack of talent, it's because of a lack of knowledge. Individuals in my company, myself included, are individuals who have walked the walk and now we talk the talk and share information. And what I mean by that is, such as myself, I moved from a frontline employee to a C-suite executive. We have current C-suite senior leaders. We have individuals who share knowledge, resources, and sometimes networks who can share with your organization a blueprint that has been tested to get into the C-suite for your female leaders within your organization. What I enjoy most about participating in the making of an entrepreneur is the ability to kind of recount my walk to where I am today. Um, thinking about those uh, defining moments in my career, being able to work with professionals who bring the best out of me. I hadn't even thought about some of those instances because a lot of times when we go through things, we forget. And so what I enjoy about this experience is being able to put on record that you can overcome some things and still achieve your goals. And what better way to do it than to work with a bunch of subject matter professionals. It's been a blast. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like <laughs> banging at your door. How would your life be different um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference? What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door. Boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you. So listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking. They like you. There's conversation going on but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't wanna work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y Sales, S-A-L-E-S, Hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. So I remember it was my very favorite Christmas. I was about eight years old. We had just moved to this small town, Willis, Texas. And my mom came and told us, look, you're not gonna have a Christmas this year. 
We just moved, we don't have money. She was pregnant with my sisters at the time. And so it was, it was six of us. We were sad, but we wanted her not to feel bad. So we were okay with it. And we were in the room, I remember, just playing around, trying to just get okay with the situation, thinking we wasn't going to have Christmas. Not just presents, but no food, no um, bags of fruit and candy. We were told nothing. So we heard this knock on the door. And my mom was like, be quiet, y'all go back in the room, be quiet. And so we, we're nosy. So we're like, what's going on? Who out there? We don't know anybody. We just moved to this, this new city. And so we heard them talking quietly. And all of a sudden we heard my mom cry. And my mom is this strong woman. She's a single mother, strong. So I really never saw my mom cry. So we rushed out at that point because we're very protective of our mother. So we rushed out and there was this group of people just there. I, I, couldn't, I can't tell you how they looked or anything, but only thing I saw was just a wall full of gifts, a wall full of um, a table, had food on it, and we just started jumping around. And, and I was eight, so I didn't really understand the real, um, the severity in, the, in my mom's emotions, but I saw her face and the tears. And, and I heard one woman say, don't cry. We all need help sometime. Just realize that people are here for you. We saw you move into this town with these beautiful kids and we just wanted to help. And at that time I was so excited, but I was just looking at these people like they didn't know us at all, but they were still helping us. And it just made me feel so happy because I, I was so sad at first. And that feeling just made me realize that that you're really not in this world alone. And it just gave me this feeling of hope, mostly for my mom, because it was just such a beautiful thing with her crying and seeing that emotion. And yeah, I guess it was such mixed feelings of, of joy, but still sadness and still, you know, mostly joy. That's how I was feeling. So we're walking across the street, five kids, buckets in our hands, pans, buckets, whatever we could find, going over to Miss Pearl's house. I had to be, I don't know, maybe around seven years old. We were going over there to get water. My mom, single parent, and her, our water got turned off. As a kid, I really didn't understand that this was truly life, that we had to go across the street, uh, in order to have water to drink. Uh, we had to have water to take baths and cook. So my mom always made things seem like, you know, this is what's going on, we're gonna figure it out, we're gonna fix it. But as a kid, at first I didn't think too much of it. When I was going over to Miss Pearl's house because she was so sweet and accommodating, y'all go right on out there, fill it up, and go on back across that street and be careful. But then some kids saw us one day. And they were like, what are y'all doing? And me young, I'm like, we have to get water so we can eat and, and take baths and stuff. And they started laughing and talking about, oh, y'all, y'all poor, y'all on welfare and food stamps. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, you know, that's how we eat, not realizing that that's not what everybody is doing. So it was really at that time I was feeling like, so we're not normal. So this is not normal. People don't all the time have to go across the street in order to get water so that they can eat and take baths and, and cook. And then thankfully our heat was on, um, so we were able to, to boil the water to have, but some days it was cold baths. Some days, you know, we, we just really struggled, but it was, you know, it was natural for us because we just did whatever we had to do in order for my mom not to feel bad about not being able to provide for us uh, in the way that I'm guessing other kids didn't go through. At the time, I did not feel like it was something that was unusual until, you know, kids are cruel, until those kids were making fun of us and my mom had to sit down and tell us, yeah, you know, this month we didn't, Mommy didn't make enough money to pay the water, so we have to do what we have to do. And luckily, 
thankfully, Miss Pearl is allowing us to use her water. So every, and I didn't realize we were getting up early just so other kids wouldn't see us. My mom tried to protect us from those things. And, and now when I'm looking back on it and I'm thinking about how I felt then, um, it's a little sad when you realize that you're not, that you didn't have the resources that most people in America is supposed to have. But in a sense, I still felt joy that I didn't feel um, bad about myself, just about my situation. So yeah, that's how I felt. So I get home, open up the letter. Today is finally here, the foreclosure letter. <sighs> I worked my whole life to try to purchase this house, this home, um, come in one of eight. Never owning a home was a big accomplishment for someone in my family. So after being laid off from my good job, after having my second daughter, um, I realized I could not afford to keep my house. So I had to let it go. And it was the most devastating thing that I've experienced, not just because of the house, but because my entire family looked up to me as the golden child who made it out of New Waverly, Texas, and moved way to Cleveland, Ohio, and had a house of her own. And, and so the fact that I had to to let my home go, all the memories I had. Both of my kids were born and brought to that house and, and looking at each room, going through each room, saying goodbye, saying goodbye to those memories, saying goodbye to, to just the feeling of failure, to have to, the first thing that I've actually purchased, the first thing that I own, and like I said, coming from one of eight, poor family, small town, having my own house and then losing it was a huge disappointment that I felt not only for myself, but for my family. It was definitely, I lost my first home. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The Making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here 
and when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
that can help you through the process that's been there before, you don't have to spend as much time scared. You can come down, you still have to go through it. It's still gonna be a little frightening, but that was a, pivot, a pivoting moment for me, just thinking about that you can do whatever. Sometimes you need a little help to guide you down, but if you trust the process, you can get there. So, loved it. So I'm leaving the nursing home and I turn around and I said, mom, I'll see you later. And she said, no, I don't think so, not this time. I'll, I, don't, I don't know. And so I said, no, I'll see you later. It was, I'm coming back, I'm coming back home after, the, uh, after my trip. And she said, I love you. And she said, make sure that you continue to be great. And I left. And about a week later, I got the FaceTime and they were saying they was taking my mom off of the machines. And I was FaceTiming her and I looked at her and I told her, I said, you can, you can let go. And this, this was um, hard. Like I've, I've mentioned, I'm one of eight and my mom's a single parent. So she was one of the, the next thing to Jesus is Jesus and my mama. So to tell her that it was okay for her to let go was hard because she was 65. Um, but what I, what I will take from my mother in her life is that time waits for nobody. You have to treat your body right, you have to treat your mind right, and you have to treat other people right. She always instilled, it's not about, it's not about what you say to people, but how you make them feel. And my mom was a person who did that. And I, and I realized that me not taking care of my body, me treating my body, because it tells me that's the reason why she passed. And so time just waits for nobody. You have to treat your body right now. You have to do what you love now. You can't just sit in very comfortable situations. You have to live out your purpose every single day and be great. So when she left this earth, I took that piece of her and I ran with it. So at that moment, I changed my life. I really changed my direction. And I realized I had to live in my assignment and I had to move forward every day. And a lot of people don't do that. So I tell you guys this story just so you know that it's okay. Even no matter where you're at, at this point, time waits for nobody. And you have to start pivoting to your purpose today. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. 
So if that's you, that's you, I'm going to invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button. It'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. The question is, what would I tell my 21-year-old self? Whoo! The first thing I would probably say is just enjoy and trust the process. We're in this society where everybody wants it right now, gimme, gimme, gimme type of thing, the microwave type of environment, and success just doesn't come like that. So I would, I would think of it as, my mom used to tell me this story all the time about the man who cut open the cocoon when the butterfly was trying to emerge. And he was trying to help them, but in place of helping them, what happened was he cut that butterfly out of the cocoon too quickly. And so it never really flew properly. Because there's a point of process. That butterfly had to go through some struggles, had to go through some things in order for his wings to get strong. A lot of times we want people just to give it to us. But in that process, in that transformation, that's where the beauty happens. I grow spiritually, mentally, physically during the process. If someone was just to give it to me, I wouldn't have grown, I wouldn't have learned my lessons, I wouldn't have been better. So just enjoy the process, T. And to anybody else out there that's trying to figure things out, don't worry about it happening tomorrow. That's not gonna last. Enjoy the process and learn the lessons that you need to learn in order to be strong so you can fly high. Yeah, always speak kindness to yourself. The world is so full of people that are trying to pull you down, situation, you got television, social media, let's not even start with that. You have to be your biggest advocate. You have to be the one that's cheering you on the most. It's nice to have people that encourage you, but if you're not encouraging yourself, if you're not speaking positivity into your life every single day, if you're not affirming and, and, and telling yourself that you can do it, even through it all. When I went from 300 pounds to um, under 200, I had to speak kindness to myself every day. I'd look in the mirror and say, you are beautiful, you are kind, you're worthy to be healthy. You have to speak those things. It's a practice, just like anything else. But if I was to go back and really think about that time in my life, if I had loved myself at every space and every moment, my process would have been a lot easier. It would have been a lot um, smoother. You have to be able to speak and see yourself in a positive light, no matter where you are in the stage of your life. You may not be perfect, nobody's perfect. The world is not perfect, situations are not perfect, but you can always speak kindness to yourself. The same way you do your girlfriends and your homeboys, because you would never tell them they fat, or they this, or they that. You're always gonna give them positivity. Be your best friend. Make sure that you're always speaking kindness to yourself. You have enough people that are hating on you already, so make sure you're your biggest most powerful advocate. You have got to pivot to your purpose. See, I think, I don't know if y'all remember, like 2019, everybody, I think, collectively prayed that we were gonna get this 2020 vision. Everybody did. And I think that we all kind of got set down and we had to really look at ourselves and figure out what was going on in our lives. Life's is so full of distractions that a lot of times we're just living in an assignment that does not belong to you. You have to learn to pivot back to your purpose, pivot back to health, pivot back to great relationships. Distractions will come to move you away from where you're supposed to be. You have to learn to pivot. So when I was working with this fitness guru, he was great. I knew that's not my total purpose. My purpose was to help him find his vision, help him build his business, help him to find a way, but it wasn't just for him. So when 
2020 came along and I asked for a uh, clear vision, I asked for it. I was pivoted back to my true purpose, which is helping a multiple people to find their purpose, to help them to pivot back to their true assignment and not just living in autopilot. So if I could just go back, I would say it's okay if you're not where you're supposed to be because you can pivot. It's okay if life is not going the way you think it should be going because you can pivot, but make sure you're pivoting back to your true purpose and your true assignment. I'm often asked, why do people bring Purpose Chasing Academy to their organization? And the bottom line is, I like to tell people I'm not a baker, I don't sugarcoat nothing. So I'm gonna give it to you straight. And a lot of times we are walking in an assignment that does not belong to you. So what do we do? We help people to find, define, and pivot right back to their purpose so they can be successful, not only in business, but in life. You may have started off having to get a job at a very young age and you just became good at stuff. You know how we can be just good at things and so you just become good and then great and all of a sudden you're in a position working in a job that you hate. You hate it every single day, but you're making good money so you just deal with it. No longer should you be doing that. You can, and I know it sounds crazy, but you can live in your purpose and still make the type of money that you deserve that you are supposed to be doing, right? So that's what we do. We help you to come back to your core assignment in life. We all have them. And until you actually start living in your purpose, somebody else can't live in theirs. So we like to try to come out there and help you bring you right back to the center, right back to your purpose, so that you can thrive in business, in health, in relationship, in life. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now. And if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely, because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell it, I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now the reason you wanna go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. So there I was, 15 years old, my very first job, Wendy's. 
I remember like it was yesterday. It was on 13th and G Street Northwest. And I actually had that job before I was supposed to. Notice I said 15 years old. So I did some things to get there. So of course I was expecting some things to happen, like the hours that I worked. The number of hours that I worked, I was always good with math, okay? I expected that times the amount that they said that they were gonna actually pay me hourly. I expected that to be my paycheck after two weeks. And I was so excited to get that, ladies and gentlemen. Let me tell you, flipping burgers and, and, and putting the, the ketchup and pickles and all that on there, I was happy to do that, okay? <laughs> because I was excited to get my very first paycheck. So I go in, I get my check, I'm look, oh, this is back in the day, you didn't get direct deposit, you got a paper check. I get that check, I'm looking at it, I'm all excited to get whatever the amount was. I don't remember the exact amount at this point, but I knew it was supposed to be this number times this number equal this number, okay? <laughs> and you know what? They ripped me off. I remember going to my mother and I said, Mom, they took my money. I'm showing her the check, they took my money. And she says, <laughs> you didn't know about Uncle Sam? I'm like, who? Wait a minute, my mother has no brothers, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Uncle Sam, I know my mother's sister, that's all. So what are you talking about? And she just laughed at me. And I was like, this is not right. I felt deceived, I felt cheated. I felt like, why didn't anybody tell me? And this is not fair. Now, I told that story so many times that I got to a point where somebody said to me, after laughing, of course, they said to me, you know, you don't have to pay the taxes like that, don't you? That got my attention. And I remember it like it was yesterday. <laughs> So daddy died in 1988 and we were very close. I was the oldest of three girls. And unfortunately my parents were separated, but my father was so important in my life. He taught me a lot of things while he was here and while after he left. One of the things that really stuck out with me in 1988 was he, looked to he, he actually looked to take care of us, just like he took care of us when he was gone. I mean, excuse me, when he was here. So he left my sisters and, and my stepmother at the time. Um, and we, we had a good piece of money, okay? A good piece of insurance. Life insurance is very important. I got to let you know to leave for your family. And my daddy did that. He left us a very nice piece of change. And me, because I was the oldest, what he ended up doing was giving it to us like lump sums, okay? Now, here's the thing is, I knew that my daddy knew some things outside of the box, if you will, because he gave us that, and he left pensions, some pension, we were beneficiaries and so forth. And what happened though is he left it to be in a trust, okay? And my stepmother actually said that. Oh, your daddy left it, you this in a trust. So he knew some things, but he didn't know everything because he did not know to set that trust up. So some of the funds that he left us, they actually went into his probate, okay? That was an eye opener because once it's in probate, somebody else controls it, all right? Now, what daddy did do is left us the insurance money. So we did, I don't know if you know, life insurance is always a great thing to have because you get that free and clear once you're 18 or over. Okay, so we got that and I'm looking at my circle and I'm like, oh gosh, I got this nice piece of money, you know, six figure. What do I do with this? I'm what, 20 some years old? I had no idea what to do with this so that I could use this money even today as I'm speaking now. I knew that there were, there were some options, but what it was really eye opening to me was that there was nobody in my circle no one in my circle. I mean, I had my, my siblings or, or siblings of my friends who were accountants. They were in finance. They had graduated from college and they had no idea what to do. The best 
thing that I got was to put it in a CD. Ladies and gentlemen, you put your money in a CD, you will not be able to live off of it 40 years from now, okay? And that's the end of that story. <laughs> It was 1991, and I was carrying my son. And little did I know what was coming afterwards. One day I'm walking, and I'm carrying him. And he's in my, carrying my son in my belly, I should say. Let me be clear. <laughs> and I'm walking, and my hip gives out. When I go to the doctor, the, the OBGYN, he informs me, oh, it's just your body adjusting to the extra weight. It'll be fine six weeks after you have, you give birth. I'm like, okay. So we go through the process and I'm getting bigger and, and my, I, my hips are giving out. It actually was my left hip, it was giving out. And ladies and gentlemen, it did not get better after my son was born in September, okay. I ended up having to have hip surgery. Hip surgery several months like after my son was born. So now imagine this, you are brand new mother, home with your child, nice, beautiful baby son, We're walking around and all of a sudden, you're going to get him a bottle or something and you, you go down and you don't even know if you can hold yourself up, much less your son. That was so scary, so scary to me. I was very, very concerned because they didn't know what it was. Six weeks later, it was getting worse. Come to find out, there was a breakdown of the fluid in my hips from something I was diagnosed with a year or two prior to that. And I was given some medication, some prescription medication for that. And this was a side effect. So now here I am, January, following that September, now in surgery, leaving my son, <laughs> my, my precious boy, um, with someone else to take care of. And just think about it. I was now had the surgery, come back home. Now I'm taking care of him from the bed from the bed, ladies and gentlemen. But you know something? Here's what I have to say, is God always provides a way. He always provides a way. What happened with this scenario gave me what I needed to be able to rely on him. Because think about this. There is no one in my circle at the time, my mother, my grandmother. You know, when you get in your 50s, 60s, 70s, that's when you have hip surgery, okay? Mine, I was the first one in my family to even experience that. And I'm in my 20s. Yeah, when most 20 year olds, they're partying, you know, they're taking their children out to the park and playground. I'm trying to get my life together walking. Now, one thing I have to say is I was very grateful for the surgery because I was able to walk and at a point that no one knew that I had the hip surgeries. I was very grateful for that. I've had five surgeries since then, five different hips. I know, yes, I have two hips, but two on one side, three on the other but it has grown my faith to a tremendous, tremendous place. And I'm happy to say that. And that is how my life went. But... Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you just watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur or perhaps your auntie or uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve. And as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons. I've, I've had some setbacks. I've had some experiences. I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person. And, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, 
they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The Making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
um, was I was leaving, I was actually moving a job and shifting, so I could not do the on-site um, campus. So God led me in a different way. Years later, I'm nominated for an honorary doctorate. And because of the work that I had actually done over decades, and this young lady who put work in herself for a doctorate nominated me. And I really thought about that. I was like, wow, it's really important who you listen to because my mother wanted me to go the path that she knew to go. I went the path that God had me go and I ended up with a doctorate. Yes, it was honorary, but it's still a PhD, a doctorate. And I was able to share that with my mother and even open her eyes with that, that there's more than one way to get to where you are. So I say, pay attention to who you listen to. It's very, very important to pay attention to that along with following your heart. <laughs> Nothing happens by accident. You see, I learned a long time ago, we always have a choice. There's no such thing as a bad day. That's a choice that I made a long time ago. It doesn't matter what happens. All of us have things that happen. As I said, I lost my job with the 9-11, like I'm sure a lot of people did. I flipped over in the Volkswagen back in, in, in my first car, actually, okay? I'm still here, walked out the windshield but I'm still here to talk about it. <laughs> I actually have gone through divorce, bankruptcy, the 9-11, it really triggered some things. And even with my father dying in 1988 and me being left here to figure things out, what I recognize is that it all happens for a reason. It's all in divine order. And here's what I mean. If I hadn't had the job at Wendy's, and thinking that Uncle Sam took my money, okay? I would never know what I knew about voluntarily removing myself from the tax system, okay? I wouldn't have known anything about that. I wouldn't know how to protect the assets that God has blessed me with by the trust. I wouldn't know the information that I know about the trust and not just know, but how to use that. I wouldn't know that Everybody needs somebody in their circle that they can go to, that they can trust, and they can go to, to ask, what do I do with this large life insurance policy? How, does I, how do I allow this money to work for me years later? Everybody needs that in their circle. I wouldn't know if my father hadn't made the mistake in thinking that the trust would be created after he died, I would not have delved into Learning that, no, you live the, with the trust now while you are alive, breathing. It's an entity that you live with and it protects you while you're here. You see, this is choice. A choice to not look at things negatively, but to look and ask. Not why or why me, but to ask very plainly, what is it that I'm supposed to learn from? What am I supposed to grow from here? Lord, what is it that you want me to know and to be able to model later on. And I have to say, because nothing happens by accident, God made me that person that I needed back in 1988, okay, to assist others for that. So I hope you recognize nothing happens by accident. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose 
of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise. Then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. If I were to sit down and have a conversation with my 21-year-old self, here's one of the things that I would actually share. I would say, Monica, know when a business is to make money and when a business is to lose money. You might be thinking, huh? That doesn't make sense. Isn't, aren't businesses supposed to actually make money? Well, if you recall my story as far as the, the income tax situation and having a job, one of the things that I did learn was to be able to purchase things in a business form so that I can leverage and keep more dollars in my pocket. You see, the Internal Revenue Code is written for business owners, okay? Small or large for business owners. And learning that, I recognized that I was in network marketing. I was a phone card holder, like a vending machine type thing. I, I've had um, an academic empowerment learning center where we taught math and tutoring. I have done, uh, I can go on and on, okay? But what I've learned is I was first doing it buying things that I was actually gonna buy from somebody else, but buying it from myself, keeping more money in my pocket, okay? So I had businesses that were losing money, but I was able to keep more money, stop the IRS from taking more out of my actual W-2 paycheck because I was buying things from myself and having a loss. Now, once my life turned around after the 9-11 and I was out of the, the W-2 job, and I found myself now in business. The businesses had to make money then. It's a difference. That means a whole different mindset. And it took me, I call it tuition, some good tuition <laughs> to learn about that. But it was worth it. Because when you learn that way, it sticks. When you're paying and you lose, and then you go back and do it again, you're going to do it the right way and you're going to be more focused. And that is what I would tell my 21-year-old self. One of the most defining principles in my life is to not only pay attention to who you listen to, but know where they get their information from. Now, what do I mean by that? You see, people are educated in different ways. And where they get their education from, that actually says what they're going to teach you. For instance, am I a banker? I go in and I talk to my banker and I ask them to, to do certain things. And they'll say, oh, no, you can't do that. And it's like, what do you mean I can't do that? I did this at the other branch. Or I did this across the line at the same bank at the other state. And the reason that they're telling me that I could not do it is because they didn't know how to do it. So it's very important that we pay attention to who we're listening to and when we are trying to do things or we are actually doing things, we set our intentions to do things, we have to pay attention to that. 
And there's a couple different ways. So I'm talking about the bankers, even our accountants, our CPAs, they're all taught from a system, a system that they're told what to tell us, and that's what they tell us. And some of it is accurate, but some of it is accurate for a cause that's not in our best interest, i.e. my best interest, okay? <laughs> so, Monica, watch who you're listening to, pay attention closely to that, and ask yourself, did they get their education from experience, or did they get it from a systematic educational system? It's very, very important. And that's a very important thing that I would tell myself. <laughs>
to learn how to fly a plane, okay? And you're looking at a real teacher now, as well as the people that we work with. All of us that work with this, we actually use these products. We are trustees. We own cash. We can build our own banks. We own lots of policies. And when I say own, the trust own, okay? We are using the products. That's why it sounds like I might be good in sales, but really I'm passionate about it because it's what I do. I live this life, my lifestyle. And we share that with our community, with our family, individuals, organizations, companies. And that's why you want to come work with us. <laughs>
And that night, at 1.30 in the morning, my father walked into my room and told me that my brother died in a car accident. I was devastated. This was the first challenging over, this was, this was the first challenge that I had to overcome in my life, was having to deal with my brother's death, dealing with the grief of having my brother gone. I would never see him again. And then I began to think, the weeks before when I couldn't sleep, was that about my brother's death? I miss him very much. I am a U.S. Army veteran. My dad was in the military, so I was always a military dependent or a military soldier. When I got out of the military in 1981, I moved to Orange County, California, but I really didn't have a plan. I had a roommate that I planned to stay with, but when I went to North Carolina and came back to Orange County, she'd moved. I had no place to go. I was homeless for three days. The first day, I drove a city bus. Actually, I rode a city bus all day long. I ended up at Leisure World. The bus driver looked at me and said, young lady, where are you going? I said, Leisure World, and he said, why? And I looked around and saw all the old people and I realized that it was a retirement community. So I got back on the bus and he took me to a mall and I began to pray. And I said, God, please help me out of this situation. And so when I looked around, I saw a church and I saw a club. And I said, God, if I get out of the situation, I promise if anyone ever needs a place to stay, I'll provide it. And if I can help anybody that's homeless, I will. Once again, there was a church, there was a club. I went to the club and found my guardian angel. In 2013, I was a first year high school principal. I knew that I had to increase graduation rate. I knew I had to increase ninth grade promotion rate. And I knew I had to decrease the amount of suspensions. But one of the goals I wanted to do was meet all of my students. And there was one student that I hadn't met yet. And so someone said, oh, he's in the hall today. So I went around the corner and I said, hey, how you doing? And there he was, 6'2", 220 leaning against the wall. And he thought he was in trouble, but he wasn't. I just wanted to meet him. And I said, tell me something. What's your passion? He said, I play football. And I looked at him and said, oh yeah, he does play football. I said, are you good? He said, yes, ma'am. I said, well, what are you gonna do with that? He says, well, I'm gonna go to college, then I'm gonna play in the NFL, and then I'm gonna buy my mama a house. I said, well, that's great. But that same work ethic that you put in learning the football plays, your strength and conditioning, you have to put that same work ethic in your academics and we'll get you to college. We will get you to the NFL, okay? I said, and by the way, pull up your pants and go to class. He said, yes, ma'am. And as he walked down the hall and turned the corner, one tear rolled down my cheek. By the time I got back to my office, I was a hot mess. Two weeks later, I got a phone call. Dr. Mosley, your student is dead. He was shot to death. I was crushed. His mother called me and said, uh, Dr. Mosley, could you please speak at my son's funeral? I said, I met your son for 15 minutes, but in that 15 minutes, I knew his gift, I knew his passion, and I knew his purpose. A year later, I'm driving home from school. I see yellow tape. I said, I wonder what's going on over there. And by the time I got home, it was another phone call. Dr. Mosley, one of your students was beat to death in this park. I lost two students to violence in two years. I was devastated. Barack Obama said, every life must be given a chance to reach its full potential, that every life mattered. Brandon could have been an NFL player. Israel was a brilliant artist, but they were gone too soon. I started the campaign for no more violence. I miss my students and I think about them every day.
Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. When my brother passed away, graduation night from high school, left me with a lot of grief and I just really didn't feel living myself. But there were some lessons learned. Had my brother had on his seatbelt, he probably would have survived the crash. And also, when I prayed at night, God help me with this grief, God told me to write. Teresa, write. So the next morning when I woke up, I wrote a six page letter to my science teacher. I wanna to talk to you about him for a minute. My science teacher was none other than Cal Coons. That's right, he was a pitcher for the Mets. He actually won a World Series. Teachers are so important in the lives of children. I knew that I could write my teacher a letter. He would listen and he would give me good advice. So that six page letter, it took me about maybe 30 minutes to write. But when I wrote the letter, I felt better. I learned that writing was cathartic. So one way I handled the grief was to continue to write about my thoughts and feelings. And what really bothered me more than anything was the week before my brother passed away, I just knew something bad was gonna happen and I didn't tell him. When my mother bought him the watch for graduation present, the only thing that was left was the crashed case in the car. The watch was gone. So another thing that I learned is that I have the gift of intuition and now I use that intuition all the time. If I think about something, I say something. If I feel something, I act on it. But more importantly, as a business owner, as a public speaker, I learned that I could use my voice in writing. You see, I always knew that my voice was my gift, but I didn't understand that writing and speaking was my gift. And I learned that as a result of my brother's death. <laughs> As I stated before, I was homeless for three days in 1981. And I prayed and I looked at the church and I looked at the club and I went to the club. As I walked to the door, 
I didn't drink and I didn't smoke, but I sat at the bar and I ordered the Pepsi. I was so hungry and thirsty. I drank the Pepsi and I chewed the ice and I was praying like, how am I gonna get food? I only had $50 to my name. And I checked my suitcase at the front door. And all of a sudden, a guardian angel came and sat beside me and said, young lady, you're in a crisis, aren't you? I said, yes, and I began to cry. I said, my roommate moved, my father is sick. I rode a city bus all day, ended up at Leisure World and I don't know what to do. And the young man said, listen, it's Reaganomics. You know, there's not a lot of jobs out here. I'm a real estate agent. I haven't sold a house in two days, but I have an apartment. I said, I'm not gonna stay with a strange man. He said, listen, I can't let you sit on a park bench. So I was safe. I went there for three days and I began to think, what can I do? How can I get a job? How can I get money? How can I eat? And then I figured it out. I'd re-enlist in the military. When I re-enlisted, I had a job, I had money, I already had the skill. And I said, and this time, when I get out of the military, I'm gonna have a plan. I'm gonna have a blueprint. I'm gonna be independent. I'm gonna depend only on myself. And that's exactly what I did. As I reflect on that situation, there was a lesson learned. Always be independent, always have a plan. Always develop a blueprint and make sure that when you develop that blueprint that you have goals, you have activities, and that you have measurements on how you're gonna make sure that you do what you say you're gonna do. So when I got out of the military, I went to Georgia State. I got my bachelor's degree. I had my own apartment. I didn't have a car, but I rode the city bus every day to school back and forth. So I learned something. I'm 20 something years old, 26 and a freshman in college because I went into the military first, but I learned that all of the trials and tribulations in my life, there were lessons learned. Losing two students to violence is one thing, but watching the news and seeing a familiar street and the next picture is your cousins that were murdered, shot to death in midday is another. I knew that I had to use my gift, which was my voice and intuition to make a difference. I knew that I had to serve the world by helping make this world a more peaceful place. So I went to a master's class. And in that class, the teacher said, there's two days that are important. The day you were born and the day you find out why. And that day I wrote it down that my gift is speaking and writing. My passion is serving others, and my purpose is to make this world a more peaceful place. So I started my business, TAM, Creating Ambassadors of Peace. I help people and organizations turn positive, have a positive school culture, have a positive school climate, have a positive community. I teach people to communicate, don't retaliate to have compassion and empathy for others, to love their community and serve them well, to protest, but protest peacefully. My business is very important and it's all those trials and tribulations in my life that led me to build this business, to build this brand, creating ambassadors of peace. It's so important that everyone lives out their divine assignment. Brandon can't live out his, Israel can't live out his. My cousin was a pastor, she can't preach anymore, but now I have the voice to speak for them. I have the voice to make a difference in this world. I have the voice to tell you the tools that you need to make your family peaceful, to make your organization peaceful, to make the world a peaceful place. Creating ambassadors of peace, everyone, it is everyone's responsibility to make this world a more peaceful place. And it starts with the family, and it starts with your business. If you're a leader in a business, it's your responsibility to make sure that the culture and climate of your business is peaceful. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just wanna to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you wanna release, or maybe you have a story right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. 
you're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Three defining moments that I would tell my 21-year-old self is number one, don't be afraid to fail. Fail forward. Know that all those trials and tribulations that you've had in life are lessons to be learned, and those lessons are to be shared with the world. Don't be afraid to fail. Fail forward. Number two, make sure you don't let anyone define who you are. You create the narrative for you. Everyone was born with a divine assignment. They were born with a gift. As I said earlier, I knew early that my gift was my voice and my intuition. So you create your own narrative. Be who you are supposed to be. Live out your divine assignment and use those lesson learns along the way to share with other people. And most importantly, number three, be an actioneer. Take action. And the best way to take action is to make sure that you develop a blueprint for what it is that you were meant to be. And in that blueprint, make sure that you have strategies. Make sure that you have activities. And for every activity and strategy, make sure that you have a monitoring tool. Most successful businesses, they have a blueprint, they have a plan, they implement what they say they're going to do. And network, network with like minds. Have an accountability a partner, have a coach. It's very important to know that in business, when you're going to help others build their brand or create their divine assignment together with you in your business, if you're in the business of making others or building other people's brand, that it's important that you have a blueprint for that plan. Life, life is but a short road to our ultimate destiny. You also have to make peace, have compassion, and learn to love before you get there. Don't be afraid to fail. Know who you are. Don't let anyone create the narrative for you and be an actioneer. <laughs> have to do what you love to do. I remember when I was two years old, my mother made a recording of me singing. I love to sing. I sang Cupid, draw back your bow. And when I was 12 years old, I was a Girl Scout and the Scoutmaster said, the lights are out, get Teresa, have her sing. 
and I sang for 800 little brownies, and a hush became over the parking lot where we were at. I sang Ben by Michael Jackson, so I knew that I loved to sing. Even in the military, I sang in the Ninth Division Soldiers Chorus. Once again, my gift is my voice. You have to do what you love. But when I received my degrees and started working in education, yes, I loved working with children, but I also loved speaking to children. And it was when I decided to make speaking my platform for my purpose is when I found this is my gift and this is what I love to do. You have to do what you love. When you do what you love, work is like play. Work is like play. So I tell everybody, find out what your gift is and know whatever it is, that's something that's gonna be your passion. And your passion is gonna be something that you love to do. And that's where you'll find your purpose. So do what you love. <laughs>
But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very closely because this might be you. So listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking. They like you. There's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell that. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again next time. God bless. There I was, nine years old, found myself homeless, living in my mom's green Datsun B210, 1980, in Pasadena, California is where I grew up. And I realized that at nine years old, I was learning a lot at a time that I should be being a kid. I was having to take care of not just myself, but also my brother not just taking care of my brother, but also my mom. Um, She had an addiction and one that she couldn't overcome by herself. But in the process, she wanted her kids with her. And there was really no other, no other way to think about it, no other way to look about it. At that time, it was kind of normal, even though you knew other people had a house and they were living and sleeping in a bed, we slept in the car. Um, It wasn't until I got older that I realized that I didn't want that life for myself. So I knew that for me growing up, I had to do what I needed to do to make sure that I never went back to being homeless because being homeless as a child, you just felt like everybody was looking at you or you weren't ever gonna be enough or you didn't deserve to live in a house or sleep in a bed. But those are just the common things that most people get a chance to enjoy. And I wasn't able to enjoy that until later on. And once I was able to enjoy that, you can best believe my thought process was, I'll never go back. Growing up in a foster home, you lose a sense of self. You you start to wonder, if I'm in this home and I have parents out there that are supposed to love me, but they don't, how can anybody actually love me? For some people, growing up in the foster home was probably the worst thing that can happen to them. But for me, it was probably one of the best things that could have happened. It allowed me to see what love is supposed to look like from a mother. It allowed me to have a place to live. It it allowed me to have some sense of humility and belonging for myself. I wouldn't say it was the best experience because for anyone growing up without your family, it's not the ideal situation. But for me, it allowed a foundation to allow me to look back and think on how I felt when I didn't have a family. And one of the things that I know for certain is, it's not often you hear me talk about my foster mom. That is my mother. She instilled values in me that no one could ever instill in me. And for that, I'm forever grateful. One of the tough things though was learning how to love and accept love because you go through the mind process of if my own mother and father don't love me, how can anyone else? But being in this place in that time in the foster home, I can tell you I've learned to love myself 
way more than some people who do get love from their own family. <laughs> do all these wonderful things with training and, and encountering people, I realized that if I take a look back on my upbringing, I wasn't trained on how to be a boss. I wasn't really trained on how to manage people. I was barely learning how to manage myself. But there I was in this job that I really, really enjoyed, and they made me a manager. And in the process of making a manager, they, you know, you would think they would send you to classes to kind of help you and guide you. But my personality, I guess they really loved that it was kind of strong. So it kind of got people to do things that we needed them to do. But even though I had that personality, I didn't have the training to go along with the personality. So in the end, what happens? People quit. No one wanted to work with me. They thought I was bossy. They thought I didn't listen. They thought I knew everything. Well, maybe I did, but there was a way to go about it. I can tell you that looking back on my life and, and realizing I had this opportunity, I'm so grateful that I failed in that area and I kept failing until I got it right because it made me a better person, a better mother, a better manager, a better boss, a better supervisor, and it prepared me for what was to come. And without that experience, I would never want anyone to go through that, be thrown in the fire for, you know, becoming a manager, not having the training. But on the flip side, not being trained was some of the best training I could have gotten. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docu-series, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. You know, growing up in a foster home, college is not always your first option. They remind you that by, when you turn 18, you got to start looking out being able to take care of yourself. So for me, college was a choice but it was not the first option. I did try college. I went to Cal State University, Bakersfield. I did, a, I did summer bridge program. I went my first semester, and the longer I sat there, the more I needed to walk around. 
The longer I sat there, the more I realized that this may not just be for me. This may not be the option for me. But I knew that if I wasn't going to continue with schooling, I had to figure it out. I had to make a way because I had to support myself. I had no one to fall back on. I had no one to depend on. And that's one of the things about being in a foster home that people don't realize is that there is no transitional uh, program or transitional phase for you. You really left to figure it out. <laughs> I remember being a store manager for McDonald's and getting ready to actually get my own store. They sent me to Oak Brook, Illinois, to Hamburger University, and I was so excited about it. All I knew that I was getting on a plane and I was going to be around people who were doing what I wanted to do. We go through the two weeks of university training, and then we get back. I get back home and we have a manager's meeting. And at this manager's meeting, they introduce us to Les Brown, the one and only Les Brown. I was so excited, so excited to hear him talk and, and just kind of absorb his energy. And I remember in this, in this meeting we had, he was talking to us and it was, he was talking about you know, how he grew up and, and what, his, what his setbacks were, the things that, that pushed him. And I remember him, I, I felt like he was just talking directly to me as if he was saying, Tanya, right now is your time. Right now, you can decide on what the rest of your life is going to look like. You can decide on what kind of manager you're going to be. And I remember having a job before where I became a manager and I didn't know what I was doing. And I realized, I said, at that moment that when I started my own business or when I started training other people, I would never, ever put them in the lion's den. And as Les was talking to me, all I could think about was making sure that the people who I was responsible for, whether it was McDonald's employees, my own employees, the people that I was responsible for, understood their assignment and got the proper training that they needed. I knew that if I did that, not only was I setting myself up for success, but I was also planting the seed for them to have the mindset to continue to be successful. After 16 years in corporate America, I got all the training that I felt like I needed to be ready for the next part of my journey. That next part of my journey would take me to a very unfamiliar place, opening my own business. I knew that there was going to be a point in time where I was going to need some additional help, and I couldn't do it where I was at. So I started from the bottom and worked my way up. I went into a salon, worked in a salon where the lady who did not look like me, but had every ounce of love and compassion for the same business that I was going into. She took me by the hand and showed me everything I needed to need, that I was going to need to open a successful business. But what she didn't tell me was the fear. She didn't tell me that I was going to be fearful. She didn't tell me that I was going to make mistakes. Even though I knew I was going to make mistakes, she didn't actually say it. She allowed me to grow on my own mistakes. She allowed me to see the things that I needed to improve on. And she also allowed me the freedom to niche down. So that way, when I did open up my own space, I would be ready and I would concentrate on what I needed to concentrate on. I mean, think about it. I was homeless. I was a foster kid. I worked at McDonald's. I didn't have all the confidence, I had no support. And just to think the idea of me owning my own business, well, after training with her and being in her salon for a few years, I walked out, opened up my own space, and after three months, I significantly changed the trajectory of my life and my children's life. And that right there allowed me to believe more in myself and allowed me to realize that you can do anything you wanna do if you put your mind to it. You got to get away from, you know, what people said you were going to do and who you were going to be. As long as you believe that you can do it, you will. Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, both of them is right. And I believed in myself enough. And at that moment, when I, when I left her salon and opened up mine and realized that the sky was the limit, there was no turning back. <laughs> Thank you.
It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience. If you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise. Then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. If I could tell my 21-year-old self anything, I would most likely tell them, you could have it all. What do I mean by that? There's three things you would have to do in order to believe that you can have it all. The first one, transformational thinking. You gotta change your mindset. If you believe you can, you can. I know for me, here, look at, take a look at me, raising a foster home, went to college but didn't finish, worked in corporate America, transitioned, opened up my own business, opened up several of my own businesses, and who would have thought a previous foster kid who was homeless and abused could go on to do anything outside of what statistics would have them be. I believed it. I had to change my mindset. And by changing my mindset, I was able to accomplish things that no one thought I would be able to accomplish. That's transformational thinking. In order to have it all, you also have to master leadership. Leadership is one of those primary fundamental things that you have to be able to understand. There are people who are born leaders, and then there are people who are made leaders. Regardless of which one you are, I realized that for myself, I had to develop my leadership skills. I had to go in to make sure that I was being the person that I wanted to follow, that I was representing myself in a way that would make others want to follow me. I had to live by that example. And in order to live by that, that example, I had to believe in myself. And believing in myself also poured into my leadership. It poured into my leadership development and it poured into my leadership skills. <laughs> I truly believe that no matter what, you can have it all. You can have it all in business. You can have it all in your personal life. 
whichever one you're developing, wherever you are, no matter what your circumstances are now or where you come from. If you believe that you can have it all, you can have it all. Again, like I said, look at me. Who would have thought a previous foster kid, homeless, go on to build several successful six-figure businesses, mentor over 1,500 women to start their own business? I believe it. I believe that I could have it all, and I believe that I could help you have it all. But in order to do that, you got to In order to do that, you have to believe it yourself. You have to master leadership. You have to build your communication. You have to transformational think so that you can get out the box and move to the next level. In order to do that, you have to do the work. In order to have it all, you have to start somewhere. You can't let your circumstances define you. You can't stay where your circumstances are you have to build and you have to move and in order to do that you have to take a step believe me when i tell you that no matter what your business is or where you want to take it or what's going on in your personal life you have to believe that you can have it all <laughs>is because they want us to help them get their staff to a point where everyone is thinking similar and on the same page. They need a mind shift. And in order to get a mind shift, they have to understand what transformational thinking is. People come from all backgrounds, from all ethnicities, from all parts of life, and they bring their own individualism to the table. So in order to get them, and get them to um, understand the company's mission, and their purpose and goals, and to, to, to almost eat, sleep, and breathe it like the company does, you gotta shift the mind a little bit. And you have to allow the, them to have their own individual process, but have a common goal. So that's what we do. We come in, we help the companies get their staff together in the mind, the trans, transitional phase, and you know what happens? They become more productive. They work as a team. They see that they all have a common goal, even though they all get there at a different place. But at the end, the results are all the same. So transformational thinking, your staff needs a mind shift. That's what we do. This has been an amazing experience. And one of the things that I really enjoyed the most was that there was no pressure. Everything was well organized. I felt right at home. And anything and everything that I needed to get me through this today, it was there. Um, everyone's really nice. Everyone knew what their assignment was. They made sure that I had my assignment. And for that reason and that reason alone, other than the granola bars, I did get granola bars. Um, it was just a wonderful experience. I appreciate it. And I cannot wait to see what's next. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door. How would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very carefully because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. 
I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, Easy saleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. So there I was, a freshman coming in at Hampton University, moving into my dorm. Everyone was unpacking their bags with supplies and laptops, and I was unpacking makeup. And shortly after that, people started asking, why do you have so much makeup? Do you do makeup? What is this about? And I said, no, this is my personal collection just for me. And someone finally wore me down and said, can you please just do a little something? I don't care what it is. I don't have makeup. I'm not allowed to wear makeup from where I'm from. Can you do something for me, please? And I got bit by the bug. That is how I started to do makeup. And 10 years later, here I am with a company, doing makeup around the world, loving what I do, doing something that I'm passionate about, and I can't believe I get to call this my job. As soon as I graduated from Hampton University, I looked my grandparents in their eyes and I said, I'm going to be a makeup artist. They looked at me like I had three heads. They were very confused because they just spent a lot of money on my tuition. And they said, okay, look, if you're going to do makeup, you need to get a J-O-B. And I said, all right, give me 30 days. I will get a job. And if I don't get a job in makeup, I will do whatever it is that you ask me to do. I had no plan. I just knew I was going to figure it out because that's what I do. And then very next day, I walked into MAC Cosmetics. I walked up to the counter and I said, I'm here to apply to be a makeup artist. I got a familiar look like I had three heads and the lady said, we don't just hire anyone. And I said, okay, well, look, if you guys have an opening, tell me what I need to do and just let me do makeup and then you'll figure it out, you know, if I can join the team or not. And she said, well, we do have an opening. You'll have to come back with a model. You'll have to go through the interview. And then if you're good enough, we'll see if we'll hire you or not. I had no experience. I walked in, came in with my model the next day, which was my mother. And she said, so you've never done makeup before? And I said, never. She said, okay, well, you're actually pretty good. We'll hire you. You'll start about next week. No one that I know that has worked at MAC Cosmetics has gotten a job like that, where they've walked in and had no experience, but I knew that this was something that I wanted to do. I had a different calling to do this, so I made a way. I went back to my grandparents, let them know that I was hired um, in less than the 30 days that I told them that I needed, and stayed at MAC for a couple of years. It wasn't easy, but it was so rewarding, and it was the type of experience that I needed at that time. And so my uh, years at MAC Cosmetics really did give me the foundation, so to speak, for makeup skills and sales skills that I still continue to use to this day. During my time at MAC Cosmetics, I started to get more and more clientele that would say, hey, I'm getting married this weekend. Would you ever consider 
coming from the mall to come to me at my hotel, my mama's house, wherever they were at to do my makeup. And at the time, this was early 2000s, right? So you didn't have social media, you didn't have all of these different outlets. It really was all about who you knew. And um, I started to get more and more people who kept saying, hey, leave the mall, come meet me here. I will hire you, I will pay for you, whatever you need. I need you to do my makeup and I need you to come to me. And that's when I started saying, I don't really see a lot of companies that are doing this officially. Um, and not just for anyone, but for black women and for black brides. And that's when I knew I needed to create something that was really particular to black brides, black weddings, weddings of women of color. Um, I knew that there was a need there. And shortly after I said, I won't be at Mac very long. I think I'm gonna be here a couple of months. I'm gonna start my own thing. I started to poach some of the other artists on the team and say, look, I'm getting out of here in a couple of months. You should join me. You'll be able to create your own schedule. And one of the first people that I approached was Tonique. Uh, we were great friends at the counter and I was like, girl, you're about to have a baby. You're gonna have that baby and then you're gonna come work for me. <laughs> we're gonna continue to do makeup. And luckily she didn't think I was too crazy and she joined me on this journey that we've been on for now 10 years. So I'm so thankful that she said yes and that she's still by my side. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. So when I think about the beginning of Hello Gorgeous, it was just myself and Tonique and any booking that we got, we would do together. It doesn't matter if it was two people or 22 people, we showed up on time with our kit and caboodle of all the makeup we owned and we did as many people as possible 
even if at the end of the day we were crawling to the car because we were so tired, <laughs> we just made it work. And we had really humble beginnings. All we knew is that we loved makeup, we loved bridal, and we wanted to do as many weddings as possible. It really was something that we were both passionate about. But when I look back at the beginning, we did not know what we were doing. <laughs> we were just passionate young ladies who loved makeup. And so when I think about where we're at now, it makes me emotional because we really fought for what we have here now. It's real, it's organic, but it's rooted in a love and a passion for makeup. And I think that shows in how we treat our clients and how we show up to treat our clients. It is rooted in love. This is special. You're not getting just any makeup artist, you're getting people who want to be there. And that's the Hello Gorgeous promise. So here we are, we're booked and busy. We are zipping up and down the 495 to Baltimore, to Richmond, and everywhere in between. And it's just the two of us. And it hit me that we could not possibly continue to do business the way that we're doing with just the two of us. And that's when I knew we needed to expand. And I started to look into my network to see who would be a good fit. And for me, a good fit in Hello Gorgeous is someone who brings the right energy, who brings the right skill set, but among all, who also equally loves to do bridal makeup the same way that myself and Tonique do. And we started to just find people that we knew around the industry who would be a good fit. And so one of those people were Allison Fax. We met uh, in a program that I'm not gonna get into, and she knows this program. But the great thing about the program that we always say is that we found each other because she has been an integral part of the team, one of the first hires that I brought on that I was truly proud to say, this person is on Hello Gorgeous. Hello Gorgeous artists do amazing makeup. If there's anything that you are going into your day worried about, it will not be makeup. And I know this because it's myself, Tonique and Allison, and whoever else I bring on this team will be solid people that I trust to make sure that your wedding day is exceptional. So we continued to grow the team, continued to bring people onto Hello Gorgeous, and expanded in ways that I never dreamed we would when I started this 10 years ago. So I think any business owner who has a team can relate to that feeling of, all right, you've done the work, you've expanded, you have people underneath you who look up to you, what's next? And what's next for Hello Gorgeous is we're going to continue to expand. We're gonna open up our first flagship location in Arlington, Virginia. We're going to get our name out there, get more people understanding what this is, because what I know for sure is that black and brown women show up and arrive to their wedding day in style. And that is what Hello Gorgeous does. We help them show up and arrive not just in style, but also feeling confidently beautiful. That is the core of what we do. And I want more women, not just in the DC area, but all major cities to feel like they know exactly who they need to call when it's time to show up for their big moments. Whether it's a wedding day, special occasion, going to the White House, wherever you're going, whatever you're doing, we're there for you to be that team uh, to get you ready for your big moment. There's a great reason why celebrities have glam squads and glam teams while they're getting ready for their major moments, and why can't you have the same? So, watch us expand, watch us do great and amazing things, and continue to support Hello Gorgeous. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story. 
right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Hello Gorgeous is a luxury bridal beauty company offering hair and makeup services in Washington DC, Maryland, and Virginia, and we have 10 makeup artists and two hairstylists. When I say we expanded, I mean we expanded this team. This team is really uh, focused on giving an experience to brides that are unlike any other. And when I think about the Hello Gorgeous experience, it starts from the very beginning. When you reach out to our team, we don't just throw out prices and say, yes, we're available or no, we're not. We really wanna know who you are, what kind of experience you're looking to have, what kind of wedding or what kind of special occasion you're having, and then we create something specific to you. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know many companies that take that approach to knowing their clients and making sure that they're creating something custom for what you need for your big day. Our team is involved. We show up on time. We help your planner create the timeline for your day. And what a lot of people don't know is we're often the last person with the bride right before they take the aisle. That's a sacred space. Not, people, not many people know that we're there wiping away tears, lotioning your feet, doing all of those little special things. And that's what makes this service luxury. We go above and beyond. It's the core of what we do. Hello Gorgeous is not just a do and go company. We are involved, we love our clients, and we're there to make sure that your day is unlike any other. My favorite thing about our team is, first of all, we have women in their 20s, 30s, 40s, and 50s. You would never know it because we all look gorgeous, but our team is comprised of women of all different backgrounds. We have women who are mothers. We have women who are focused on their corporate careers sometimes and do makeup on the side. We have women who are just 
eager to learn and be around others who are more um, well-versed in the bridal space. So we do have some junior artists who still have experience, but they have the passion that I really wanted. Um, and that hunger, I think, fuels me and others on the team who have been around for a while. We learn so much from our younger staff, and they equally, I think, learn from us as well. Um, I think when I think about bridal, you just never know what the day may bring. And so I think it's important that the team is just ready for whatever comes up. And so I didn't want a team to just look like me and have the same exact background as me and be the same age as me. I wanted a team who had a different perspective on life because every wedding is different. And to me, Hello Gorgeous is one of those teams where you feel like you're getting makeup done by a friend. We come in, we're friendly, we're talkative. We want to know how your day is going. It's important to us. And it was important to me to have a team that really reflected all the fun that we have while we're doing makeup. What keeps me going is really, it comes back to my grandparents. I was a, a child who was born from parents who had me in college. They needed to figure things out and my grandparents came in and gosh, I'm gonna get emotional. <laughs> um, my grandparents are my everything. God, I really didn't wanna cry. <laughs> Sorry, um, I was keeping it together, but they saved my life. Um, God, I didn't wanna cry, but everything I have is because of my grandparents and um, everything that they instilled in me about being a leader, about coming confident, about being smart and ambitious. Everything I learned was from those two people who decided to give me the life that I never would have had if they didn't come in. There's no way <laughs> I can get through this without crying, but um, they, they truly did save my life and my siblings' lives by putting us on a straight and narrow path and you know, doing it with so much love and care, but never putting anyone down for their decisions, but saying, you have a chance here. Whatever you wanna do in life, we will support you, but you have to have a plan and you have to be successful. So tell us how to help you. And one of the things that I talked about in the beginning was just how I told them I wanted to do makeup. And they said, you got 30 days to figure it out. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And while they're both no longer here, I feel them every single day. And I do this to honor them and to honor the promise that I made to them to be successful. And that's why I do what I do. Our clients hire Hello Gorgeous because they're looking for the best of the best. What makes our experience so unique is that we care not just about the quality of our artistry, but the quality of the experience that you're having on the back end as well. We want to get to know you. We want to make sure that you have what you need. Do you need additional vendors for your wedding? Maybe we can make a phone call or two. We are there to provide an experience that's unique, unlike any other. So that does mean going out of our way sometimes just to make sure that you have someone in your corner that has your best interests in mind. That's the Hello Gorgeous way. That's what I instill in every single artist that comes to the team and that I send out or that I work with on your wedding. It's about you, it's about the client. And so we try to keep that in mind when we're working as well. It's not about us. It's all about our client and making sure you have what you need to show up on your big day, looking and feeling your absolute best. What 
I've most enjoyed about the experience today is just how fun the team is. Um, they're really, again, fun to be around. Uh, they made me feel really uncomfortable in front of the camera and just ready to tell my story in an authentic way. And I think it's really important that you have the right energy around you when you're doing something like this, any sort of project. It's just really important to feel comfortable. And this team has uh, exceeded my expectations on comfortability. So thank you to the team for just helping out today. <laughs>
and ask myself the same you know questions like what could else could I be doing with my day rather than going in here for eight hours so it was the same routine I would get out the car I would walk in and, and it was on the third floor my office was on the third floor so I uh, we walked I would always walk up the steps and there was this balcony over top that you could look down on and every morning I would look down at that balcony and ask myself the same question if I jumped would I die now I wasn't literally going to jump I wasn't physically going to commit suicide but every morning I thought about the way I was forfeiting my passion my purpose uh, just watching it die by going into that job and I would just think about all the things, like all the people who were relying on me. And this was, you know, after I'd already written uh, best-selling books, I'd already been on uh, stages across the country speaking and impacting lives. Uh, but here I was still in a position because, you know, uh, your bills want to get paid every month, right? They don't care what your title is, uh, what you've done in the past. They want to know what have you done for me lately. So, you know, bills got to get paid. You got to do what you have to do. Uh, and there I was, and it was just a matter of every day going in there knowing there was something more in life for me uh but also knowing that the work i was doing like just did not matter like i did not matter and it was a place that i found myself in it's just what do we do what do i, I do in, in in order to keep um living to keep thriving to keep impacting lives but to get myself out of that situation uh so it was it was a, a long road of just every day that that depression that anxiety that that sadness uh, you know, going home to my wife and to my kids and, you know, and, and being upset with them, not trying to take it out on them. The fact that I was upset at work, uh, just dealing with those things, you know, as a man, you know, I can't, you know, I can't just go and sit home and, and tell my wife, hey, I got this dream what's going to happen. So just really going through that was, um, you know, an experience that, that really turned into something uh, that, that uh, uh, built me and made me even better. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay, maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it, maybe you've written books and you've already done that, or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy. Legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise. And think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. You know, in the last episode, I was talking to you about facing my Omar, facing my fear. And, uh, you know, eventually what happened was I, I, the more I stood up to Omar, the more I uh, started telling him no, uh, the less he started 
asking me for my bike, unless he started harassing me. And eventually he was gone. Like, I don't know what happened to him. He just disappeared. And uh, what I learned from that, really what it did for me in my life was showed me that even in the face of fear, uh, you have to face that thing in order for it to go away. You know, they, they say fear is a false evidence appearing real. And sometimes we're afraid of things and we, we, we run and we think that inaction uh, is, is really the safe thing. But sometimes you have to face that thing just to know the confidence for yourself. Uh, the way that changed me is that, you know, now I live a fearless life. I, I try to move forward and understand that no matter what I'm afraid of, I, I'm going to have to face that thing and learn the lesson. You know, sometimes you may get knocked down. Sometimes you may get your bike taken, uh, but you have to face that lesson and really, uh, you know, you grow through that. So uh, that, that was, I, I look at that experience and really realized that, that what it made me and who it made me into now, uh, that I'm not afraid to do anything. I'm not afraid of failing. I'm not afraid of looking fear in his face and saying, you know what, try me. We're going to do it anyway. You know, I think about that balcony. When I think about that job I hated, I, I'm taken back to the moment when it was, you know, time to make a change. And it came to the point where uh, I said, I needed my work to matter. I needed my life to matter, and I made a decision that anything I was going to do going forward had to do two things. It had to provide unforgettable impact to the people who I was serving, and it also had to provide abundant fulfillment for me. So uh, it came a point when I, I just said, anything I'm going to do, it doesn't matter how much money it is, it doesn't matter uh, what it does, I had to have that joy. I had to be uh, happy about what I was doing, and I knew that the doors would open after that. Uh, so, you know, it came a time when it was uh, my contract was up, and, um, you know, that, so I didn't quit, they didn't fire me, but we both knew that it was time to move on. And, and I'm so thankful for that moment because in that moment, where it was hard to go home and tell my wife, hey, um, I don't have a job right now, uh, but that motivated me, you know, it pushed me, and I knew that anything I did going forward was going to be something that was going to be special to me, make me feel alive, and I've been able to impact so many other people just by making sure that I was focused on uh, doing the things that were going to provide that impact, and it really mattered uh, to me and to the people who I, I, I served in my life. You know the crazy thing about uh, the, the English class and me failing out, like eventually by 12th grade, uh, the school got the point that I didn't want to be in that class anymore and they gave me my wish. They, they let me, they took me out of gifted and talented English and I was back in honors English class with all of my friends in 12th grade and the crazy thing happened. They still saw me as a nerd. Like it didn't matter. Only difference at that point was now I was a nerd with D's and E's on my report card because I was so focused on trying to be around people who were going to see me the way they were going to see me regardless of what class I was in. You know, and that really uh, changed the way I looked at things in life. It changed the way I dealt with people because then I realized that, you know what, we are who we are regardless. And who's, you know, who's going to be in our circle, who's going to accept us for who we are. You know, we can't control that. Uh, so it really taught me that it, it didn't matter uh, uh, what you've been through. You at any point, you know, you can always change uh, what, what you want to. Uh, man, that's not where I was going to go. Don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. So it really taught me at that moment that uh, we can't focus ourselves on trying to appeal to other people. Right. Our gifts and our talents uh, that are in us are there to to build us. It turns out that my whole entire life and career was was be dealing with writing. You know, my first business, I was a songwriter on a publishing company, okay? Uh, from there, I've written 11, 12 best-selling books. I've ghost-written other books. I've written sales copy that's earned millions of dollars across the, the world for people, uh, all because I was the kid in that gifted and talented English class. Now, had they told me back then why they put me in that class, like had the uh, teachers and administrators told me, hey, Ryan, we see a gift in you in writing, then maybe that would have reframed my entire high school. But they just kind of threw me in there and said, hey, go, go for it. So, you know, sometimes you don't always see what your gift is. You don't always know why uh, things are, are moving in the way they're moving in your life. But I promise you, if you look back, you know, your, your, your gift, your purpose, it leaves clues. You know, and you've got to be able to tap into that and stop trying to worry about what other people are going to think. Go out there and be the best you, and, and it'll open up so many doors that you, you never could have opened without it.
It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. You know, it, I was in the ninth grade when I took my first flight, like on an airplane. So I was coming home from South Carolina, visiting my family for the summer, and I got on a plane and it was raining outside. So I'm thinking, okay, it's going to be, you know, it was dark, it was cloudy, it was raining. <clears throat> okay, we're going to be on a flight. Um, but it was the middle of the day. So we take off. And as we get through the clouds, I was amazed because in my little ninth grade brain, it never dawned on me that the sun would still be shining above the clouds, right? So I'm sitting there and we go through the storm, we go through the clouds, all the turbulence, and I'm looking and in the flight, like all you see is sun over everywhere. Like, and, and at that point, like that hit me that the sun gonna be the sun, right? The sun is gonna always do what the sun do, does and that's shine. And I thought about that in our lives, in my life specifically, on how we have so many storms, right? We have things that are always going to come against us. Listen, people ask me, how do you keep going, Ryan, after you've lost it all, after you've lost both parents, after you've lost houses, you've lost cars, you've lost a relationship, how do you keep going? And the fact of the matter is, you know, what other choice do I have, right? We all are sons. We're going to keep shining. And that's the thing. You are designed to do something. And as long as you're doing what you were designed to do, you're going to always shine. So we just got to, there's going to be storms, right? You're going to have to go through the storm. But just like in that plane, when you can accelerate, uh, uh, when you can go higher, when you can uh, uh, climb your, uh, raise your altitude, continue to go above the storms, not around the storms. You got to go through the storms, right? And it's going to shake you. It's going to be turbulence. You're going to feel that storm. If you've ever been in a plane, you, you understand that. But once you get above that storm and you look out and you just see all the opportunity, all the sun, all the beautifulness, that's your life, you know, and that's how I look at life as well. Like I look at storms, I'm like, hey, I'm going to tackle these storms because I know uh, I was born to shine. So I want to encourage you to do the same thing. You know, you were born to shine. Uh, when that storm is coming, just get ready, buckle in, you know, get ready to go through it and start shining like the sun you are. You know a question I hate, 
uh, the question is when you ever meet someone and typically within the first three or four questions uh, they want to ask you your name you know maybe who brought you to the event uh, then they ask you what do you do and that's the question like I really hate that question and it's not that it's a bad question what do you do but really when you think about it when you're just meeting someone what, what is that question really doing for them right uh, when we ask that question it's kind of a position where people are subconsciously judging where they're going to rate you on their scale of respect and what you can do for them uh, so and, and I think about how many times or how many decisions we've made in our lives uh, that were based on us being able to answer that question the way we feel other people will want to hear an answer right so I think that you know there's a lot of people who are focused on what they do and really we should be focused on who we are right uh, what is it that you bring uh, the value you bring to this world what would you purpose to do and don't get so caught up on what you do. We understand, listen, we've just seen over the last three years, a whole lot of people's answer to that question on what you do has changed. But does that change, does that change the value of who you are? Does that change what you bring to the table? No, it doesn't, right? So we've got to make sure that we're focused on who you are, what it is that you are purpose to do, and, and not really focus on uh, uh, answering that question. There's so many times that we, we, uh, the answer we want to give to that question is based on what other people are going to think, what someone else told us we should do, right? So we don't want to get stuck on that. I, you know, when I was able to free myself of worrying about that question, the answer to that question, you know, I was like, oh, my, it just opened up so many doors in my life, so many doors in my career. And I want you to have that same freedom. Stop worrying about what you do. Stop worrying about that answer, rather. You know, just focus on who you are, what you were called to do, who you're called to serve, and let that be uh, what you lead with. And, you know, don't, don't worry about defining your success by your title and your salary, right? Define success by your, your impact, your fulfillment, uh, you know, your You know, if there's one thing I hope you walk away with today, uh, watching this program is that you know I have have adopted a brand a mantra a mission whatever you want to call it whatever new marketing word you know lifestyle word you want to use uh, and it's born to be dope and I want to encourage you that you are born to be dope and what born to be dope simply is it's a celebration of being unapologetically great at being you if you got nothing else out of today then I hope you've gotten out, out of it that, that it's the importance and the value of being you Right. We all are bringing some kind of special sauce, some kind of uh, uh, of magic to the table, to our relationships, to our work, to our, our careers, to our families. Right. And we can't get stuck trying to fit into someone else's box. Right. We can't get stuck comparing ourselves to everyone else. We look at the social media like, oh, this person is doing this way. I want to do it that way. This person is doing it this way. No, I'm going to do it that way. You are special. You are dope. You are unique. And when you can tap into what makes you special, that's going to open up the world of opportunity for you. There's someone out there who's waiting for what you have, right? Someone out there who, who's feeling un, uncertain, uncomfortable about really uh, expressing themselves the way they want to express themselves. Once they see you uh, doing it your way, they'll be like, okay, now I can walk in that path. I can really have the freedom to be me as well. So I am, I'm so you know, excited about making sure that people are out there really understanding how to master so I'm so excited about making sure people out there are uh, understand how to uh, master, magnify, and monetize their unique dopeness. Find out what it is about you that, that really uh, is going to take you to the next level. Uh, bring the impact uh, that you are looking to have and really uh, uh, impact and, and leave the legacy that you want to leave by just being you. So I encourage you, just go out there, be great at being you, because you were born to be dope. One of the reasons people come to Greenhouse Media to work with us is because they have a story they want to share. And uh, we help you not just share your story, not just formulate your story, but we're going to show you how to formulate the story, turn it into a message that you want to share, but then also how to share that expertise so that you're an authority that people want to follow. Okay, so and we have clients that we've helped take their, their story out of their brain because you can have a story in your head, but if no one sees it, it's not going to do anything, right? So how do we get that story out of your mind? put it on paper right but then not just how do we put it on paper because we move beyond the book so once you have your book written now what so people come to us because they have a book maybe they need help writing their book maybe they've already written a book but it's not written in a way that's going to really help monetize uh, their message uh, or they have a book that's done and then they want to take it to the next level so what we do is we'll take that book and we turn that book into a visual story and we do that through an online course so we can do that through uh, a, a brand film so people come to us because they want us to take that book, take their message and show them how we can make that more compelling, how we can visually uh, create that into something that's going to reach the marketplace and also, again, make money for them.
So if you're looking for an opportunity to do something like that, then we have clients who, whether you've already written a book, whether you have the idea, you have a message, maybe you're just a speaker and you have a message that you say, how, how do I get this to more people? That's what people call me for. So we can really hone in on your message, make it clear, make it uh, uh, compelling, and then make it captivating so that we can go out there and, and really show you how to do the message, do your sales page and your sales copy and things like that, how to formulate it into a funnel that's going to really bring people into your business. So you, one of the things people run into is that they, uh, they don't have the systems in place to really tell their story and run, walk people through uh, their system. Yeah, you may tell people, hey, here's a book, here's my story, but then what, right? So we help you make sure that you can put all the pieces together so now you have a business, not just out there as an author, right? not just a writer. So uh, we want to help you do that. That's what we've been doing for uh, 17 years now, and that's, that's our mission. That's our, the impact that we make, and that's where we find our fulfillment in making you take, helping you take your story to the next level and go beyond the book. You know, this has been a, a wonderful experience. I'm so glad that I came to do this. I worked with uh, Shay Brown and his team for a long time on a lot of projects. But I was like, Shay, I want the making of an entrepreneur treatment. I want to come in there and, and do it like I've seen everyone else do it. And one of the things I love uh, most about this experience is that uh, it is very professional, right? It's, it's you coming in here, you're going to get what you're looking for. Uh, they're going to walk you through it. The, the staff, the crew, I'll call them the crew. The crew is uh, uh, just all welcoming. Everyone is here to make sure you look your best. Uh, they, uh, you know, I've been doing the speaking thing for a long time, but I'm not, you know, I'm still learning, right? So they've been able to help me really hone my message hone uh, the things that I need to tweak as well. So this has been a wonderful experience uh, being in the studio. I mean, look, the, the lights, the camera, action, who doesn't want all of this? So it's been a great experience. I'm, I'm excited, glad I did it, and uh, looking forward to uh, the next one and, and what's gonna come from this. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just wanna talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you the business owner, you the speaker, you the coach, you the author, you the network marketer, you the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid, right? And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people, and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely, because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell it, I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now the reason you wanna go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. I remember that moment, 2006, 
where I answered the door and the person on the other side, my sister, she told me that my parents were both killed in a car accident the night before. It was that moment where it felt like the life had just come out of me. And it was just emptiness. There was so much loss. And what I found out was that they had been riding down a highway and there was a tractor trailer that was parked in the roadway and they ran into the back of the, the tractor trailer in the middle of the night. It was literally devastating. It was that moment where you realize that there was, that they're gone. There was no mourning process. There was no chance to say goodbye. There was no chance to say, I love you that last time, or I'm sorry for all, whatever it is I did. It was, it was a moment of, of loss. And it's that same peace that would follow me throughout life. And what I did is that I stopped moving. I stopped, I stopped living because of the loss that I was suffering. And as I moved through life, there was always that emptiness. I don't know, have you ever felt that empty feeling that no matter how much you pour in, it never gets full? And it was one of those moments that changed my life. It changed me because there was no space, there was no place for me to go to get the love of a parent. Parents, you know, they give you unconditional love. And there isn't anything that you can do that will take it away. But when you have no place to go, the only place that you can look is inward. And as I move through life and this this, uh, this trauma, it would follow me and it would, it would help define who I would become. Yes, there were memories, but sometimes the loss just, just becomes overwhelming. And I just didn't know what to do with it. I didn't have anybody to help me walk, walk me through it. And so as I still kind of think about it uh, in, in, a, in a blink of an eye i can go right back to that moment and the tears will start to flow and i can remember how i was feeling and the loneliness that's that's the, the main thing is just feeling feeling the loss and feeling lonely <laughs> It was fifth grade, it was Mrs. Bigford's class, and I remember right after recess, standing in single file line, the boys in one line and the girls in the other. And I remember turning around, and in that moment, some of the boys were staring at me. And it wasn't a staring like, I like you kind of stare, but it was a something is wrong with you kind of stare. And what I realized is that they were staring at my face and there was, they were staring, staring at a, a birthmark that was on my face that I realized you may not be able to see. But it was in that moment that I realized that I was flawed, that I was imperfect. And this flaw would make me feel ugly. It would make me feel less than and it would make me feel that I couldn't accomplish the things that others could. This birthmark, it would cause me to hide. It would cause me to cower. It would cause me not to stand up for myself and to speak up and say no and say I didn't like something and, sa and say, you know what? You just go without me. I'd rather not. And this birthmark would follow me throughout life and it took me to, through high school, through adolescence, through college. And have you ever felt that place where you were hiding, where you felt less than, where you felt that you couldn't? And what I noticed is that this one flaw would roll over into other areas of my life. It would roll off into me not running for 
class president or me not even walking across an auditorium full of people unless it was halftime. And it led me to a place where I was in relationships that weren't serving me. And so as I thought about that flaw, it was something that I didn't want, that I, I, that I hated, but it would end up defining who I would become. It made me sensitive to my own feelings, but also sensitive to others. And so even though that wasn't my only flaw, it was something that defined and would make me who I am today. I remember standing outside of my house, deciding to leave, using my key for the last time. I was a victim of narcissistic abuse, and it was something that plagued my life, plagued my marriage for 19 years. And I couldn't leave before. I didn't have the strength. I didn't have the courage. I didn't have the help. But all those years, it, I had to come to a place where I was ready. And this was that moment. A lot of times when we think about abuse, we think of when someone has hit you. But the emotional and verbal abuse is just as bad. It's something we don't talk about. And unless you've been hit, you don't think that it's something that should be said. But it was a powerful, it was a powerful message, a powerful moment for me to decide that I needed to go, that I needed to do this, not only for myself, but for my children my daughter and it's something that as I walked it I got the strength and I got the um, more courage but it's something that we we think about that we may see but sometimes we don't act on what it is that we need to do because we're stuck doing what we've always done. And so that is, that is the story that has shaped the last few years of my life. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. 
go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The Making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
with, with thoughts that I just didn't say, with stories I just didn't share, and with trauma or drama that I didn't speak. And so there are times when we have to actually just say, say the thing, say your story, say the, the, the facts that led up to where you needed to go. I remember a story a day when I shared some of my history and it included the birthmark, it included my parents being killed in a car accident and a mother reached out to me. She's the mother of Sakai and he too has a birthmark on his face and he had been struggling with how to deal with it. He was eight years old at the time and he had moved into a new neighborhood and some of the kids were being mean and he felt ugly and he felt different. And so the mom reached out and she's like, can you help me? Can you help me with my son? And so as I talked with her, as I shared with her and I gave her all of the nuggets I could, but I also said, can I speak to him? And so she said, absolutely. And so we got on the phone that next night and I shared my story with him. And in that moment, I could see myself in him. I could see myself feeling that void of thinking that you were different. But in that moment, when I decided to come off of mute, I now gave him power. I now gave him the tools he needed so that he could live the life he wants to live now instead of waiting the decades that I did. And so we need to just come off of mute and to share your story. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Hello. 
If I could go back and talk to my 21-year-old self, I would tell her that she is the X factor. I want to ask you, if you could pick someone in the world who you think has that X factor, that it factor, that thing that sets them apart, what would, who would it be? Maybe it is Oprah, maybe it is Michelle Obama, or maybe it is Tiffany Haddish. You think that there's something special about them that has created their, their life, their success. And you think it's something that maybe that they were born with or something that they were taught or something that they learned along the way. But I believe that that X factor is not any of that. It's not something that they were born with. It's not something that they were taught. And it's not something that they learned along the way. I believe that my X factor that your X factor is you. And when I realized that, that was the game changer. That's the thing that allowed me to take that next step. That thing that helped me get me to my destiny. Because when you think, when you believe that you have it all, you are now unstoppable. And so as you go about your day to day from this point on, believe that you are the X factor and that you are unstoppable. <laughs>
to take the necessary steps, to take the action, and what I call it the empowered action. It's that action that's going to get you the result that you want. We take lots of actions, but they are not targeted to the result. And so you can create your experience in the world by taking empowered action. And that is how you get to your destiny. In Full Bloom Health and Life Coaching, we are here to help individuals to master self-leadership. And that comes in two phases. It comes with walking in your truth, being authentic, knowing who you are, increasing your self-confidence. But it also comes with leading others. When you first lead yourself, now you're able to lead your team. There are many times when we are not self-aware. We don't know what is happening within ourselves. But when you peel back the onion, or in my case, when, you, when uh, a tulip or a flower starts to bud, those things, those layers of us, you're now able to live life full. You're now able to be your authentic self. When I am brought into an organization, when I am hired by an individual, what I do is I help to peel back the onion and to get to the core of who they are. Then we go to what they want. And now we focus on delivering on their destiny both personally and then collectively within an organization. The Making of an Entrepreneur docu-series, What Can I Say? Above all, I wanna thank Shea Brown for him just being him. If you know him, you should get to know him. He is a, a great individual. And as I have been here with him and his team, they have made me feel at home. They have coached me up. They have encouraged me. They have taken the shots and done all the, the stuff in the, in the things in the background. But above all, they have allowed me to share my story. And through my story, there is life. Because when we share from our hearts, it helps someone else who's struggling. It may be you. It may be someone sitting next to you. But above all, this has been a welcoming family experience. We've laughed, we've cried, but we've also gotten to know each other in a deeper way. And so with that, I just wanna say thank you again, and I look forward to meeting you. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very closely because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. 
I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, Easy saleshub.com. Let me just spell that. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again next time. God bless. I always wanted to be an astronaut, and here I was at the Air Force Academy, getting ready to declare my major. I wasn't qualified for flight, but I knew that physics would get me to the moon and beyond. Unfortunately, the physics department didn't want me to declare them as my major. I argued even though my grades were right, even though my personal experiences were appropriate, but still they insisted, you can't declare physics. Finally, they explained why. You can't declare physics because you're black and blacks can't do physics. Now, I may look like a cream puff sometimes, but you're not gonna tell me what I can and can't do. So I decided to declare physics as my major and my grades were good enough, but I still ran into trouble about halfway through the program. I felt like I was going to fail out. I didn't know why I test after test just kept being miserable, just kept failing and performing poorly. I would go in for extra instruction, doing everything I knew how to do. And finally, on a day when all of the other physics instructors were gone, my professor leveled with me. Look, my job is to get rid of you. And if you will stop coming into my office, I will stop feeding you the wrong answers. In that moment, I felt so alone. I felt so overwhelmed and I felt so hopeless. I didn't know how I was gonna succeed in this program when even the instructors were trying to get rid of me. I felt like my life was one struggle after another. And quite frankly, I was tired of the struggle. Imagine coming home from a military trip to find your household, your stuff thrown out and divorce papers in your face. That's exactly the situation I found myself in after being away from home for six months. In just a matter of days when the dust settled, I was now a military single mom with over $845,000 of debt to my name. It's a common scenario among military members where they sign power of attorney so that they can go away on a military trip and their spouse runs up debt, buys new property and finds a new spouse all during that time while they're gone. I didn't know what I was going to do. It seemed so insurmountable to have that much debt to my name. And in an instant, I had become everything that I worked so hard all my life not to be, a single military black mom. I had to learn how to hustle in a hurry. I had to learn how to make money work and make it work for me ethically and quickly. Unfortunately, I discovered that because of my high income, I didn't qualify for a lot of assistance. Again, I felt so alone and didn't know what to do. I felt so worried that I wasn't going to be able to overcome this. And not only was I stressed about myself, but I thought about the cycle that I was perpetuating with my son, me coming from a broken home, his father coming from a broken home. Were we going to repeat the cycle of living in the projects that he had inherited from his father? Were we going to repeat the cycle of trauma and abuse that he inherited from his mother? I didn't want that for my child, but I didn't know what to do. I just knew that there was something out there, that this couldn't be all that God had called me to. This couldn't be all that my life was going to end up to be. There was got to be more to life than this.
I'm laying in the emergency room. The doctor is asking me questions and it's taking way too long for the thoughts to form. And by the time I can form them in my mind and get them out of my mouth, he's moved on to another question. I can't seem to keep up and my friends notice that I'm getting angry because I can't communicate. The doctor leaves to do whatever he has to do and I'm laying there alone wondering if my life is over. I had been a physicist in the Air Force at that time for about 20 years, and I had written reports to the president and done all these amazing things, but today I could no longer even speak. I couldn't get the words out of my mouth, and when they came out, they would be the wrong words. I felt like my life was over in an instant, and I didn't know how I was going to be able to provide for my kids or make a life that meant something. In that moment and in the months afterward, I felt like I was used up, worn out, and set out to pasture. I was removed from my job and placed in a place of no responsibility. Life was passing me by, and I didn't know how to move forward. It was one of those situations where you feel like giving up because everything in my life that made me who I was was now stripped away from me. My intellectual prowess, my ability to stand on my own two feet and get myself where I needed to go, my ability to provide for my son, this great scientist in the Air Force who chaired many technical committees and did some amazing things that I can't talk about. Now I couldn't even make monopoly change with my son. I felt like my life was over. And at worst, I didn't have anyone around who seemed to understand. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences. I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person. And, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay, maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy. Legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise. And think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone just want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. In 2013, this crazy thing called sequestration hit the government. For those of you who don't know what sequestration meant, it was when Congress failed to pass the defense spending bill so that all the military and federal civilians could get paid. While Congress was battling with one another, 
My job as a branch chief was to ensure that my people could continue to do their job. And I quickly found myself in two separate worlds. On one hand, I had my church world, my family world, my local community. And everyone I knew in that local community was stressed to the max, worried about how are they going to pay their mortgage? How are they going to put food on their table? Because now we are at risk for not getting paid. On the other hand, I had the scientists and engineers who worked for me. And I sat down with each one to counsel them and give them lists of helping agencies in case they were feeling the same stress that my church folks and my local community felt. Every single one of those individuals that worked for me had a six to 12 month savings account. They had planned for financial adversity because their culture taught them to plan for financial adversity. Their culture and their upbringing told them to minimize debt, to buy as much as they could on cash, to live below their means, and to have a healthy savings account. For me, that was a defining moment because I realized that even though I had learned how money worked so that I could get out of an enormous amount of debt, I had never learned how to pass on money skills to the next generation. And now I began to see that that foundation of solid wealth management skills not only could provide the finer things in life, but could also give peace in the time of a storm. <laughs>One of the most defining moments of my life was my decision to retire from the military after 23 years. I had been in running for the rank of full bird colonel and I didn't want to let go of that dream. But I saw that my family needed mom to be more involved than I had been. And so with much prayer and careful calculation, I called up my husband who lived in another state at the time. And I said, "Hun, I think the only thing that's keeping our family apart is my desire for promotion and money because we really have everything that we need. He agreed and I made the decision to retire from the military. Only two weeks after that decision, the pandemic hit and everyone around me who had also made a decision to retire from the military was quickly rescinding their retirement papers because no one could get a job. Everything had been shut down. We didn't know what was going to happen with the economy and we didn't know how long this pandemic was going to last. But one thing I knew is that I never got a second chance to be a good parent to my children in their formative years. And so I made that decision and mentor after mentor in the military tried to counsel me to cancel my retirement but I stayed the course. Two years later, my family is healthier than they've ever been. My income has far surpassed anything that I had in the military. And my life is a testament that you can start at rock bottom and you can still come out on top. From hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt to being a stay at home, self-employed, work when I feel like it mom. That's how I know that I can help you change your life and I can help your company be an enabler to help your people live their best lives. A pivotal moment in my life came when I realized I don't have to stress about money anymore. That doesn't mean that I put my trust in wealth or that I am confident that the earthly things I've built will always last. But one thing that I've learned in this journey is that there are time-tested success strategies that no matter what happens to you in your life, if you fall, you'll be able to get back up and be successful again. And that's the same kind of strategies that I use in order to get out of that $845,000 of debt. I was worried about myself, but once I settled my own future, then I realized it was time to leave a legacy for my children. And I thought that was going to be a lifelong journey, that it was going to take the same 45 years that it took for me to get my life together, to help them get theirs together. But when we implement those success strategies, it was a very quick turnaround for my boys. And my two boys, they are also now confident with money. They're not worried about going hungry. They know that life has ups and downs but they know that they can themselves find ways to create income 
And even though they're only six and 16, they are already entrepreneurs who have found ways to earn money for Fortnite and football and girls. All those things that are important to a young man. Once I accomplished this goal though, I began to wonder, well now what's next? And I realized something I wish I would have known in my younger days. When you have your life together financially and you have instituted in your children the foundations of financial security, now you are free to change communities and that's exactly what I'm doing. I work with corporations, I work with civic organizations, nonprofits and religious organizations, and I use these wealth strategies to help people change the world. And I wanna encourage you today, if humble old me, single military mom with over $845,000 of debt could turn all that around in just 12 years, so can you. <laughs>it's a great day my name is shay brown i just want to speak to you the speaker or maybe you're not even a speaker right maybe you're not a speaker but you have a message inside of you that you want to release or maybe you have a story right a story of your life a story in your career or or maybe maybe as you're listening right now you're an expert right you're you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something you're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. If I could have a talk with my 21-year-old self, I would tell her that it doesn't matter where you're starting from. It matters how you finish. Too many people think, like I used to think, that if you had a poor education or a poor upbringing, or you came from the wrong side of the tracks, or maybe you had devastating medical issues, that those things mean that you can't succeed. And what I've learned is that there are time-tested success principles that work despite all of those situations that we bring to the table. And I would tell that 21-year-old self that no matter what life throws at you, if you will live your life according to those success principles, you will succeed. It's not a if, it's not a worry, it's a confidence that you can succeed. It's knowing, and I would communicate to her, I would wrap my arms around her and hug her and let her know that no matter what other people say to her, 
no matter how people try to make her feel, no matter how many mistakes she's making as she's trying to figure out this thing called life, that there is a way forward and that she will be successful. <laughs>
fall into the same trap I fell into in my 23 years in the Air Force. I was at the top of my game, and I thought that leading my team would simply be treating them how I wanted to be treated. But I had so much to learn about leadership and about communication and about presentation. And what I found that not only can I help those leaders take their leadership to the next level, inspire their teams to produce more, help their companies to improve processes and ultimately increase profits. But I also discovered that the same principles that allow all of that leadership growth are the same ones that help people win with money. So whether you're in the boardroom, the courtroom, or in the homeroom, I am here to help you and your company, your organizations, your nonprofits, your ministries win with money. What I've enjoyed most about my experience and on the making of an entrepreneur is that from the time I walked through the doors, I was treated like royalty and made to feel at home. Everybody on the staff put me at ease. They suggested things that I didn't even know I needed to make me look good on camera and to be able to tell my story effectively. I really appreciate the details, the attention to the details and all of the little efforts that went on behind the scenes to make me look good on camera. I want to give a shout out to everybody behind the scenes at Making of an Entrepreneur. You have definitely made my day. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you the speaker, you the coach, you the author, you the network marketer, you the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid, right? And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people, and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very carefully, because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal client to me who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell that, I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now the reason you wanna go over to EasySalesHub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. <laughs>Growing up in New Orleans, I tell you, it was a challenge for me because I was protected a lot by my, my parents and my aunts, my uncles. They really protected me. And I guess it was because I was such a small child. But I remember this one incident that happened, and it was during Mardi Gras. And you know, I always got excited around that time of the year because my mother used to buy me these nice outfits to wear for Mardi Gras, you know, people dress up. And uh, here I was and 
I begged my aunt to let me go down by myself this year, that particular year. And so she let me walk down the street by myself uh, to St. Charles Street. And you know, during Mardi Gras, they throw these, uh, they have the floats and they throw these doubloons, handfuls of them out into the audience. And we liked them because you could get one and it was worth something at Popeye's. You could get free chicken or whatever. And so they, you know, as they were passing, they threw all these doubloons out and some of them went on the ground. And I went down to pick up one of the doubloons. And this, this white guy, big white guy, he, he put his foot on my hand and he said to me, if you pick that doubloon up, I will break your fingers. And to make his point, he literally kind of, you know, just kind of rubbed his feet on my hand and took some of the skin off. And that really, it really devastated me at that time because I was about eight or nine years old. And I remember thinking, why would an adult do that to a child? I thought Mardi Gras was for us, the children. And when he did that, when he finally took his foot off my hand, I just I ran home. It was, you know, I was scared. But more than that, Mardi Gras lost all sense of everything for me. I never attended a Mardi Gras again. And to believe it or not, to this day, never again. Never again will I go to a Mardi Gras. There I was sitting at my desk and this envelope was on the desk and I opened it up and there was a pink slip in there. You know what that meant. I was being laid off from South Central Bell after having worked there for eight years. And I remember thinking, it was December 27. Who does that? Lay someone off right before, right after Christmas and right before New Year's. I, I couldn't believe it. Eight years down the drain, eight years. And I was wondering, what will I do next? Because now there's the bills, there's the car note, and there's the mortgage. All of that has still had to be taken care of. But more importantly, why did it happen? That's what I was thinking. Why me? I was a good worker. I was a good employee. So why me? I needed to know. So that is what I did. I set out to find out what made them let me go. Not that I'm that special, but I knew there had to be another reason other than what I was seeing on this pink slip. Here's where the challenge really got me, my back injury. I was always active my entire life, being in the military. I've always run, I was always a runner, and I got this injury in my back. And when I went to the doctor, it was so severe, the pain was so severe that he told me that it would be a while before I could really do any running or any real exercising because it would, you know, it had to heal. And I remember thinking, what am I gonna do? I've always worked out, I've always been active. And now I can't do anything. And by anything, I meant that the pain was just, it was just fearful, it was fearsome. I mean, I couldn't move half of the time. And so I remember thinking, why did this happen to me? You know, I've always taken care of myself. One wrong move and I pulled something in my back that started this trajectory for me, downward trajectory. Because then I started having problems with my knees. I started having more problems with 
my elbow. I mean, it was just, it just seemed like one thing led to another. And I kept thinking, why is this happening to me? That is an awful, awful feeling. One that I never really got over and I'm still working on right now. But good news, I'm back active again. I'm back working out again. So everything comes to an end and that for me did. But while it was there, it was a big challenge for me. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. Well, this is a hard one for me. I was sitting at the hospital in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. That's where my mom was. And the doctor had just come into the room and told me that I had to give them permission to take her off life support. That was a decision that no 20 some year old should have to make, but it was one that I had to make. It was one that I had to live with, but it was also one that I had to give permission to let go of someone that I didn't want to let go of. I told him I needed time. I, I couldn't give him an answer right then, right there. But the doctor told me that I needed to just take a little time, but I needed to also let them know as soon as I could. And I finally told them to take her off the life support. That was something that I never, ever want to have to do again. My mom 
was the brightest light in my life. And to lose her, but to be the one to say, to take her off life support, I just, it was just hard for me to do that. It really was. And still to this day, it's hard for me to accept that I had to do that. But I learned that even though I told them and gave them that permission to take her off life support, I was not losing her. I was gaining an angel, an angel with wings, someone who would still watch over me because she still does. She, I can still hear her. I sometimes hear her voice speaking to me. I learned that you never lose someone that you truly love, but it's a hard decision when you have to make the decision to let them go. And that's one that, like I said, I hope I never ever have to do again. There I was sitting in the counselor's office my freshman year in college and she was telling me that I had lost my scholarship. You never want to hear those words as someone who comes from a family not to mention a mom who had told me you are going to college. So when I got that news, I remember thinking, what am I going to do? But more importantly, how am I gonna tell my mom that I lost my scholarship because I was literally goofing off in college my first year. I could not think of what I was going to tell her, but I could think about what she was going to say to me when she heard those words. And I can tell you now, it wasn't gonna be pleasant. But one thing I learned from that experience is that you can't take an opportunity for granted. And that's what I did. I took that scholarship for granted. You know, when you're given an opportunity to pursue your dream, it's not a good thing to just slap it in the face or just, like I said, take it for granted, which is what I did. But the fear for me is my mom was gonna be so disappointed in me. Now she's not gonna say that to me, those words, I'm disappointed, but I know she was going to be. And that is probably the worst thing that I could have ever done in my life, knowing that it would be something that would hurt my mom, losing my scholarship my first year in college. There I was, all my few little possessions that weren't being transported up to Washington, D.C. Here I was on 95, leaving New Orleans, and I tell you what, it was a scary feeling because I was leaving my home. I was leaving my family. I was leaving everything that I was raised with, everything that I knew, everything that I loved to come to a place where I knew no one. But you know what? It was also exciting. It was exciting because I was going somewhere that I had never been. I was going to a place where they said it was a melting pot. Meet all types of people. That was the exciting part. But I tell you what, when I was on that highway by myself, 95 is such a long stretch, especially when you're doing it by yourself. I learned that this is the moment. This is your time. This is when you are supposed to step out, step up and do what you're meant to do. And I tell you what, again, that was a scary thing, but here's the thing, you have to, you have to step out of your comfort zone. And that is what I did 
I stepped out of my comfort zone. I stepped away from the protection that I always had as a child growing up. And I learned that I could do it on my own. I could make it on my own. And I have made it on my own. That is what I learned when I was on my way to Washington, D.C. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience. If you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did they get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise. Then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say, apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. Integrity means everything to me. Because for one thing, I was always told by my mom and my aunts that you always have to have integrity. And what they meant by that was that you have to keep your word. Whenever you give your word to someone or say that you're going to do something, then you make sure that you do it. Make sure that you keep your word. I did not go probably a day or a week without hearing that because my mom, one of the things she used to say to us is whenever we did something wrong and she's like, who did this? You know, one of the things she used to say to us is always tell me the truth because the truth may save you from getting punished, but a lie is going to always get you punished. So that's what integrity means to me is that you always tell the truth. You always say what you mean. You always keep your word. And so to me, that is what I would say to my 21 year old self, because that is a lesson that I learned very young and it, it just was ingrained in me very young. And I always, always to this day, keep that in me. And I always make sure that I be around people that are the same way, that have integrity. And that's the lesson that I learned. And that's the lesson that I would want my 21, that I would tell to my 21 year old self.
You know, one of the things I, I remember as a child is um, my mom and the way she was, the way she grew up, but also the fact that she didn't have a lot of opportunities. There was a lot of re restrictions for her during her time growing up. And because of that, a lot of things that she may have wanted to do, she didn't get to do. But she always made sure that she let me know there are no limits to what you can do. Even though she didn't get to do or live some of her dreams because of being a black woman in the South, it was, it was a, a restrictive time for her. But she wanted to make sure that I did not see that or I did not feel that way, that I knew that whatever I set my mind to do, that I could do it. And so that's what I would want to share is that you never ever give up on what you want to do or what you think that your purpose is in life. Because what I learned from my mom is that there are no limits to what you can do when you set your mind to it. You just have to make sure that you have that mindset, that you have that winning attitude, that you have that, I am not going to give up. Because she always encouraged me. With her, I can't was not in my vocabulary. She did not ever want to hear me say that. And so that is what I would say or share, that you never give up. Never say, I can't, especially if you haven't tried it. Never say, I can't because there are no limits to what you can do. So here's what I would say to all the ladies out there, especially in, the, in your careers, those of you that are trying to advance in your careers, that are trying to move into those executive level positions, the C-suite. I would say to you that you have to show up to rise up. You know, don't think that anyone owes you a promotion because they don't. But when you show up, you will rise up. And when you show up, you will tap into your full potential because tapping in your full potential, that is exactly what women are made of. Guess what? We are a tremendous resource on this planet. Women, that is. We're the best resource that could ever be on this planet. So always remember that you can do it and that when you want to move up in your career, all you have to do is say, I'm gonna show up so that I can rise up because that's the way it's done. Reach your full potential. Don't let anyone dim your dreams because you are worth it. You are valuable. You can do anything, like my mom said, you can do anything that you set your mind to do. Just show up and you will rise up. So here's the reason why organizations contact us to help them. Because they know when they bring us in, we will help the women in their organization to rise. We will help those women to understand what it means to be in a leadership role. We will help these women to make sure that they can maneuver around some of the obstacles that may face women. Because let's face it, women have challenges, a lot of challenges in organizations. They're more closely scrutinized than their male counterparts. And so we go into these organizations to help not only the women, but the men benefit from it too, because they have to understand that women are there and they can do the job just as well. They, are, they don't have to just be in an administrative or, or uh, on the admin side of the house. They can be on the technical side and they can do the same work that their male counterparts are doing. So when organizations bring us in, the first thing we do is look at how they're set up. Who is in the leadership roles? What's the 
the percentage of men on top versus women on top. And when we can go in and do that and figure out why you have that imbalance, then we show them how they can balance things out, how they can put women in these positions, women that will be competent, women that will be confident, women that will be assertive, women that know how to build a network. And then we show them that having that diversity in their organizations will also help them to make better decisions. That is why these organizations call the Executive Women's Success Institute to help them to move forward, to help them to change the trajectory of their company and to help them to figure out why they can't get certain things done because they have too many decision makers at the top that look the same and they need a more diverse, they need more women. And so that is what they need from us to show them how they can do that, how they can actually put these things in motion. That is what the Executive Women's Success Institute does for organizations out there. Wow, what I have enjoyed uh, uh, the most about going through the making of an entrepreneur today, this has been a great experience and it has taken me out of my comfort zone. When you, you know, sometimes you feel like, hey, I got this, I can do this, but when you actually get in that hot seat and when you're actually sitting there to do it, it really makes a big difference. But the, the people that are here, the people that have helped me to bring out my story, I am just so appreciative of them because they have made me feel so comfortable. They have um, just taken my story and I, I just can't wait to see it myself, but they really took the story and made it come alive for me. So I'm hoping that it, it's gonna show the same and I know it will because even just taking the photos, the person that was taking my photo, I was just blown away by the way the, the photos were being taken and how he made me feel so comfortable. So the making of an entrepreneur, this journey, I tell you what, I always say that you should learn something new every day. And this has been my something that I learned new this day, the making of an entrepreneur and working with the staff here. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't wanna work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you wanna go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, 
and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. I grew up in a single parent home and uh, my dad wasn't around, uh, but one of the, the great things that he did do, even though he wasn't in the household, he made sure that he paid for my education. So if you can envision growing up in Southeast, uh, it was hard knock city, and a lot of the friends that I hung out with, they were in low to middle income homes, so they didn't have a lot. And so there were lots of desperate times when I was growing up. But here I was being bused all the way across town to a private school. And one of the things that I can appreciate about that is that it helped to give me my voice. I was able to articulate and I was able to learn at a level not like my peers and not like my friends. So I found myself many times having to dumb down uh, the intelligence that I had so that I would fit in with the people that I called my friends. And I grew up in an era where someone being articulate or someone being a bookworm wasn't really cool. So it was tough for me to uh, matriculate between a world where I was in private school during the day and I came home and I was cool, Rob, in the afternoon. It's not a good thing when you have kids today who can't fit in, where they can't find their voice. And the, the cool thing that I can say for me is that I learned at a really early age that you should never dumb down your greatness to fit in with people who are mediocre. One thing that I've learned in life is that everyone, no matter where you are, your ethnicity or your financial background, everyone wants to be appreciated everyone wants to be accepted, and everyone wants to be acknowledged, right? Uh, whatever you do, there's a sense of belonging. You need to have some level of acceptance in your family, in your circle of influence, or anywhere you go. Uh, you also want to be appreciated, right? But early on in my career, I was blessed to advance rather quickly. Uh, in fact, I was promoted quicker than anyone around me, and I was really, really young. And I thought that the people around me, my peers, they would appreciate the fact that one of their own had graduated and made it to the corporate office. That's what I thought. I wanted to be appreciated, I wanted to be acknowledged, but I learned a painful lesson for me is that not everyone will celebrate your success. <laughs> you know, this may not be popular, but one of my favorite recording artists, uh, he wrote, produced, and sang on his album. The entire thing, he did it himself. And uh, he was a really, really popular artist at that time. And uh, he may not be a household name that everybody wants to mention, but I saw the genius in R. Kelly a long time ago. And I saw that he was able to accomplish a lot by himself. And I tried to replicate what I saw him do early on. I tried to do everything myself. And a lot of people who are in business, when you start your business or your brand or you offer your service, you try to do a lot of things alone. But it's in that alone time that you, know, you have a lot of questions that are unanswered. And the only person that you can look at is you. And the reality of that is that you need a team. Right? There's an African proverb that says something like, if you want to go fast, you can go alone, but if you want to go far, you want to do it together. You want to do it with a team. And I know that in trying to replicate what I saw this particular artist doing, I tried to do that myself. And I absolutely uh, did a lot of self-sabotaging things because I wanted to operate alone. And if there's anything that anybody can gain from my story, just and watching my journey, uh, you need to get it in your head, embedded in your brain that you cannot move to the level of success that you want to achieve alone. It's very important that 
we look to others, whether it's your family, your circle of influence, uh, or even business associates, it's really, really important to grasp the concept of collaboration. In fact, there's a hashtag that I always share with people that says that there will be no elevation without collaboration. Somebody should get a t-shirt that says that. There will be no elevation without collaboration. And that is a challenge for me that took me years and years and years to figure out that if you don't have someone else or a team of people around you to help you with your path to success, you will only further and take longer to get to where you want to be simply because you're trying to do it alone and by yourself. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now, um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. Wow, it was a Tuesday. Unlike any other Tuesday that I'd ever experienced before. And I remember it well, it was October the 19th. I'll never forget October the 19th. It began like any other day. Um, I was in corporate America and I was going to closed a really big deal at Howard University. And uh, the regional vice president, he gave me a call and said, hey Rob, you know, can I meet you at the office? And I said, no problem. And uh, I was really, really fond of this particular guy because you know, I'd shown his wife around town and uh, we'd eaten dinner together and uh, I really enjoyed the working relationship that we had. So when he said, come meet me at the office, I said, no big deal. And uh, I went into the office and uh, I met the regional VP there and in walked the regional vice president of sales. Uh, this young lady, I had helped to train, so she was an ally, she was a comrade. And so I was surrounded by friends. And my first thought was we were getting ready to go to breakfast. And uh, the regional VP said, let's go meet in your office. Now to set the scene for you, my office is really big. It's a corner office with a scenic view and I had this big brown mahogany round table in my office. And we sat down together and uh, we made some small talk. And then the regional VP, he sighed, he breathed in really loudly. He said, 
This is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And uh, at that point, I didn't know anything was going to happen. You know, it went right over my head. And uh, we had a two to three minute conversation. And the conversation ended with, we will no longer be in the Robert Antonin business. Wow. That was probably one of the best days of my life. I had been promoted to a customer. Uh, I was let go in that moment. And for many people who face that challenge, uh, it is something that's uh, horrifying. It's something that's something that they can't get over. But the reality is a year and a half prior to that day, October the 19th on a Tuesday, I had been praying faithfully to God that he would put me in a position where I could use this gift that he'd given me to speak. But I couldn't do that because I was working this corporate job, this nine to five. But the one thing that I will say to anybody that's under the sound of my voice, when you pray, we serve a really big God. If you have the faith to believe, just know that he can do exceedingly and abundantly in your life. If you give him a pity pat prayer request, he's going to give you a pity pat blessing. So make sure that you're very, very specific on the prayer request that you're asking for. It could make the difference between getting what you want and kind of getting what you want. <laughs>
that you allow for failure, that you allow for imperfection, and to most importantly, show grace. <laughs> I remember a day, I think it was after an MLK Day program, and I was one of the co-hosts of the event, and uh, I was really nervous about how I perform and how I did because speaking was my dream, to have an opportunity to speak in front of a body of people. And I was in my church, my home church, and this is what we would call a mega church. And after the event, I was in the back hallway uh, meeting and greeting with some of the people that were there. And uh, I saw an iconic figure in the distance walking toward me. And as the figure got closer, I recognized a face. It was Dr. Willie Jolly. And uh, we locked eyes and he said, young man, you did a great job. <sighs> Best thing I could hear after that event, right? Because I was so nervous about how I did. And he said, I, I really like what you did. And I said, Mr. Jolly, I want to do what you do. I want to make a million, zillion, trillion dollars speaking just like you. <laughs> and uh, He said, anything I can do to help, young man. And uh, he gave me a business card. He was ready to give it to me. And um, I said, well, what do I have to do? I just want to learn under your expertise. I want to be under your toolage. And he said, just one moment. He said, have you ever heard of Toastmasters? I said, yeah, I've heard of Toastmasters, but I want to make a million, gazillion, trillion dollars like you. And he said, I'll tell you what, I'll show you everything that I know, but first I'd like for you to go through this program. And when you finish the program, then you can give me a call. So every speaker that I admired at that time never mentioned Toastmasters. In fact, whenever they talked about Toastmasters, they spoke about it in a negative context, right? But this was the Willie Jolly who told me that he would give me the keys to the kingdom as long as I started Toastmasters and I finished the program. So I did exactly what he said. And I think within about two and a half years, I went on to get the highest uh, accolade that they could give you, uh, DTM, it's the Distinguished Toastmaster right? And I couldn't understand in the beginning why he asked me to do that, right? I'm asking him for the keys to the kingdom. I want to make a bazillion, jillion dollars. Well, I'm a person of faith and I know that the word says that you have to study in order to show thyself approved. So I'm thankful that in that moment, uh, not even asking, Dr. Willie Jolly told me to go through a program that helped to define who I am and help me to perfect my craft. And for anybody who's listening and you wanna do anything in life, uh, no one's gonna give it to you. You have to first study to show yourself approved. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just wanna to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you wanna release, or maybe you have a story right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience. If you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did they get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on, a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world. 
to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want, or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm going to invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button. It'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. <laughs> That's a great question. What would I say to my 21 year old self? I would probably say without fail, without question, fail forward and fail fast. Uh, usually when I talk to a group of entrepreneurs who are starting their journey, I tell them to hit the wall. And usually I repeat that two or three times, hit the wall. And at the point that I realize that no one knows what I'm talking about when I say hit the wall, hitting the wall is getting to a point in your career, in your life where you get to a point of rejection. The wall represents failure. The wall represents the no. The wall represents the failed business. The wall represents anything that you are trying to accomplish that poses an obstacle. And when you get to the wall, the successful people will all tell you, they figure out a way at that wall to either go left, they either go right, they go above, they go under, or they go through the wall. But the important thing that you need to know when you start your journey is to get to the wall. Because at the wall, that's the defining moment where you get to see what you're really made of. And the reality for most people, most entrepreneurs in life or in business, when they get to the wall, they stop. When they get to the wall, they give up. And I know that for sure because that used to be me. I'm here to tell you that I could have been the greatest rapper alive. In fact, I could have been the most prolific freelance writer in America. But I reached my wall, I got nervous, I got scared, and I quit. So if I were to talk to my 21-year-old self, I would tell myself to get to the wall and once you figure out if you're gonna go left, to the right, above, underneath, or through the wall, you're getting closer to that point of success that every entrepreneur has, has experienced in their life if they achieve any level of success. And I can assure you that after you get through that wall, there'll be another wall. And when you get to that wall, the same principle applies. Figure out if you've gotta go left, go right, above, beneath, or through the wall. And every time you go through a wall, it will strengthen you for the next assignment. You will be battle tested and ready for anything that you face simply because you got to the wall. So in your journey, personally or professionally, it's important that you understand, recognize and internalize that you need to get to the wall. <laughs>"That's a great question. If I had to talk to my 21-year-old self, I think that I would say that you've got to understand or determine whether you're chasing your dream or you're chasing the bag. Because chasing the bag and chasing a dream are two totally different things. And I'm sure that someone under the sound of my voice says, "No, they're one and the same." No, they're not. Chasing the bag and chasing a dream are two totally different things. And I'm not saying that one is better than the other, one is worse than the other. You just gotta determine which one you're doing, if you're chasing your dream or if you're chasing the bag. And to make that very simple for anybody who's listening, who still doesn't process that, uh, if you were to ask anybody right now, poll your friend and say, do you have an iPhone or an Android? There will be a faithful few who will raise their hand and say, I have an iPhone. And then there will be others who say that they have an Android. They're both smartphones, but they do two totally different things. And sure, you can get an add-on to an iPhone to get something that an Android does and vice versa. You can get the Android to do some of the features that an iPhone does, but they're two totally different operating systems. And to make that point 
very clear. I have a friend I called uh, once when I had a Zoom meeting and I needed someone to stand in for someone who canceled. And I called him and I said, hey, you know, I'm in a pinch. It's 9.15 at night. I know you're home with the missus, but I need you to jump on and just speak to my audience. And the gentleman said, you know, no problem, Rob. You know, give me 15 minutes. I'll get myself ready. And he came on camera and he gave 30 minutes of absolute fire. And afterwards, I was like, man, thank you so much for helping me out. You know, what do I owe you? He said, Rob, it's nothing. Say less. I am actually living my dream. So anytime someone asks me to do this thing that I do, and I know I do it well, I am chasing my dream. I am living my wildest dream. And conversely, I have another super friend who was a musician, and uh, he's a bad guitar player. And I've seen him whenever a national recording artist comes to the DC area, he's always on set. And he plays and he's given absolute funk, right? Whatever they need, he can play that. But at the end of the set, you can best believe that he's wrapping up. He's probably one of the first persons to leave. Now, he's very, very talented, but he doesn't stay for autographs. He doesn't stay for pictures. He doesn't stay for any post-concert activities. He's out of there. And he makes it very, very clear that he's there for the bag. He's really good at what he does. He exchanges his valuable talent for a fee. So when you're in life, it's, it's no shame in picking one or the other, but you need to be very, very clear that tracing a bag and chasing a dream are two totally different things. <laughs>
there are several gurus and experts out there that'll tell you all about leadership. And for me, I've taken a small segment of the market and I talk to those leaders who are in service industries. Uh, when I say service industries, I'm talking about anybody who's doing uh, HVAC, uh, pest control, landscaping, uh, any type of organization that has an actual service that they provide, where they have guys that go out in the field and then you have middle management and the corporate office, right? I'm really, really locked into that particular element because that's what I've done for close to 20 years. And I remember distinctly the company that I worked for, we had this huge scourge, uh, at least that's what they thought in the executive uh, level, of unions being formed within our workforce. And we had a train the trainer training to happen. And essentially what we were looking to do was to practice union avoidance and keeping our staff happy. But for anyone who's been in a service business, you know that it's tough to keep a blue collar worker happy, right? And it's tough to make sure that you keep them motivated. You have directives that come from the executive level. They're passed on to middle management, and then they go to field management, and then it goes to the field. Now there's a big dilution that happens between the executive instruction and what the person in the field actually hears. So I know how to speak to that person, right? Uh, they wanna have something direct. They wanna know what's in it for me. And the big takeaways that I got from the train the trainer uh, experience was that if you wanna turn around your organization, there are three things you need to do, right? That's food, you gotta feed your troops. You gotta make sure that you are generally feeding them. And I'm not talking about pizzas. Uh, FYI, don't buy pizzas for your next meeting, please. If you want to ensure that your team is successful, these are some, some things you need to do. Make sure that you feed them. The second thing you need to do is to entertain them, right? And when I say entertain them, I'm not talking about a team building activity. I'm talking about intentionally make sure that you take a day while they're being paid for it to absolutely knock their socks off, bring in a comedian, take them to a show, take them to a game, do whatever you need to do, but make sure that there's a paid element to that where they still get paid and you're entertaining them. And the last thing that you wanna do is be crystal clear about communicating. And when I say communicating, I'm not saying communicate to talk to them, but to communicate to listen. So whether that's a survey or whether you have someone to come from the outside into your organization, AKA me, and I give your team an opportunity to speak to what it is that they're doing well in and what it is that they would like to see improved in your organization. And by and large, when your team has an opportunity to express them th themselves, when your team has an opportunity to know that they are being heard, they can be much more productive in your business, in your brand or your service. So it's important to know that my expertise is battle tested. I've been there in the tr trenches and my services can benefit your organization because I've been there, I've done that, and more importantly, I have a message that can not only help your team, but it can help the 10X your brand and your leadership within your service business. <laughs> the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. Man, this was probably one of the most dope experiences that I've ever had. The entire team was so professional. Uh, they were very, very prepared for the entire experience. And in fact, when I walked into it, I had no idea about the level of expertise that I would see uh, from the time I walked in into the time that I left. Everybody was very respectful. Uh, they communicated the entire process. But more importantly, I think an entity like this is very necessary to talk about what happens in the life of an entrepreneur because uh, in the words of T.D. Jakes, um, they see your glory, but they don't know your story. So when you have an event like this, when you have a series like this that speaks to the person who's not an entrepreneur, the person that wants to be an entrepreneur, and then you have an event that culminates all of those things and shows you behind the scenes, uh, that is so valuable. So if you're watching, if you're listening to this series, understand that you are getting a million dollars worth of game for free. Don't take this for granted. Listen to the stories of all the people and just know that behind the scenes to bring you this presentation, this docu-series that you see, 
there were some absolutely amazing people, each one of them. I would call them by name, but I'll probably embarrass them, but I'll definitely let you know the cat was amazing. <laughs> My man Shay, I've known him for so long, and uh, I I'm just really, really proud of what he's doing in this particular docu-series to give a voice to an entrepreneur, to give some shine to some people who may not always be on stage. Uh, and and uh, I'm just so glad that I was a part and I was able to contribute to this amazing process, to this awesome docu-series. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like <laughs> banging at your door. How would your life be different um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference? What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door. Boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you. So listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking. They like you. There's conversation going on but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't wanna work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y Sales, S-A-L-E-S, Hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. I can remember as a young child growing up in the inner city of Baltimore, where most people around us had a scarcity mindset. No one thought they would ever make it out of what we call the hood. And so growing up, my mom always taught us, hey, you can be whatever you want to be. You can do anything you want to do, even though she struggled to be a single mom of three kids. And so oftentimes we weren't sure what meals we were going to eat, how we were going to make ends meet, whether lights were going to be on or not. And so that made me start to think bigger in my own life at a very young age. And so as far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a nurse. And so that sounded unreal for someone coming from the inner city of Baltimore. But my mom made that that a reality. So as soon as we were old enough to go to a school where trade schooling was possible, my mom made that happen. And even though it took rigorous hours of us driving, my sister and I back and forth across town, she let us know that anything that we wanted to achieve, we could achieve. I knew that I wanted more out of my life but entrepreneurship actually wasn't on my radar. My goal was simply to be a nurse and help other people to get well. But as I kept on that journey, I decided that it just wasn't quite enough. The money was there, the fulfillment was there as far as educational, but I just felt like something was missing. Like I really wanted to have a, a larger impact on the world. And so that's where slowly but surely entrepreneurship crept into my life. But you know how, if anything, 
as soon as you're, you feel like you're on top of your game, something else comes along to kind of knock you down to your knees and test your resilience and see if you really want to be that entrepreneur. And so that's when divorce hit me. Um, instant single mom. I became an instant single mom to my two beautiful boys, Joshua and Jordan. And I knew that someone else had gone through what I had gone through. And so it kind of shifted the message that I was presenting to the world, one of healing, one of recovering from things that hit us so hard in life that we don't know whether we're going to keep standing or whether we're going to continue on the entrepreneurial journey or whether we're going to call it quits. One of the reasons that I really started my entrepreneurial journey is because I wanted to provide financial security for my children. And as they grew up, you know, they had better living than I had. We always want better for our children than what we had. And so, as I mentioned, you know, growing up in a poverty situation, you know, I wanted to make sure that my kids didn't experience the same lifestyle that I experienced. Unfortunately, August 22nd of 2020, I lost my youngest son, Jordan Alexander Cofield, in a tragic motorcycle accident. Jordan was an amazing athlete, student. Uh, he went to Morgan State University. He was the starting wide receiver and also the number one male in all the HBCUs for track. And his life was tragically cut short on August 22nd. Now, another thing that hit me really hard, you know, another thing that now I have to heal from. Um, the thing about losing Jordan was that it really knocked me to my knees. I didn't know if I wanted to go on as an entrepreneur anymore. I really just wanted to exist every single day. But knowing the light that Jordan was in our world, I couldn't stop. And so it actually shifted my journey yet again, where I was able to start to do things to make sure that his memory stayed alive and continue to do, to do that today. So I went into action instead of just staying stagnant and stuck and lying in bed crying about losing him, now my mission is to make sure that he's never, ever forgotten. So I've started the Jordan Alexander Cofield Foundation, which is a 501c3 nonprofit organization to now help other children who want to go to school, who are athletes and scholars, to make their dreams come to reality. And so we started the Jordan Alexander Cofield Scholarship Fund. And on August the 20th of this year, we'll be making sure that we honor Jordan more and we raise funds through an annual gala that we're starting this year for him. So although losing Jordan, losing a child is never easy. He was my baby boy. That's never an easy thing to heal from. I continue to heal. However, it does feel good to know that his name, his purpose, his life will never, ever be forgotten. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docu-series, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. Now, if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. 
go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Wow, what would I tell my 21-year-old self? I would tell my 21-year-old self to just go for it. Dive into your fear, don't wait, start early in your entrepreneurial journey, and make sure that you know that you are enough to accomplish anything and everything that you want to in this life. I can remember when I first started my health, wellness, fitness expos, I was terrified. I was afraid no one would show up. I was afraid I wouldn't have enough money to finish my journey. And to my surprise, everything turned out amazing. So every time that you think you're afraid, God's got you. You're going to make it through. Just go and do it. <laughs>Just write the story, tell your story. Somebody needs to hear your story because there's someone out there that's going through exactly what you've gone through, you've overcome. You know, we've all heard that saying, hey, what goes on in this house stays in the house. Well, we are destroying that myth, that stigma. We want you to share your story. As my twin power, Dr. Sherwood always says, your story is about you, but it ain't for you. So share your story, inspire someone else, encourage someone else, let someone have hope knowing that there is something on the other side of everything that you're going through today. So you can never foresee what's gonna happen in life. And so my suggestion would be to live each day out loudly, live it fully, do everything that you wanna do today because tomorrow's not promised. The next second of life is not promised to you. Never would I foresee that I would have ended up as an instant single mom. Never did I foresee that I would lose my sweet baby boy, Jordan Alexander Cofield at the young age of 20. Never would I foresee being a 10 time best-selling international author, speaker, wellness coach, all of those things were unforeseen. So live and live out loudly. Organizations hire my company because they trust me. Why? Because I've been a nurse for the last 31 years. They know that I'm knowledgeable. I am well-versed in the wellness arena. 
I help to solve problems that they have. They want healthy employees. That's what I bring to the table. Not only that, but if you're suffering with low self-esteem, I'm able to make you feel good on the inside and out and teach you ways to better take care of yourself. Total Harmony Enterprises is your one-stop shop when it comes to health, wellness, mind, body, and spirit. Your three-part puzzle, we're taking care of every part of you. I have thoroughly enjoyed my day today with Shea Brown and his team. They are professional, fun. They bring out the best in you, encouraging you all the way, making sure that you shine bright like a diamond. It's a great day. My name is Shea Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y Sales, S-A-L-E-S, Hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. And there I was, 15 years old and homeless. Now I know what you're thinking to yourself like, man, how could you be homeless at 15? Well, it was because of the decisions that I made at that age. Now listen, I wasn't perfect, right? So I can only, you can only imagine what decisions I had to make. So one of my habits was I was chasing after women, right? You know, I, I, was, I was a young person, I fell in love, right? And I thought that that was my, that was part of my journey, right? That was part of my success, but it really wasn't, right? So, you know, being homeless at 15 years old, when I think about it now, it's like, man, why did I even make that decision? Why did I have to put myself through that trial and error? But you know what? It was a learning curve. Right. But I remember I can, that's, I think back now, I remember that living in my car, 15 years old with a busted window in a station wagon, right. That my, my dad had bought me. Now I know you say, well, wait a minute, where was your parents? Where was your mom? Where was your dad? Well, my mother wasn't in my life at the time, but my dad did the best that he could. But he always said something that whenever you decide that you want to be grown, you're going to have to get out and live on your own. And at 15, I thought I was grown, right? Un unbeknownst to me, <laughs> being in that situation, as I think back now, I would never, I wouldn't even want anybody to do what I did, right? I wouldn't want my kids to go through what I went through. Why? Because man, it was, it was hard. 
it was extremely hard. And I remember saying to myself, you know what, how am I gonna survive? And I remember writing bounce checks. Yep, bounce checks, had a bank account. And I said, you know what, this is how I'm gonna get my food. This is how I'm gonna get, put gas in my car. Until one day, I got to a point where it was like, listen, enough is enough. There is no longer, I can do this. And you know what had to happen? I had to have a conversation with God. And I say, God, listen, I need to be able to get out of this situation. What do I do? I remember my dad telling me back at that time, pay phones was a big thing. And I remember my dad telling me, always keep a dollar on you just in case you got to make that phone call. And luckily enough, I had a dollar. I was able to break four quarters. I got to the pay phone. I called my dad. I said, God, please let him answer. Please allow him to accept me back. And sure enough, I picked, he picked up the phone and he said, son, come back home. And the last thing I needed God to do was give me the opportunity to write one more last check just to put gas in my car so I can get home. And you know what? I appreciate that time. At 21 years old, I am living the dream of my life. Man, you talking about made my first million dollars. I'm taking trips. Man, the feeling was amazing. I'm talking about doing things that I always thought that I wanted to do because I never had that lifestyle. I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. So I had to get in and I grind. You're talking about from seven to now 21 years old, I'm just doing the things that I always wanted to do. However, life hit yet again. And this is where you, you come into a play where not having the things that you needed, and, and what I mean by that is knowledge, right? I didn't have the right resources. I didn't have the right people in my corner. So you're talking about blankly, I just made a million dollars. Nobody helped me get there. It was because I grinded. It was because I put, put my foot down and I just kept running, right? And running and running. But structure, structure is what came and bit me in the backbone, right? And I remember putting myself uh, in a position where I had to make a decision. And that decision was tough. That decision caused me to literally lose it all. At 21, I made it. Five years later, I lost it. And the feeling that I had at that time, it wasn't depression, it wasn't stress, but what it was, was it was a sense of going back, going back to being homeless. And that feeling scared me. It put me in a position and what happens when you put a dog in the corner? They bite, right? And I had to put myself in the, in the realm of prayer and asking God to guide me, to give me every the resources to send me the right people because I know that this was not the lifestyle that he wanted me to live. And now that I think back on that, I thank God that I took the first step forward and I made that decision to not quit to not give up, but to stay strong and always remain positive. I appreciate having those particular steps, stepping stones to get me to that next level. One of the hardest decisions that I had to make in my life, I was living in Kissimmee, Florida and I remember I had to make a decision and that decision was choosing between my business and being there for my son being born and being there for his first walk, being there for his first, his talk, you know, just being present, right? And um, it really uh, took a toll on me to make this decision. It wasn't a quick one, but luckily I had somebody in my corner which was God to kind of help guide me through this. And the, the thought that I had to think about was if I decided to stay, then what or how my son would suffer as far as for me not being able to provide for him the things that I knew that he would need as growing up as a young man. Then the other thought was, well, if I, if I don't become present, right, I risk the fact of him growing up the wrong way, 
things of that nature. But I knew that I would be able to provide for him financially where I would be able to be a part of his life for the long run. So the decision that I had to make was I had to leave. I left. I wasn't there when my son was born. It hurt me. I cried, right? I get emotional a little bit about think when I think about it now. But now that he's five years old, I'm excited that I'm able to be at every game. Every time he needs something, I'm able to, prov to provide it for him. So it was a bad feeling. It was a tough time in my life. I, I didn't allow the stress to overtake me, but I still stress, right? But I remember just saying, hey, I have to keep going. I can't stop. But at the same time, you know, it, it just, it, it really took a toll on my life. But I thank God that he got me through it. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone just want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. My dad was a rubber roofer and he told me, hey son, time to go to work with me. And I remember putting myself in the lazy mode where I was like, man, I just didn't want to work, right? So my dad gave me, after working the job for seven days, my dad handed me $500. And when he handed me the $500, he said, son, this is what it looks like for working for yourself. You got two choices. You can either work for yourself or you can go and work for somebody else. Either choice is good. However, working for yourself gives you more opportunity and more freedom. And I remember when we were out working a job and I saw somebody who was driving a really nice car and he got out looking really sharp. And I say, Dad, man, I, you know, I know we're working this, this construction job, but I want to I wanna dress like he dressed, and I want to drive what he drive. He said, well, son, go and ask what he do. So I went up to the man, and he said to me when I asked him, I say, sir, what is it that you do? He said, why you ask? I said, because I want to drive the car you drive. I want to wear the clothes you wear. And he said, son, if you want to do what I do, 
If you want to wear what I wear and you want to drive what I drive, you got to wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and you got to go get it. Whatever it is that you feel that you need or you want to do, you got to stick to that and you got to go get it. And I remember looking at my dad going back and saying, Dad, you know what? There's a decision of nine to five or an entrepreneur. And I want to choose entrepreneurship. And he looked at me and he said, well, let the journey begin. So at the age of seven, I decided to be an entrepreneur and run my own candy store. In doing so, my dad was able to get me my own brick and mortar store where I was able to hire my first employee, which was my baby sister, um, my auntie, uh, and a few other people. And fast forward today, it put me in a position to now currently control 15 companies, all because I made the decision of being that entrepreneur, right? I am now heavily into cryptocurrency. I'm heavy into real estate. I'm heavy into running membership institutions. I'm heavy into entrepreneurship and helping other entrepreneurs get to the place of where they don't have to worry about the struggle. They don't have to worry about the trial and error because you got to remember back at my time, we didn't have uh, social media and we didn't have all of the things that's helping us out today to take us to that next level, right? So it was because of my success, uh, because of that decision that I made that got me to where I'm currently at right now. So I, if it wasn't for my dad allowing me to have options, allowing me to have opportunities and helping me say, son, listen, you got to make a decision. It's either work for somebody or work for yourself. And I decided to work for myself. And I thank God that I did because like I stated to you before, cryptocurrency is one of the best things or best decisions that I could have ever made in my life. I'm so glad that it even exists. So now I'm what they call a serial entrepreneur, right? And let me explain something to you. This journey is not an easy one. And whoever told you that it was, I'm here to tell you now, it's not. You're talking about failure. You're talking about quitting. You're talking about not wanting to do it. But let me explain something to you. That when you decide to step on this other side, you got to be prepared for the caution signs. This is a part of the process. So I don't want you to think about uh, the journey. I don't want you to think about the end goal, the results. I want you to only focus on the progress because the progress is what's going to help you accelerate into your next level. The progress is going to help you when it's time for you when you say, I want to quit or I want to give up. The process is going to show you and mold you into who you need to be or who you need to become. So it's very, very important that at this moment in your journey, whatever decision you choose to make, even if it's being a nine to five worker, be the best nine to five worker. If you're going to be that entrepreneur, be the best entrepreneur. The key to success, one of the ingredients to success is to never give up and is to never fail. It's to always keep going. It's to never quit. Listen, if I could leave you with anything and anything, it's choices, chances, changes. You must make a choice to take a chance or your life will never change. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole 
purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't wanna get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. Wow. If I had to sit down with my 21-year-old self, the advice that I would give is get a mentor. And the reason why is because a mentor carries leadership. I remember when I got my first mentor. Now, it wasn't until I got about 25 years old. So you talking about 25 years of doing this entrepreneurship industry by myself, right? Of, of not having that mentor. But when I was 25, I had a mentor to come along to help coach me and help guide me in structure and how to structure business and how to run business. And that mentor literally scaled my business and helped take me from making a million dollars a year to over $10 million a year, right? So why that is one of the reasons why it's important for you to have a mentor because they're gonna help you level up. As an entrepreneur, you are always gonna hit a glass ceiling. And that mentor is the individual to help you break through that glass ceiling to help get you to your next season, to your next level, to your next destination. So my advice to you is to make sure that you seek out and search for a mentor that's going to help mold you and shape you into your next level. One of my core philosophies is drive. You see, roads were made for journeys, not destinations. So what do I mean by that? I remember when I was coaching and mentoring one of my great students now, her name is Santresa, and I remember when she came to me, she didn't have any drive. She was caught, you know, where she, she was down. She didn't understand what drive meant. And what drive really means is that taking self, right, looking at self in the mirror and saying, how can I be better at who I am? right? Who God made me to be. As a matter of fact, how can I be better at my gift? What is my gift? Drive is going to help identify. It's going to create that identity in who you are and where you want to go and what you want to be. And I remember helping her along the way. And as we continued this, right, journey, right? Because it's not a destination. It's a journey. As we continued uh, continue the journey, we were able to take, help take her to the next level. Her business literally flourished. She had a new logo. She had great inspiration. She started to speak as a coach. Now today, she runs a multi-million dollar 501c3, and she is now helping individuals, young individuals, find their purpose through trauma, right? Helping them scale. Why? Because it's, her, she's driven. She's driven to now help people. So what's going to help you get to that next level? Have drive. Man, there I was, you know, I was in a place, I was at crossroads where um, I just didn't have any, any, anything left. I wanted to quit, right? But at the same time, I reached out to my coach 
And I say, listen, I, I, I want to give this thing up. I no longer want to do this anymore. And he said, casual, you got to stay dedicated. You got to stay dedicated to the, to the, to the goal. You got to de stay dedicated to the gift. And I said, coach, I need you to explain what does that mean? What does it mean to stay dedicated? He said, what time are you waking up in the morning? Well, I'm waking up at 6 a.m. He said, wake up at 5. He said, how long do you work? Well, I say, I work about 12 hours. He said, work 16. You see, I, I wasn't understanding how I had to do more. But as I did more, I understood that dedication started to, to increase my, my workflow. Dedication started to increase my, my revenue stream. Dedication is what drove me to keep going. Dedication is what kept me in the game. Listen, I just want to just be honest with you guys for a second. Determination is the most important piece of all elements of being an entrepreneur. And what do I mean by that? I remember a time when I was a track student and I had injured myself and I thought that I wouldn't be able to run, but I stayed dedicated and I stayed determined and I still ran the race even through an injured leg. I said, okay, I had to think, what position could I help my team in the most, right? So I decided to come from the last leg because I was the fastest person and I had to suck it up. I had to stay dedicated to, to I saw my team win in the end. So what did I do? I was determined to get on that track field. I was dedicated to, to receive that baton and I was determined to pass it off to my teammate because I knew that if I was able to at least give them a little bit of an inch, he would have been able to make it across that finish line. And you know what? We won the gold medal. And that's all because I stayed dedicated and I stayed determined. Listen, if I can leave you with anything, and I mean anything, it is for you to stay dedicated into your journey. It is for you to stay driven. It is for you to stay uh, determined on where you need to go to that next level. Listen, coming together is the beginning. Sticking together is progress, but working together is success. Why do companies work with us? Well, one of the reasons why companies work with us is because we focus on the process and not the results. You see, there's a difference. Individuals always look at results first, right? But they never pay attention to the process. Let me give you an example. When you're trying to lose weight, you say, I want to lose weight. I want to lose 30 pounds and I'm going to lose it in 30 days. Well, that's a result because then when you get to that 30 days and you don't lose weight, what happens? You get discouraged and you stop. But see, if you focus on the process and you don't put an end result to it, what happens now is you say, I just want to lose weight. And then now when that 30 days comes and you step on that scale, you see that you lost a little weight. That's process. So now what happens? You're motivated, you're determined, you're driven to do what? Keep going. Now you're able to shift and show what needs to be done, what adjustments you need to make. And that's why individuals love working with us is because we make sure that the process is gonna get you where you need to go. Remember, roads are not made for destinations, they're made for journeys. One of the things I enjoyed about the making of the entrepreneur is the team. The team that Shea Brown has put together, Shea himself um, has made this opportunity for individuals like myself and others. And when I tell you, when you get here, you are going to love the people. You are gonna love exactly everything that they do. They do everything that they can to make you be who you are, right? They bring you out of you. So one of the things I love is the team and the people that Shea Brown has put together. It's a great day. My name is Shea Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem, and you want to be paid, right? And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people 
and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very closely because this might be you. So listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking. They like you. There's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. My brother Peter and I, it's just the two of us, and I always felt, even though he didn't think so, we had a sibling rivalry. Everything he did came so easy, wouldn't open a book and would get good grades. For me, I would study and study and study and still maybe get a B. I was so jealous and I was the oldest, even for college, he went to Harvard University and I went to Hostra, a very reputable local school, but he always teased me. He went to the big H and I went to the smaller H. And I always felt that I had to continue to prove myself. I wanted to be his big sister, his idol, someone he looked up to, but I really looked up to him because I was just so envious. Everything came so easy. Everything I had to do took a lot of effort, a lot of failure, but it really made me stronger. And I realized that we had totally different personalities. We were different people and we each had our own life to live. And I'm happy that he made me and challenged me to be more than I am. So I thank him for that. <laughs> I have been living my life trying to please my father. When I thought about, again, competing with my brother and everything that we did, for me, my dad was the most important person to me, especially because my parents got divorced and he wasn't in the home. Even though I didn't have the best grades, even though I tried, I didn't bring home the best boyfriends to his standards, of course. And early on, the jobs I took weren't really the best in his opinion either. And I always said, well, what else can I do to ensure that he's happy, that he's pleased with what I'm doing in my life? And it was about education and knowledge. So I went and got a second master's degree and now I have my PhD and he is very proud. And he may not tell me every single time when I achieve something that he is proud, but I can tell. So I'm thoroughly pleased that he is pleased with me and we have a great relationship. Early on, I lacked self-confidence. And that came from my father, again, never saying great job or giving me a pat on the back when I felt I did something that was extraordinary. And I carried that into adulthood, thinking that nothing I did was great. 
And finally, I figured out that it was just him. The way he was brought up, his mother never gave him any kudos or recognition. And that's how some households are run. And we have to remember that we are valuable. We have confidence. There's great things that we can do, but we just need someone else to let us know. And my mother was always that person for me. No matter what I did, she loved it. So she helped balance my life between what my father didn't tell me, but maybe knew deep inside, and what she did tell me publicly. So always have people in your lives that can cheer you up, cheer you on, and motivate you. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, this one, pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. When I was 13, my parents told me that they were getting divorced and I was shocked. There was never any fighting, never any turmoil like I heard in other families' homes when the parents were not happy with each other. And it was really a shock because again, I thought we had a perfect family, perfect lifestyle. My dad took a job out of state, but I thought that was only because he couldn't find a job locally. And that really shaped my life. Again, I was 13, just a teenager, coming of age. And that shaped my whole framework about relationships, family, men, life, financial stability. And even today, I'm not married. I don't have any kids. And that comes from me not, not wanting to make the same mistakes that my parents did. And that's what makes me who I am today. After my parents got divorced, my mother tried her best to run the household, finding a decent full-time job, but had trouble paying the mortgage and the rest of the bills. And she made a very tough decision to sell our childhood home. Again, another point in time where I was devastated. I grew up there, I had friends, 
family would come all the time for the holidays. We all knew each other. The neighbors all knew each other. You know, you have that one neighbor when you're bad, the neighbor can spank you. That was the kind of neighborhood that we had. We were, we were so close. And when I was, saw that moving truck pull away, I felt my life would never be the same. The memories would still be there, but everything would be different. And I knew that I did not want to have the same circumstances. It took me a long time to think about owning my own home because I didn't want to go into debt and foreclosure. But now I am financially stable. I know that I don't spend beyond my means to ensure that no matter what happens, I can be financially secure and not have to depend on anybody else for anything and not give up my worldly possessions. Back in the late 1980s, my mother suffered her first stroke. And when I looked at her in her hospital bed, I am wondering, is she ever going to be able to come back to full strength? She came home for a while and was doing great, but there was a point in time where she couldn't work anymore wasn't able to maintain paying a rent or utilities. We moved room with my brother and he was with her for 15 years. And during that time, she had several other medical issues. She came to live with me at about, about six years ago and now I'm her caregiver. And just to watch someone who raised you, who was your rock, your strength, suddenly start to deteriorate, not remember the important aspects of your life, it really puts your own life in perspective to say, remember the memories, write them down, tell someone about them, because you never know when you'll forget all of that. And every day is a blessing. And for me, I wanna make sure that my mom is safe, living her best life as best as we can. And I wanna be able to share that with others also, so that they can understand the struggle and stay ahead of everything that they think may or may not happen to them. And so that we all can learn together and move forward faster. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience. If you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did they get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on, a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story 
over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. When I talk to up and coming emerging professionals, I tell them all, have a personal board of advisors. Those are mentors, sponsors, coaches, advisors, those people who can give you guidance, those who are where you want to go, where you want to be. Not family, aunts, uncles, who we think are our advisors. They want you to live vicariously and be the dreams that they had. Have your own dreams, have your own passion. My parents wanted, to be, wanted me to be a lawyer and that wasn't my passion and I couldn't do it. But now I'm living my own life and my own career. So encourage all of you, have people in your life who uplift you and give you guidance and honest feedback. <laughs>a reflection of the five people that you hang around. Ensure that those people help balance you, stretch you, make you think differently, allow you to grow. When you hang around with people who are bringing you down, disgruntled, unhappy, that starts to feed into your DNA and your blood and you'll never get out of your own way. So please look at who you surround yourself with and if you need to change that environment, be brave and confident and do that. It'll benefit your life tremendously. My grandfather worked 50 plus years as a mechanic on cars. My dad worked 35 plus years in education. And for them, hard work did pay off. They would work hard, get their pay raises, and never got fired. In this day and age, hard work is not enough. There was so much competition, a lot of things that happen behind the scenes that you may or may not know about. We all must be vocal, visible, and valued. That's the only way we'll move ahead, we'll grow in our careers, we ensure that leaders know who we are and what we bring to the table. But without that being mute and behind the scenes, we will never move ahead. So please consider who sees you, who hears you, and who values you. The problem people come to talk to me about the most is how do I move up in my career? I'm working hard, I'm being told I'm doing a great job on my reviews, but I'm still not seeing the elevation that I expect. When you work with me and my company Appeal, we provide you the tools and resources, the tricks and tips that I learned that have allowed me to grow in my career that your leadership may not be telling you. Those hidden clues, the information that they tell some, but not everyone. When you talk and work with me, I give you all those tools, give you a way in which to elevate your value so that you can be fruitious in your career. Move up into the C-suite, become your own boss if you want. Reach out to me today so that you can elevate your value. Best thing and multiple things I love about working with Shea Brown and his team and the making of an entrepreneur is the people. They're so warm and welcoming. They're fun. I'm having a great time being here. They're very meticulous about detail. And the videography, if you can see the studio here, full of microphones, cameras, lights, and my story produced by them will help lots of people in the world. I tell you, if you've got a company or you're looking to elevate your value, reach out to Shea Brown and his team and you become part of our docu-series, The Making of an Entrepreneur. It's a great day. My name is Shea Brown and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, 
the entrepreneur, you the business owner, you the speaker, you the coach, you the author, you the network marketer, you the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid, right? And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference, what would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. And listen very carefully because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I wanna be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't wanna work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you wanna go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. So I, uh, I call myself a little bit of a non-traditional millennial. Uh, most millennials change jobs every two to three years. I found myself in a situation where I actually stayed with the same company uh, 11 years. And most people ask, you know, how did I actually transition into uh, being a founder and uh, leading an organization like Black Speakers Network, uh, particularly when uh, I always describe myself as a certified introvert, meaning I couldn't lead two people in silent prayer. And so uh, the journey for me actually was this process of moving outside of my comfort zone. Um, I, remember, I remember reading a book and it said that everything that you want in life is actually waiting for you, uh, but it's actually waiting for you outside of your comfort zone. And so working at this company for 11 years, you know, I thought I ach achieved really the pinnacle of success. And to a certain degree, I had. I was the first person in my family who had graduated to co from, from college, the first person in my family who actually made it into corporate America, and one of the first people that actually earned as much money as I did. But I sooner later realized that those were not the hallmarks of success, at least the things that mattered to me. What I really cared about was making an impact. And so throughout that 11 year journey, I started realizing that, you know, there's more to life than just showing up, going to a job and getting a paycheck. And yeah, you know, I got a chance to travel around. I had an opportunity to meet people and gain new skills, but there was something else waiting for me on the other side of that comfort zone. And so what I decided to do when I started Black Speakers Network in 2016 was to actually create a community where other people can plug in and get access to training and resources that they otherwise would not be able to get access to. And so for me, stepping outside of my comfort zone really represented reaching beyond myself and finding an opportunity to bring others on the journey with me. So one of my biggest challenges as an entrepreneur came in the face of figuring out just who to listen to. Uh, I always say that right now, it feels like the entire world is in competition for your mind. 
And what I mean by that is essentially there's no shortage of information, there's no shortage of resources, but there's always a challenge to figuring out how to tune in and really listen to the thing that's going to propel you to success. In my particular case, there's no you know, rule book uh, in the speaking industry. There's no uh, right way to do any one thing. And so whether it was figuring out you know, financially, how much money should I save? How much money should I reinvest into my business? How many hours a day should I uh, spend on actually bringing my vision to reality or simple things as, you know, when should I hire another person? Should I use a contract employee or should I actually bring somebody on full time? There are an endless number of decisions that need to be made as an entrepreneur. And the question always is, who do I listen to? And so in my particular case, I realized that you can't always be paralyzed by these types of decisions. You can't let perfection stand in the way of progress. And so every single day, I just got comfortable with the fact of getting just a little bit better, just 1% better. And if I make a mistake along the way, so what? <laughs> you know, there's always gonna be another opportunity to do it again. So one of the stories I always love to tell is the story of my first digital product and how I made my first, uh, my first sale, honestly. And so oftentimes, I think sometimes we think we have to hit the ball right out of the, the park the first time around. You know, everybody wants to know how to make six figures, seven figures, eight figures. But I like telling this story because it really helps, I think, contextualize how um, small beginnings can turn into um, major, major wins. And so in my particular case, I mentioned I was working full time and still, you know, just building my business in the evening. I would come home uh, at seven o'clock PM and from 7 PM to 12 o'clock, 1 AM in the morning, that was my prime time because you know, I was working all throughout the day. And so one particular Friday evening, I said, you know what? Um, you know, I, started Black Speakers Network, we had, you know, created a community, but I really hadn't monetized it. I really didn't have a way of, you know, creating income. And so I decided I'm gonna create a digital product. And so my very first digital product, and again, you know, don't let perfection stand in the way of progress. I said, I'm just gonna start. And I had to learn all this stuff along the way. I had to figure out, you know, how to create it. I had to figure out what I was gonna price it as. I had to figure out, you know, what software I was gonna use to actually deliver it. And I came home, seven o'clock PM, sat at my computer and seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. By 11 o'clock that evening, I created my first digital product. It was a spreadsheet called 51 Online Resources to Find and Book Speaking Engagements. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna test this and I'm gonna make it a $5 product. And I said, you know, if I can't make $5, maybe I don't need to be an entrepreneur at all. And so I went ahead, put together a little sales copy, put into an email, scheduled it to go out at 8 a.m. that morning. Now this is a Friday evening and so, the likelihood that a lot of people are gonna be checking their email Saturday at eight o'clock uh, probably isn't that high. And again, these are all things you learned along the way, but not letting perfection stand in the way of progress, I went ahead and I shot it out. And guess what? 8.05 a.m., email went out at eight o'clock. At 8.05 a.m., I had my first sale, $5 digital product. By 8.10, I had three sales. By 8.15, I had 10 sales. And now, again, $5 digital product. So, you know, I wasn't setting the world on fire, probably wasn't even enough money to pay my rent. But I learned a very important lesson. I had just taken something that was in my head literally less than 10 hours ago. And now that idea had translated into actual revenue in my bank account. And so what I realized is that if anyone is struggling with where to start, you know, how, you know, in, in, particularly in this era now, we are in such an incredible time where we have the tools and the resources to be able to create any type of business that we want right there in front of us on our laptop using the internet. But you have to start somewhere. My first product sucked. It was a $5 digital product. And now I've been able to turn that into a business.
Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. One of my major goals in life as a little kid was to be an aerospace engineer. And so if you could picture little Brian sitting on the living room floor uh, watching the old NASA space shuttle launches, I was just fixated and I knew I wanted to be a part of something big, something amazing. And so the closest thing that I knew to uh, be able to do that was to be an aerospace engineer. And so I went on this path to, to do that. And if you know anything about engineering, uh, it requires uh, math, it requires science, and it requires a little bit of technical acumen. And so going through the Baltimore City Public School System, uh, I was great at English, I was great at you know geography, all the other subjects, but for whatever reason, math always was the challenge. But, but despite that, I still made it into one of the best engineering programs and one of the best schools, in my opinion, in the country, and that was at Morgan State University uh, School of Engineering, and lo and behold, I had made it in. And so it wasn't until one fateful day, I was sitting in a, a class, actually Calculus 2. How I got through Calculus 1, I have no idea, but I had made it into Calculus 2. I was taking a test, and literally 30 minutes had gone past, I had nothing on my paper. And so, Getting frustrated, I look out the window, and there's one of those moments where you just do, do a direct appeal to God. You say, God, you start negotiating. I said, if you can get me through this test, just give me an answer, I'll be forever grateful. And I look out the window, and it was like the answer to the test appeared on the side of a building. The clouds parted, and across the distance on the other side of the campus, I saw Earl G. Graves School of Business and management. And that was my sign from God to put down the test, drop out of engineering school, and made my way into business. But if you've ever experienced the process of making a major change, I still felt lost. I ended up in business school, but I had no idea what would come from it. <laughs> There have been many times I found myself lost and 
none more than experience, the experience I had at Morgan State University. I mentioned to you, I failed engineering, found myself in the school of business, and I really didn't know what my next steps would be. I, I knew what companies were, I knew what business was, but I really had no idea exactly what I was doing there. Only thing I knew is that I was a failed engineering student. Uh, until one day, this young lady came running into our class, all excited about this organization called Toastmasters. And she said, you know, you could practice becoming a public speaker. And obviously, I am an introvert. I had no interest in standing in front of an audience and trying to lead them to anything. And so I saw it as a challenge. I saw it as an opportunity, the proverbial mountain uh, for me to be able to climb. And so I said yes. And not only did I say yes, I volunteered to speak at the very first meeting of this new uh, Toastmasters Club at Morgan State University. And so if you have been sitting with me in this, picture yourself in a small classroom. Uh, it's hot, <laughs> it's sticky, and we're in our very first meeting in Toastmasters. You would have watched me as I stood up, made my way to the front of the room, and delivered my very first speech. A couple things happened. And number one, sweaty palms. We're starting to, you know, s sweat through the piece of paper that I was holding. My voice started to crack and shake just under the weight of the pressure trying to deliver those first few words out of my mouth. And if all of that wasn't bad enough, at one point I started pacing back and forth so much, I literally almost walked out of the room in the middle of my presentation. But through all that, through the butterflies in my stomach, what I realized is that, you know, I'm actually doing this. And as the speech came to the close and I started making my way back to the seat, I immediately noticed a couple things. Number one, uh, I was still alive. I didn't go into cardiac arrest. So that was a thing that I was super excited about. The second thing I realized is that everyone in the room was clapping. They gave me a standing ovation. Later on, I realized in Toastmasters, you know, they pretty much clap for everything, but it made me feel really good at the time. And the third thing I realized, and perhaps the most important thing, is that I just survived my first presentation. And if I could deliver one presentation, I could deliver two. And a few weeks later, I practiced, took the feedback from the first presentation, and I delivered a second speech. And two turned into four, four turned into six. And eventually, I delivered my first 10 presentations in Toastmasters. And that was really a defining moment for me because, again, I was able to climb the proverbial mountain. And had I not failed out of engineering school, made my way into school of business, I would have never found Toastmasters. And it never would have set me on this journey that we have today that led me to Black Speakers Network. So one of the things I realized as I made my way through Toastmasters is that, that I really enjoy this, this activity of speaking. Uh, but one of the things that wasn't necessarily apparent to me is that there was an entire business of professional speaking that was actually waiting for me. And so as I began down the path to learn more about what it takes to be a professional speaker, I started to seek out organizations and uh, you know, I was always the type of person that enjoyed learning things in the community. If I'm going to, you know, learn how to swim or if I'm going to, you know, learn how to dance, I would like to do it with other people. And the same thing came with speaking. Unfortunately, one of the challenges I recognized early on is that uh, at the time, uh, there wasn't what I perceived to be a lot of diversity, particularly when it came to uh, black speakers um, in the industry at high levels. I would go to events and conferences and just see uh, a lack of, of representation. And coming from uh, at HBCU, Historically Black College University, like Morgan State University, I knew the talent, I knew the expertise, I knew the creativity that black speakers uh, brought to the table. We bring it to everything, um, media, sports, entertainment, you name it. And so I, I thought there was a missed opportunity uh, not just for myself, I was a little selfish in wanting to you know, grow as a speaker, but I saw an opportunity uh, to be able to create an organization that was specifically there to serve uh, new and aspiring black professional speakers. And so having gone out to the world, not finding one, as an entrepreneur, then anytime you see a problem, the next best thing is to go and create an organization, a solution to the problem yourself. And that's what I did when I started Black Speakers Network. And so that was in 2016 and uh, starting this organization. Uh, and I knew that I wanted to do something to equip, connect and inspire 
the next generation of black professional speakers. And so uh, we started holding events, conferences, seminars, and I started to realize just having an online community and seeing that community grow from 100 to 500 to 1,000 to 2,000, 3,000 to now well over 15,000 individuals from all across the world who are unified around this vision of being able and having a desire to connect to the audience that they're called to serve. And so we went from you know, this idea to now being able to provide really robust speaker training resources, as well as access to speaking opportunities. Um, unfortunately, most people who have a desire to speak, they just don't know where to start, and they don't have anybody that can actually help them along the way. And if they can get access to that training, they can get access to those tools, whether that's creating a speaker website, being able to create their first course or their first digital product, and have access to speaking opportunities, then I saw that as the perfect intersection of value. And so that's what we've been uh, focused on in Black Speakers Network for the past few years. And it has been absolutely incredible to see the growth. I love seeing people get up and take their first step and confidently step onto the stage, whether it's virtual or in person, and actually connect to the audience that they're called to serve. <laughs>
And I think sometimes we think as an entrepreneur, you can kind of escape that. But the reality is that all of your customers are essentially your bosses too. <laughs> so you have to get really, really comfortable um, knowing what it is that you want and uh, executing on those things. And there are obviously gonna be things that you don't wanna do, but if something costs you your peace, if it's disrupting your way of being, if it's uh, causing you to sacrifice your own mental health, uh, then in my opinion, it's too expensive. And I think if I had the ability to go back and tell my 21 year old self that, that would essentially save me a lot of heartache, a lot of pain, and also a lot of, um, quite honestly, frustration, uh, being able to um, try to morph myself into something that I'm not is an unnatural way of being. I think one of the biggest gifts that entrepreneur can give um, the world is being authentic to who they are. And so for me, uh, if anything costs me my peace, I don't care how much money attached to it, I don't care what the benefit is, it's ultimately too expensive. <laughs>core principles I always like to revisit to keep myself um, productive and, and happy in business and just honestly not go insane is uh, the only thing I can really control uh, in life is my attitude um, and as an entrepreneur there are many many things that can go wrong and quite honestly many things can go right throughout the course of a day, a week, or a year. Uh, there are market forces. Uh, you can't control the economy. You can't control, you know, if people are going to uh, necessarily uh, buy all the time. And there are things you could do to influence that. Uh, but ultimately, what I decided is that the only thing that I could control is my attitude. And so when I wake up in the morning and, you know, I'm faced with a laundry list of tasks and, you know, I have meetings and I have things that I'm trying to get accomplished for. Black Speakers Network and ultimately to, to grow the business, I already know that there are gonna be certain things that go my way, there are gonna be certain things that uh, don't go my way. And at the end of the day, um, the only thing that I can really count on is my ability to uh, pivot in the moment and kind of reframe uh, those things that, uh, that I don't necessarily at the moment see as a win, but ultimately, uh, even if I you know, am losing, it's ultimately a lesson that I could take with me into the next season, into the next chapter. And so uh, attitude is everything. I think um, ultimately entrepreneurs have the control, the ability to see something differently in the world that other people may not necessarily be able to see and be able to add value. And so that to, that to me is a superpower. So value for me is being able to consistently control my attitude and that's the only thing I can control. One of the last pieces that I tell myself and I try to repeat to my entire team or really anybody who will listen is that uh, similar to when you go and take a trip and uh, trust me, I love traveling. <laughs> I love being on a plane and getting out of country as much as possible. Uh, one of the things that the flight crew always tells you is that in the event of emergency, always take the oxygen mask and put it on yourself first uh, before you try to help anybody else. And I think that same lesson is true uh, in all of life. You want to put your oxygen mask on yourself first before anyone else. Um, as an entrepreneur, you are constantly trying to satisfy the needs of the rest of the world. And uh, not just your customers, stakeholders, clients, but also we all have families. You know, you constantly are gonna be asked of your parents or children or just people. And the, the cool thing that I love about entrepreneurship, particularly working with uh, speakers and Black Speakers Network is that we all have a big heart. We all have a big capacity uh, for change. But ultimately, if you don't put your oxygen mask on yourself first, if you're not focusing on the things that you really, really uh, need, then that leads to the dreaded B word, which is burnout. And so one of the things I decided to start doing is uh, taking Fridays off. You know, every single week I block out my calendar and I say, okay, 
Uh, Sundays are going to be for meetings. You know, Mondays is going to be for projects. Tuesdays are going to be for this, and I block it out. But I always make sure that I have Fridays. Those are my days. I'm not, you know, doing anything that Brian does not want to do. Why? Because I'm putting the oxygen mask on myself first before I put it on the rest of the world. So I just want to challenge anyone listening right now. You know, make sure that you're putting some parameters in your life. There's always going to be somebody asking you to do something else. There's always going to be somebody wanting something from you. But you have permission. You have permission to turn off the phone, to put up blinders, to put up boundaries, and keep that oxygen mask on yourself before you reach over and try to put it on somebody else. So why Black Speakers Network? That's the natural question that most people ask when they come to us. From a speaker perspective, uh, there are really three things that folks can actually uh, get from joining an organization like BSN. Uh, number one is speaker training. Obviously, there's no roadmap. There's nobody goes to college or university to become a professional speaker. And so most speakers are going to need training. And when we say training, what we really mean is making sure that you're in the room putting you in close proximity to people who have uh, gone down the path, gone down the journey that you want to go to. And so when it comes to actually learning the business of speaking, not just to be a better speaker, but the business of speaking, we want to make sure that you get access to people who know what they're talking about. And so being able to go through conferences, workshops, seminars, webinars, speaker development classes, and private training is a big portion of what um, takes place in BSN. So to make sure you have the confidence as well as the competence to be able to hit your next stage. Uh, the second thing is access to resources. Uh, just because you are a master of your message doesn't mean that you are a tech guru or that you know how to sell or that you know how to create courses. And so one of the things we want to make sure that all of our members have access to are individuals who can help them bring their message to life. And so ultimately, those are going to be the individuals that are going to be able to provide services uh, that from people that we trust and we vet to be able to help them get in front of their ideal audience. And then the third thing, of course, is access to speaking opportunity. That's what everybody wants. How do I get onto more stages? And that's a super important um, uh, benefit of Black Speakers Network because we send out and curate speaking opportunities all the time. You go to Black Speakers Network website, you can look at the speakers directory, and you can see all the speakers that we work with, but we also reach out to organizations and have a mechanism to be able to share those opportunities with our members as they come in. And so whether you're looking for speaker training, whether you're looking for access to resources, or whether you are looking for more speaking opportunities, BSN is certainly going to be the place for you. Well, I got to tell you, this has been an incredible experience. I mean, from the moment that I walked in the door uh, here on the set of Making of an Entrepreneur, I felt like a superstar. <laughs> and, and guess what? I, I think telling the story, you know, sharing powerful messages in a, a medium where uh, people can have an opportunity to really understand exactly what it is that people do, the struggles that you had to overcome, and just getting a better idea of the story and the journey that people went through is incredibly important. And so uh, I felt great about this experience. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the entire project coming together. But I, you know, from the photos to the videos to being able to actually see behind the scenes what it takes to bring people's messages to life, this is at the core of what I actually do uh, within Black Speakers Network. And so I feel very honored, number one, to be asked to be a part of a project of this magnitude. And I really think that the ability to continue to tell stories, that medium, the storytelling is not new, but the medium in which we have to communicate and share those stories are really, really powerful. And another thing that I really, really love about the day is that nothing happens by itself. You know, there's an entire creative team uh, that we've been working closely with today that all have their own strength, their own expertise. And that's a big, um, that's, that's a microcosm of what we see taking place 
um, as an entrepreneur. Nobody does anything by themselves. There are talented people behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, making things happen. And so I've had an incredible time uh, being a part of this project. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing to share the story, share the message, and open the door for other individuals to come behind me along the way. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like <laughs> banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very closely, because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal client to me who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it, I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now the reason you wanna go over to EasySalesHub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. <laughs>so there I was sitting in the kitchen trying to decide what I was going to buy my parents for Christmas and at the time I'm like 13 years old 12 to 13 years old trying to decide what I'm going to buy my parents for Christmas um, coming from a large family uh, we didn't have a lot of money and so this particular year I really wanted to get them something special and so I'm sitting there trying to decide what am I going to get them for Christmas and as I opened up the mail that day, there was this catalog and it was called Stuart McGuire Shoes. So I thought, hmm, could I sell shoes and make some money? And so I filled out the paperwork, I mailed it in, because you know, back then everything was through the mail. And I had to wait a couple of weeks. And it was about two weeks later, I got this box. So it said that I was approved to sell shoes for this company, Stuart McGuire. So I read all the instructions and went to work. I started going door to door. Um, you know, neighbors are living really close by. So I went door to door to the people that I really knew really closely and said, hey, I'm a salesperson and I'm selling shoes. And most of the people that I went to, they all went to church so that, you know, on Sunday mornings, they like to look nice and dress up really pretty. And so I thought I would start there. And I got my first sale on the first day totally shocked and surprised that someone actually bought shoes for me. And I kept walking the road because I didn't have a car, so I just walked for about a mile. And I think that particular day I sold five pair of shoes. Now the commission that I would get wasn't really a whole lot back in the day. However, you know, even for me, getting $25, I felt like I had won a million dollars. And I took that $25 and I shared it with my little brother and we decided that we were gonna to go to the store and 
buy our parents a Christmas present. Now keep in mind, I'm walking and um, didn't have a car. So we lived in the country, didn't have a lot of places to go to buy anything. So one day my brother and I went with my dad to a local convenience store and they happened to have a lot of little gifts and items in the store. And so they had a really cute bronze looking salt and pepper shaker. And I said, you know, that would be really nice for them. And so I took my $25 and bought them this bronze salt and pepper shaker and gave it to our parents when Christmas came. And they were really excited and surprised that we could afford to buy them something, you know, let alone any type of gift, but a bronze salt and pepper shaker. And it just made me feel really, really good that I was able to do something special for my parents. Um, because I said, you know, we lived on a farm, didn't have a lot of money, but that $25, it really paid off and I felt really good about having the opportunity to give back to them because they've done so much for me and my family. And so, you know, selling shoes at 12 to 13 years old is how I started my entrepreneurial life and that's really what happened. <laughs> So there I was, my second year of college, ready to start class, and I get notified that there's no money. The Pell Grant is no longer available. So I'm sitting there trying to decide, what do I do? I don't want to be a failure. Second year of college, I'm already at school. I'm literally ready to start class, and I get notified, no money. So I'm trying to figure out what do I do next? And the first thing that comes to mind is that, you know, my parents always taught us to do the best wherever you are, make it work. So I went and got a part-time job at Wendy's of all places. Got a part-time job and um, they hired me. And um, so I went back to school and I said, well, we're gonna make this work. So did the student loan since I didn't have the Pell Grant and started my classes and it was a different type of a feeling because when you're not on campus with your friends, you're working. And when you're not there, you kind of lose touch with really what's going on in school. And so here I am sitting there trying to decide, how do I make this work so that I'm a really good student? So I go to school, I go to work, and that's really what I'm doing for that first full semester. Work in school, work in school, not having any time for any, you know, time with my friends, but I'm trying to make money because that's what I got to do. I got to pay the student loan off uh, because I know it's going to come due as soon as I finish school. So, you know, I'm just working really hard, but it's the challenge is trying to work really hard and trying to be a really good student and try to make those grades to make my parents proud. And unfortunately, it just really wasn't happening. Yes, I was getting good grades. Yes, I was making money, but I wasn't making an A. I'm a perfectionist, so I'm all about making sure that I do the best, give it 110%. And so I had to make the difficult choice of, what do I do? The difficult choice was I could no longer continue my school education because I had a job and it wasn't allowing me time to really focus and do the best that I could do. So I ended up dropping out of school. And unfortunately, when I dropped out of school, of course, you know, the loan came due. Um, Wendy's could no longer supply that financial support that I needed. And so here I am finding myself driving back to Virginia um, because I wasn't able to be successful in working and going to college. So driving back to Virginia, I decided one day to stop um, to get gas and I saw a sign um, that just hit me. It wasn't a sign for work, but it was just a sign that I saw. And so then I went into the local bank and applied for a job. And I started working so that I could pay back that student loan. And that's really what kind of happened because, you know, when you're faced with a challenge of whether it's work or just your education, because you got to pay those bills, you got to do what's, what's most important. You got to do something to get you over that edge of, you know, so I don't go, have bad credit. That's really what my main thing was. Didn't want to have bad credit. So I started working for a bank. And that's really how the story started around trying to deal with the challenge of, you know, education versus going to school. 
and that's really what happened. <laughs>
themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. So I was sitting in my, our living room um, just waiting to ask my parents a question. And that was the moment that I realized that financially our family was poor, but we were rich in so many other capacities, rich in love, family love rich in personal values, but most importantly, rich in our religious beliefs. So I was in high school, well, middle school, I would say, and I wanted to join the, the choir. And, you know, living on a farm, we lived about 25 miles from school. And so my parents didn't have the funds for me to join the choir, much less drive to get to go to practice or go to a football game. And so I wanted to find a different way to share my voice and so my older brother and some of his friends decided that uh, we were going to create a group and so we created a church group and at that moment i realized that you know finances are important they pay the bills but there's so much more in values there's so much more in the gifts and talents that we all have that we can bring to and share with others and so we started a small group and we started singing to different churches and our own churches and just sharing the, you know, our knowledge and our spirituality with others. And so that was one of those moments where I realized that, you know, maybe I didn't get to join the, the school choir, but here I had an opportunity to really share my voice with the entire community, with the world who wanted to listen and to me, that was so much more important than just joining the high school choir. Here I had an opportunity to really, you know, enjoy what I was doing and really make the best of it. And as my mom always said, if you don't use your gifts and talents, the Lord will take it away from you. And so that's my story regarding, you know, wanting to do something when I realized I had something so much more important. <laughs> So there I am sitting in my office waiting for a phone call from the doctors. The um, had to get my results um, and the words that came out of her mouth once I showed up at the appointment was quite devastating. You have breast cancer. So at that particular moment, you know, I had to take it all in, take a deep breath and realize she said the C word, quite devastating. So I then decide that I'm not going back to work. I'm just going to go home and meditate, think about the words that came out of her mouth, the C word, and then decide what do I do next. Most importantly, I had to tell my husband. And as I'm driving home, something just comes over me and I'm bawling and crying all the way home because I finally realized that's what the doctor said to me. So I quickly called my sister. She's my oldest sister, and um, she had been diagnosed five years ahead of me. And so I told her what the doctor said, and she says, I'll be right there. Now, keep in mind, she lives over an hour away. Um, it seemed like forever trying to get home. And once I got home, it seemed like forever for her to get to me. Now, keep in mind, I hadn't told my husband yet. I just needed to tell her because when my husband hears news like that, he gets really excited. And so, um, she comes to the door and we talk and I get my composure and um, then my husband comes home. I'm thinking that he's going to be completely devastated, but he was so positive. Here I am, you know, freaking out. And then he's like, it's going to be okay. And so at that moment, a challenge was 
trying to decide what do I do next? And for me, it was actually an easy decision. Having worked in corporate America for almost 30 years, I knew I had a higher calling. And to me, breast cancer, that diagnosis was the Lord trying to tell me that, hey, you've given your company almost 30 years. You're not where you really want to be. And there's something more important that I want you to do. And so from that moment, I decided to take early retirement. I'm not going to wait for that 30 year package. I know there is a, a higher calling for me. And so sometimes in your life, you feel like that you've got to do something. You're supposed to work 30 years. You're supposed to do this or do that. But there are challenges that come to you and, and you have to make a decision of what's most important. And for me, spending time with my family, taking care of my health was most important. And so that defining moment was that I needed to make a choice. And that choice was to quit work, figure out my next stage, take care of my health, and spend time with my family. And so that's my story regarding the diagnosis and how you handle it and what you do with it because that nine to five is not always what you're destined to do. So being diagnosed with breast cancer, starting a new career, quitting my job, what's the next phase of life for me? So I had to really think about that. And for me, it really wasn't a hard decision. It was about starting my own business, doing what I do best, do what I love the most, and that is having the opportunity to help others. So I started two businesses. The first was uh, real estate investing. And for me, it was a challenge because I knew nothing about real estate other than the house that I purchased that we live in. But it was buying real estate outside of my comfort zone. And so, you know, there were a lot of naysayers, people like, what are you doing? You're gonna lose your shirt. And then that started to really get in my head. I started to think, you know, I can't do this. I don't have the money to do this. What am I thinking? Where do I come from with this idea? So I had to really dig deep and do some soul searching. And I realized that, you know, the breast cancer maybe was that step for me to really jump out on faith and try it, give it a try. Because you don't know until you try. And so, you know, I had to believe in myself and know that I could do it. I had to invest some time in myself through education so that I could really be good at real estate investing. Now, I didn't become an agent. I just became a, a, an investor. But one of those moments in doing so was, you know, trying to find funding for that. And that was an opportunity where it, it was truly a challenge. Who's going to give me money to start a business? But oddly enough, I asked and... The bank said yes. So here I am trying to figure out how was I going to start a business and the opportunity was already there. So a lot of times we struggle with making decisions because we think that we won't have that opportunity or we think that we can't do it or we think that there's no one that's going to help us do it. But if you don't ask, if you don't ask those certain questions, if you don't start the process, then it may not happen. At the end of the day, yes, I was able to get the funding and purchase my first real estate property. And the end of the story basically is that um, I've been very successful at that, but I had to work really hard. I had to ask good questions. I had to connect with individuals who I wouldn't have normally connected with. And so it was a challenge, but at the end of the day, success is around the corner. You just have to reach out and grab it. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe you're not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience 
if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise. Then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again real soon. See you out. So if I was sitting down talking to my 21-year-old self, what would I tell myself? One of the first things would be is to surround yourself with like-minded individuals. You know, a lot of times people tell us that, you know, we can't do something. So that's because you're having a conversation with someone who is not where you want to be. So surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Then I would tell myself to believe in myself. If you ever had that time when you got that gut feeling, if you wanted to do something and the gut feeling says, go ahead and do it, but there's a naysayer telling you, ah, don't do that. Go with your gut because your gut instinct is what you need to believe in. Going on your gut will get you where you wanna be. And then most importantly, invest in yourself. See, change doesn't come unless there's transformation in your life. So you've got to take time to invest in yourself and do what's most important to you. So following your gut will really get you there. Don't worry about what everybody else says, because sometimes when you want to make that move, you have to go alone and it may be lonely, but it's OK. Sometimes you have to go alone. So there's a few principles that I follow that I think will be very important to you. The first one is to put God first in everything that you do. Whatever you believe in, whomever you believe in, always put that person first. Because again, you've gotta have some transformation in your life. The second principle is to stop making excuses. We often make excuses because we have fear. And when you have fear, you have all these different reasons of why you shouldn't do something. So stop making excuses, let go of those fears. The next one is really about, you know, taking time for spiritual growth. Spiritual growth is something that's really important to all of us. And that's because whatever you believe in, whatever your desires are, you've got to take time to meditate. Take time to make sure that you're doing the right things for yourself, not for others, because no one's going to be there to take care of the bills or do anything of that nature but you. So you may have to go alone and that's okay. Most people that are very successful have lonely lives to some degree. They surround themselves with friends and family. But if you're looking for you know, something else, you might have to go it alone. But it's okay, because you will get to your final destination. The last principle is really around invest in yourself. Yes, it may be tiring, it may be challenging, but once you have that knowledge, knowledge is power, and no one can take it away from you. 
I was 50 plus years old working on a dissertation. So I know the importance of education. I know the importance of when you really want to do something, you just got to go out there and do it. Don't think about how much it's going to cost. Because once you do that, once you make that sacrifice, the money will come. But if we focus more on that portion of how am I going to pay for that? How am I going to get the education? How am I going to get the knowledge? Who's going to work with me? If you focus on that and not the end goal, then you won't reach your desires. You won't meet your dreams. The main focus that you need to really think about is if you have children, nieces or nephews, what do you want to leave behind? What is your legacy? 50 years from now, what do you want your grandchildren, your nieces or nephews to look at or learn about you? So that's really what it's all about, is leaving that legacy so that others can see what your journey was. And so with that, most importantly, take the time to believe in yourself. Know that you are good enough to do whatever it is that you have in your heart or desires to do. You are good enough. And I believe in you, but you have to believe in yourself first. <laughs>
So I had to dig deep and trust myself. I had to dig deep and figure out what is it what's going to make me truly, truly happy in life. And it wasn't a nine to five. And we oftentimes get caught up in, you know, yeah, it pays the bills, so life is great, but we're not truly happy inside. So for me, it's all about giving back to others. It's helping others make that next step, making that transformation in life, whatever that may be. And that's how I am illuminating my potential, because my potential is to help others live their best life. Living their best life, you know, you may think it sounds a little cliche, but when you are truly happy getting up every single morning and going to work, whether it's your job or someone else's, when you're truly happy in doing that, then you are living your best life. It's not about thinking that I have to get up and go to work. It's like, who do I get to go and talk to today? Who do I get to go to and touch and make a difference in their life? That's what living your best life is truly about. I don't think about it from a monetary perspective. I think about how am I making a change in someone else's life, making a change in someone else's life. Because we don't know what tomorrow brings. We don't know who we're going to reach. You don't know what the words, you, the words that you might say, how it's gonna to touch someone else. And so that's really what illuminating your potential and living your life is truly about. Touching someone else's life, making their day better than it was yesterday. So illuminate your potential and live your best life. So oftentimes I'm asked, you know, why do organizations bring my company in to do business with them? Well, there's a couple of reasons. Number one, there's so much going on in the world today. We've got diversity issues, we've got equity issues, we have inclusion issues. We have issues that are pre-COVID. People are now going back into the workplace. And leaders are struggling with how to have those conversations. So when it comes to you know, the diversity, equity, inclusion, it has sort of um, turned into a, a really big issue, unfortunately. It was already there, but I think you know, people had time to really think about what they were doing, had time to you know, think about their workplace and think about people that they work for. And so individuals really took time to really focus on how they were feeling at work. And so a lot of things came to light. And so that's why individual organizations today struggle with how do they manage all of that? And so our company will come in and do training to help alleviate some of that pressure, but do an assessment to really figure out, you know, what are those inclusion issues? That sense of belonging. Do employees feel like when they go to work that they feel like they're part of the company? Do they feel like it's part of their organization? So that's really around feeling included, having that sense of belonging, having a seat at the table to have those discussions. Now, when it comes to workplace and everyone's going from remote to back in the office, that's a whole different story because the leaders are struggling with how to have those conversations with their teams. They kind of lost that a little bit and trying to deal with different communication styles. And one of the things our organization really focuses on is emotional intelligence. How do you bring your whole self to work? How are you dealing with the feelings that you have when you are in the workplace? And so those are issues that are currently, organizations are trying to manage, leaders are struggling with, how to have conversations with their teams, with their colleagues. And our company can step in and really help do an assessment of what's really going on and then provide solutions to those issues that they're dealing with. And that's really the really reason why companies hire our organization, because our, our purpose is to provide stability, is to provide the opportunity for employees to feel that they are in a safe place. And when employees feel that they're in a safe place, they're so much more engaged. And when you have engagement, you have productivity, but most importantly, you have profits. So one of the things, well not one of several things that I've enjoyed most of working with um, the making of an entrepreneur is number one is the accountability. You know, when things are scheduled, they are on point. You don't have to worry about anything of that nature. Things are handled out to you, very detailed, very organized. 
but most importantly, it's the feeling of camaraderie, the feeling of family. Um, they make you feel and have you feel that you are a part of the team. It's not like you are somebody stepping in from someplace else, but um, everyone's very nice, very genuine, very authentic. And that is so comforting because I'm investing my time um, to work with individuals. And so I want to feel like I'm a part of what's happening as well. And so if you are someone who's looking for an opportunity to work with, work with a company of this nature, um, I would say kudos, hats off, 10 plus. You won't make a bad decision. You will thoroughly enjoy it. You will get for what you pay for and more. So don't think too long about it um, because when you overthink things, then you talk yourself out of it. So don't tell, talk yourself out of the opportunity to work with this organization because they are fabulous. <laughs>
You just need to find your rate of learning. I couldn't enunciate, couldn't articulate words. It was amazing. And guess what? We tackled it. We conquered it. Next thing you know, I began to articulate words, enunciate words, learning words. Then I became wordsmith. And guess what? I overcame a challenge that from birth tried to take me out. From birth tried to back me up and tell me that I was not welcomed in this world. But I had a praying mother. My mother said, oh, no, boy, <laughs> you are not going to be bullied. You're not going to be one that can't make it. She said, I know a God that specializes in miracles and I'm going to see you make it. Well, guess what? I did it. Not only did I learn, not only did I read, I began to get on the honor roll. I began to do well that Mrs. Horton said, you know what? I believe you can go to college. I said, college, you know, they told me I would never even graduate. She said, oh no, you have the capacity not only to graduate, but to do more than you've ever imagined. And I began to read, learn to read, like reading, begin to underline words, use words. And to my surprise, they were picking me to do speeches. They were picking me to do the invocation. And can you believe today I'm talking to you? It's amazing because I'm not the same that I was at birth, but that's the beauty of becoming. And here I am today, conquering and overcoming challenges and now teaching others how to do it. That's my story. Marriott Corporation. That's right. I saw Marriott Corporation. I said, man, I want to work there. I want to go there and work. I was already working in the food department and I said, look, I can do this. And so I went to talk to the human resources and they said, there's no openings uh, in that department right now. But I went over into the department and I noticed there was no uh, African-American in there. So I went and talked to the manager. He said, there's no openings right now. I said, but I wanna work here. I said, matter of fact, you would do justice by hiring me to work for you because I will turn this department around. He said, what makes you think you could do that? I said, I've seen what you guys do. I know what I can do. He said, well, there's no opening. So he gave me his card. I left. The next day, guess what I did? I called him. He answered the phone. I said, this is Anthony Shannon. I'm calling for that position. He said, there's no positions. I said, okay, but it will be. He said, I'll let you know. I'll call you. I said, okay. I left. The next day, I emailed him. And guess what else? I called him. He answered. He said, didn't I tell you there's no openings? I said, yes, you did. I said, but I want you to understand how serious I am about getting a position here. He said, well, Anthony, listen, there is no positions opening. Matter of fact, there probably won't be any. So you might as well just hold on. I'll call you if so. I said, no problem. I promised you two days. I let two days go by. I said, probably getting on his nerves. So two days later, I called him on the phone. His secretary said, oh, he's busy. I said, no problem. What time he go to lunch? She told me. I went up to the lunch, bought him lunch. He said, what are you doing? I said, I come to get the job. He said, Anthony, there is no positions. I hear you. I said, I just want you to know this is the place I need to work. I know I'm going to work here. I'm going to do a fantastic job. He said, I tell you what, I know one thing, you show our persistent. I said, good. Two days later, I knocked on the door again. He was leaving and I called him. I said, I come to get the position. He said, there is no positions available. 45 days later, I didn't call him like I normally call him on a Monday. Tuesday came, I was getting ready to call him and the phone rang. It was him, Mr. Johnson. I said, Anthony Shannon, yes, sir. He said, guess what? I have a position open for you. You still want it? Absolutely. What do I need to do? I did everything he asked me to do. I was hired on the spot. I want you to know they put me in the worst area, but guess what? After six months, it was the number one spot. It was an amazing thing. 
They put me in lights. They put me in their newsletter. And all he could tell people at the, at the meeting was, tell them, Anthony, how you got this job. I told him, and he said, persistence is the key. And I'm telling anybody else out there, whatever you want, never hear no. But count the no's and the yeses will follow. I got in with Marriott and was very successful in Marriott. And that's my story. Well, I was at a company and the company asked me to do something that I couldn't do. And when I told the boss that I couldn't do it, he said, think about it. I'll get somebody else to do it. All you have to do is A. I said, no, I can't do it. And so that weekend I decided to leave the company. Now I'm not going to have any work because I'm leaving a company where I'm doing very well. And I knew that I left for the right reasons because I can't allow anyone to let me do something that is unethical or immoral or that's against my code or my own standard, regardless if it's I have to leave money or walk away from something. And I did. And that was one weekend. The next week, a recruiter called me and said, Anthony, I have this position. It's not open yet, but it will be open. I said, what? What are you talking about? He said, I'm the recruiter, just got out of a meeting. There's an opening that is, that is here. It's, it is district vice president of this region. He said, I need you to call Tim Battis, what's his name? And I called Tim Battis when we hung up and I said, Tim, I'm applying for the position. Tim said, well, how do you know about the position? I said, it's open, right? He said, yeah, but I haven't even posted it. I said, good, you will not need to post. I'm your guy. He said, okay, send me all of your information. I sent Tim all of my information. Tim said, wow, this is impressive, but I, I, I at least need to open it up. I said, why do you need to open it up when the position isn't really even open, Tim? I said, but here I am at your doorsteps. I said, why don't you consider it an angel, a gift, or whatever you want to call it? I said, but I've just made your job easy. I have the credentials. I have the background. I have the resume. What's stopping you, Tim? He says, well, let me do one thing. He went and talked to his bosses. They came back and said, I tell you what, Anthony, if you're going to take this position, here's what we want you to do. We want you to tell us in 90 days what you're going to do to turn this place around. We need you to put it together. We want you to put A, B, C, and D. I said, okay. I said, is there any training? He said, no, there's no training. We're hiring you for your mind. I said, okay, give me to the weekend and I'll have it to you. Well, the weekend I put together a 90 day plan. I showed them from A to Z what I was going to do to empower that place what I was going to do to empower all the employees and what I was going to do to bring unity in a place that had dysfunction and discombobulation. I put it together. He was amazed. He said, wow, this is an amazing proposal. I said, listen, just hire me. He hired me on the spot. When he hired me, he said, here's the salary. Here's, here's ironic. This is where my guts and boldness came. He showed me what the salary was. And yes, it was way over six digits. No question. I had the nerve to tell him that ain't enough. He said, what? I said, that's not enough. I need you to take that up at least $15,000 more. And I need a signing bonus. He said, how much? I said, $30,000. He said, what? I offered you the job. I said, you're right. You saw what I can do. He said, so listen, I know my worth. I know my value. And I promise you, you will not be disappointed. He said, I got to think about that. Think about it. He called me back. I tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to bump it up to 20000 I said, great. I said, what about the signing bonus? He said, you got it. Not only did I get my raise, Immediately, not only did I get the signing bonus, immediately I turned the place around and it was successful. That's my story and I'm sticking to it.
Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, this one, pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. Wow, there I was, graduating out of high school, trying to figure out what I was going to do. Had all of these offers, didn't know which one I was going to pick, and boom, Eastern Kentucky University. That's the school I picked. Went all the way down to Richmond, Kentucky. I've never been down there country folks. Tobacco. Yeah, but guess what? Those boys can run. Here I am with a scholarship. I'm thinking I'm the man. I get down there and guess what? Everybody they recruited was the man. They were the all-state, all-Americans. Yes, and here I was an all-city, all-state, honorable, honorable mention, and guess what? I had to run against everybody. I didn't understand. When I got down there, the competition was steep. Did I get a revelation? What was the revelation? You can be good in one city and mediocre in another. But here was my defining moment. Was I going to stay that way? What was I going to do? I was there. Am I going to sit on the sideline? Was I going to be a traveling? So guess what I did? Not only did I do the work that they asked me to do, but when everybody left, I went back and did extra. Not only did I do extra, <clears throat> I remember I was looking up things. Because in the, at that time, I had to go to the library. <laughs> I had to look up microfiche so I could look up past things. They didn't have what we have today. The internet was just coming out. And so guess what? I looked up past stories of different ones who had overcame. I looked up how did they be, get faster and better and to my surprise, they all did extra. So I did extra. And I told my coach at the time, I will be on the traveling squad. He said, as a freshman, you've got to have to beat out 10 people. Some was already naturally fast. Some was so gifted. It was amazing uh, what they were running. But I knew that if, with determination, consistency, and a little hard work, it would pay off. So to my surprise, I went day in, day out, two times a day. Sometime I did three 
times because at night before I went to bed, I would still go out and run 10 sprints. I would work on my strength. I would work on being in the gym. I would work on doing like half mile runs so I can be stronger for stamina. And one day the coach said, here it is. What are you going to do? You've got to run up against all 10 of my best sprinters, quarter milers. And I said, oh boy, let's do it. And that day I ran and I beat the first one, beat the second one, beat the third one. I beat nine out of 10. I didn't beat the 10th one, but nine out of 10, that was pretty good. And my revelation was hard work pays off. My coach said, you're on the traveling team. Not only was we on the traveling team, guess what I did? I made the team to the Olympic trials. I went to the Olympic trials on the first squad. It was an amazing run. We ran 39 flat, the fastest we've ever run. And guess who was in the mix? That's right, yours truly. I had the revelation that hard work pays off. And I want you to know, hard work will pay off for you too. And guess what? It did. We came back with a trophy. We didn't make the Olympics that year, but we sure made the Olympic trials. And that was a great moment for me because I got to call my mother. Mother got to know about it, hear about it. And guess who else? Me. <laughs> I knew within myself that there was nothing that could stop me, nothing that could back me up, nothing that could ever tell me what I can't do. If I have consistence, persistence, and hard work, I'll be able to accomplish anything. And that's what my revelation was. United States Marine Corps, oorah, Semper Fi till I die. That's right, guess what I did? Tried to in the Marine Corps. What was wrong with me? I don't know, but I wanted to serve my country. That's right, I should have went into the Air Force. Maybe somewhere like, you know, the, the Army. I don't know, but no, I've got to go to the few and the proud, the Marines. Guess what, 12 weeks of boot camp. That's right, I did it. Not only that, I learned that everyone has to be a team. Well, here, one of the revelations I found out very early on is that they own you. <laughs> they tell you what to do. You got to do it. I wasn't used to getting up at no 5 a.m. I got up at 8. But guess what they did? They came in at 5, blew the horn, got everybody up. I wouldn't get up. <laughs> everybody was up except me. Guess what they did? Threw water on me. Flipped my bed open. I jumped up. I'm from Detroit. What up? You don't do me like that. And when I jumped, they jumped on me, slammed my face to the ground, and told me I was in the United States Marine Corps, and we were going to be a unit. We were going to be one. I said, not me. I'm not ever going to be one. Okay, we'll see about that. Well, it began. They were on me like white on rice. Everything I did, breathe wrong, they were on me. But one day, my gunny sergeant came to me and said, I believe that you have leadership qualities, leadership abilities, but you're going to have to get your butt in line. I said, okay, what do I need to do? He told me, I want you to run this whole squad. I said, I don't know if I can do that, gunny. Oh, you can do that. And guess what? I went to lead the squad. The next day, they woke us up, 5 a.m. I told my squad, get together. Well, there's one guy named Tom. Tom didn't want to get out the bed. Guess what? Tom was a me. <laughs> I'm looking at me, not want to get out the bed, not want to listen, not want to do nothing. And so I began to talk to Tom. I said, Tom, I'm just the same way. But guess what? We got to be a unit. We're going to have to be one. And the first thing I've learned to do is, one, you must acknowledge that the person is different. Two, you must get an agreement. And then three, you must make an alignment or an adjustment to get it together. So what we're going to do, we're all going to work and help you, Tom. And you're going to be right where we need you to be. And the next day, I told Tom to put his clothes on. We jumped up. Everybody was ready. My son, uh, Gunny Sergeant, couldn't believe all of us was ready. He said, how did you do it? I said, well, I had Tom put his clothes on that night. So we'll be ready. You know what he told me? Good initiative. Bad judgment. You can't do that. They got to be able to get up, get it together, and do it at a certain time. I said, dog. Oh. So the revelation I had was sometimes you take shortcuts, but the shortcut cuts you short. And I realized if you do it right, everything will be right. 
Tom did it right. We did it right. And our squad was the number one squad. It was an amazing revelation. Never take shortcuts and you'll never be cut short. I promise you, stick with the plan. It'll work for you. Staff Plus, amazing place. I decided that I was leaving a corporation to go into a private sector. Yep, Staff Plus. Could I do it? I don't know. Here I was at a corporation, working there for a while, got stock options. We've got all kinds, we call them the golden handcuffs. But I decided right then, if I, with a revelation, if I'm going to do something, it's now is the time. And I found out that you get more on your way than you do when you start, so get started. So I jumped ship, I went to Staff Plus. Staff Plus was a mess, discombobulated, no cognitive system. So I had my work cut out for me. And so guess what I did? I told the boss, here's what I want you to do for me. If I can do this in three months, I want you to pay me this salary of $150,000. I want a car or I want enough money to buy the car that I want so that I don't have to worry about it. I want an expense report. And so the negotiation began. The revelation I found out in talking to him was, you don't get what you deserve, you get what you negotiate. And so I began to negotiate. And he said, you got three months, not even a day more. If you miss it, you go back to this amount. I said, you got it. And I went to work. I put my time in. I did the research. I studied. I talked to other companies. And I remember where I came from in a corporation. We had a system. So I revamped the system that I, I had. I brought it to them. And not only that. I told him what I needed. He put the money behind it and boom, I created a system. Then I got on the horn and talked to some insurance people, brought insurance, boom. Then I collaborated with somebody else and I had five people in the collaboration that was gonna work this new system. And to our surprise, in not only three months, in one month, we hit the number. In one month, we doubled the number. And by the third month, we were in triple digits. Not only did I get the 150, not only did I get the car, <laughs> he did some extra stuff. He sent me to uh, the workout facilities where you could be a VIP, walk in and do whatever you want, not pay. I was loving it. Even had a credit card. Listen, when you, here's the revelation I found out. Don't just do what they ask do more and above what they ask. Because if you just average, you get nothing. If you're good, you get some things. But when you're outstanding, you get everything. That was the revelation for me. And I said from that point forward, I can never be average. I can never just be good. I've got to be outstanding. Then I got promoted to vice president. Not only that, I started hiring different people and firing different people, expanding the company. It was a great experience for me. Even though I left corporate, I jumped into something I could put my hands on and learned at an accelerated pace. I probably would have never got that experience if I've not taken the chance. So I tell people all the time, take risk, but take calculated risk. Make sure that what you go do, you can negotiate for your future. And once I negotiated for my future, I didn't have to worry about nothing. And guess what? Because of that, it catapulted me to the next level of my success because I was willing to take a risk. Nothing could stop me. Nothing could cause me to have fear. I did it before. I could do it again. If I was successful before, I could be successful again. And I knew it with confidence. I knew it with boldness. And I could look to them with, with, I call it bulldog eyes and tell them it's done. And I did it. So when somebody tell you that it can't be done, don't you dare say it can't. But keep on doing it until you knock it out. And guess what? You will do it. I succeeded and so will you. That's the revelation. <laughs> Thank you. 
It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. At one time, I was 21 years old. And if I was 21 years old again, here's what I would say to my 21 year old self. Based off of the things I've learned today, one of the first things I would tell myself is change is growth. You know, I remember having a girlfriend thinking that, hey, this girl I'm going to marry, this girl is it. She's got everything I need. I've not been nowhere but to Detroit, only went to one school, didn't know that there was 50 states, even some foreign countries and women are everywhere. I had no idea, but I realized that after a minute and after some time, I grew. I got taller. I got stronger. My mind expanded, but hers did not. It was still the same. But I was still thinking, man, this is the girl I'm going to marry. I got to marry her. And guess what? I changed. She changed. And I found out that change is growth. So I came up and said to live is to grow. And to grow is to change. If you don't change, you're not growing. If you're not growing, you're not living. You're dead. Let me tell you something. Isolation is the beginning of death. And so I would tell my 21 year old self, get out into the community, work, change, grow. And guess what? While you're young with energy and while you're not married with no kids, no mortgage, it is time for you to change, grow and expand. And I promise you, your life will be so much fuller. Your mind will be so much cognitive and you will know without a doubt you can win in everything. Again, 21 year old self, here's what I would say to my 21 year old self. I would say self, let me tell you something. There are things that you're gonna have to change. We already went over it. But there's a second thing I want you to know. There's there are some things you need to quit. I know you hear me tell you, you've heard other people tell you, don't quit, stay in there. Whatever you do, don't quit. 
But I want you to know that there are some things you need to quit. There are some things you need to do it faster than later. There were some friends of mine. I promise you it was five of us. I made the fifth wheel. Four of them all together. There was Kenny Luckett. Yes, it was. There was, maybe I shouldn't say all their names, but let me tell you something. It was four of them. And one day I just knew I needed to be their friend. We was all on a football team, ran track, and one played baseball, one played basketball. But we all did two sports. I was their friend. And guess what? I outgrew them because they were doing things I didn't want to do anymore. They was drinking and smoking. And next thing you know, they wanted to take it up a notch. All right. And I'm hanging with them. We've been hanging for years. And I realized at a moment I should have quit. I should have left them guys at least a year ago. But I didn't. I hung in there with them. And one night they got in trouble when I was in the back seat. They were all uh, high and drunk and buzzing. I was not. And when the police pulled us over, the only thing that saved us that night was I hadn't drinking. I hadn't, I wasn't high. And he said, I'm gonna give you a break. You drive them home. As long as they get home safe, we're good. And I got them home. And that night I realized I should have quit this faster. I should have left and exited out the door faster than later. And I realized then, now what I know now is that some things you do need to quit. Some things you need to quit, you need to get out the way and you need to leave it alone. If there's something detrimental, if there's something that goes against your code of ethics, if, there, if there's something that you just don't like, I don't care if they're pretty, if it's a woman, she's fine. I don't care if it's your friends that got I want you to understand that there is something called yourself and you got to love yourself greater than other people. So don't hang in there. Quit, but quit faster than later. And I promise you, you'll save yourself a headache and you might even save yourself from going to jail. (laughs) That's what I would tell myself if I was 21 years old. Again, quit faster and exit quick. That's what I'll tell you. You know, I realized that when I was younger, uh, that I could have really begin to live better than I thought I could live. You know, when you live in Detroit and that's all you know, you didn't see anything else before. This is prior internet. And so you couldn't see all over the world like it is today, the best thing we had was magazines. Um, And then, you know, you had to go in a store or somewhere to look in the magazines. But I realized that when I started traveling from the Marine Corps, traveling different states, that people were living and some was living earlier than later. And I realized that if I could tell myself earlier that I would take more chances, I would take more risk, I would do more things in order to see the world because the world is larger than your small scope. And you've got to be able to live and not only live, but live well. That is possible for you to do. And all you need to do is get exposed. So get out of your circle, get out of your your four walls and expand so that you can be exposed to better, to greater. Here's what I found out, that for every level of consciousness, there is a level of blessing. In other words, if you can dream it, you can have it. Whatever level you at, you, you at a $50,000 level, there's a dream for you. If you at a million dollar level, there's a dream for you. If you at a billion dollars, there's a dream for you. Whatever level of consciousness. So if you're going to dream, you might as well dream big. And if you're going to live, you might as well live well. You don't have to put up with crumbs when you can have the loaf. If you're gonna believe for hamburger, you might as well believe for steak. And don't just believe in any steak, believe for the best steak. Get that top grade beef, all right, soft that you could take a butter knife and cut it. You can, listen, you know what I found out is that you can have custom clothes at the same price as on the rack. You can have gourmet food cooked for you the same you go buy in the store. I've learned that you can live, but live well. So I tell myself, if I was 21 years old, dream and keep dreaming. But not only dream, do it. 
Put it in action. Travel if you want to. Go to another state if you want to. Live in another state. You have no children. You have no wife. You have nothing holding you down. You might as well live. But if you're going to live, live well. Live big. Dream big. And go for your dreams. Don't let nothing stop you. Don't let nothing back you up. Don't even let your age stop you. Don't you know LeBron James, 18 years old, came into the NBA. They gave him a hundred million dollar contract with Nike. And he never looked back. Matter of fact, he took five of his friends. All five of them are millionaires today. So I would tell you, dream, dream big, live, but live well. And don't you dare settle for crumbs. Never, ever settle. Dream big. Why does companies hire us? Why does individuals want to work with us? I'll tell you simply because of this. We empower company. We empower people to advance faster. We empower them to overcome crisis. And not only that, we help them to get an ROI, a return on their investment. Are you aware that companies right now lose many, many employees every year? They lose a lot of money in turnover. Well, that's costly. Well, guess what? We show them how to get a return on the investment and shorten the turnover dollars. We empower individuals so that they can grow faster, so that they can develop and accomplish more than what they thought they could accomplish. Do you know why Nokia is not here now? Is because Steve Ballmer didn't move fast enough. He did everything right. They were number one, but three years later, they were obsolete. Apple took over because they didn't move faster. Guess what I help you do? Move faster. Guess what I do? I help you empower your people to advance, to grow, to learn, and to accomplish so that you get more on your bottom line. That's why people hire us. And I believe you don't need to look no further. Hire us today. Well, what can I say? What can I tell you but these words? Success, excellence, conversation, and just feeling like family. I believe that most companies that when they have a long lasting relationship is because the person made them feel like family. It's all relation. And when you have a company that can give you that type of relationship, you want to keep coming. You want to tell everybody about it. Well, that's the experience you will get when you come and deal with Shea Brown cat. Let me tell you something. My main man, Ivan and Junior, and what can we say about his uncle? Coolest, smoothest brother you ever did see. He'll make you feel like you are his nephew. And let me tell you, when you have that type of chemistry, that type of professionalism, that type of excellence, all you want to do is stay. But guess what? Just bring your friends, bring your family. Tell anybody and anybody, it's rated PG, because we going to get the best for you. That's what it's about. And that's your experience with Shea Brown, the media at another level. And what can we say about the video, the lighting? Boy, I tell you, it will make you look better than you look right now. That's the experience you're going to get when you come with media experts. Peace. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people 
and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very carefully because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell that. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y Sales, S-A-L-E-S, Hub.com. Now, the reason you wanna go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. Hello, I'm Dr. Shelley Hipsky, the CEO of Inspiring Lives International, the Executive Director of the Global Sisterhood, and the Editor-in-Chief of Inspiring Lives Magazine. I'm considered to be the Global Empowerment Coach. <laughs>
completely be 110% sure that it is a story that should be told in media. So I think that when I am looking at these different stories, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I collect stories in quotes, like some people collect baseball cards. But when I'm doing that, I think you have to think of it like a tube of toothpaste. Okay, if you have a tube of toothpaste and you've got a, a tooth, toothbrush here and you squeeze out the toothpaste, okay, I got the, I got the tooth, toothbrush is ready to brush my teeth, right? Once you squeeze that out, there is no getting this back in there. There is no way that I can take it away. I have to leave it out there for the world because I can't fit it back in the same, same shape. So you need to remember that when you're telling your stories to the world, because it's very important. The world needs your stories, but you need to be sure that you can back them up and that you are 113% sure that it is a story that should be told to the world. I chose the story as my challenge in the beginning of this, because I know that there's a woman out there that has a similar story that needs to hear it. That's heart, their heart will be touched and they will be moved to action. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docu-series, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. So he called on the cell phone and said to me that we had to re-record the radio episode. And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, I thought we had it. I thought we had it down. He said, you know what, Dr. Shelley, I think you should meet someone before we re-record. So I took the, the advice of this man who had this radio show in Michigan, and I was on tour doing a book tour um, for one of my more academic books since I was a tenured professor at the time. So I picked up the phone that night, and I called Clarelle Radicella. And when I was talking to her, her story shook me. 
It shook me so much that I put that phone down, I put it on speaker, and I grabbed my laptop, and I started typing like a mad woman, like typing like I had never typed before. As I'm typing out her story, tears are starting to roll down my face, and I am so moved. I knew at that moment that there were other stories of other people that needed to be told. And I asked her that, and she said, yes, you, you should be the one to tell those stories. So I went back on that radio show the next day, and they have this countdown, and it's three, and it's two, and while he's counting down, I'm saying to him, look, has anybody written these stories down in a book? Because when you do, it needs to be me. I need to be the author. And we're on. The very next week, in my email box, was a link. I clicked on the link, and there was a YouTube video of that same radio host saying, Dr. Shelley Hipsky of Robert Morris University will be writing the book, Ordinary People, Extraordinary Planet, based on this radio show. And it was at that moment that I knew I had to get to work. <laughs> I needed to tell those stories. And that has been such a blessing to me that I have been the one to be the catalyst for these inspiring stories of women around the world. So I'm looking into the computer screen and there's this beautiful woman from Pakistan staring back at me. And she was telling me this story about her life. And I couldn't even fathom how she found out about me. But it turned out that she had been listening to Empowering Women Radio, which had gone worldwide at that time. We were on radios and on computers all over. She had listened to a story that I, of myself interviewing Hasina Patel in South Africa. I had been Skyping into those classrooms from my own university classroom for years, inspiring and empowering these young women in South Africa. And she heard the story and she said, Dr. Shelley, I want you to be the journalist to tell my story. Well, this time I didn't think of myself as a journalist. I thought of myself as a professor. And throughout my career, I have had to sort of change the definition of who I am and refuse to be defined by other people's labels. But there was a moment when she looked into my eyes through that computer screen and she said to me that, they, that I was making a tremendous impact. She was seeing me tie together all these stories. I was pulling together these common threads of stories of women around the world. And that became the trilogy, The Common Thread. She said to me, do you know what you're doing here, Dr. Shelley? And I said, no, what, what, what do you think I'm doing here? She said to me, Dr. Shelley, you're creating a global sisterhood. That moment was so profound for me. It was like a lightning bolt struck through my body. Since that time, we have created the nonprofit, the 501c3, the global sisterhood that truly helps women and children around the world. We have an entrepreneurial college in Tanzania. We have Dr. Mina, who is in Nepal, who was a Harvard researcher, who then went back to her homeland of Nepal when there was a tragic earthquake that took her family. And she has taught over 87,000 women how to read and write. The impact has been staggering of the global sisterhood. And I thank my global sister from Pakistan, who will remain nameless because of safety issues, for taking the time to spread that message with me to create the Global Sisterhood. So Annie, I would be remiss if I didn't take the audience here back to my days of being a professor. I was your professor actually, Twice. right? Twice. So undergrad and master's degree, I was her professor. And what was I like as a professor? Um, Dr. Hipsky, and she was Dr. Hipsky then, she wasn't Dr. Shelley. She was as animated as she is now. 
She was exactly the same in the classroom as she is on stage, in front of the camera, everything. However, she really cared about her students and she really, really pushed us to do our best. You could not do anything mediocre. No. As with Dr. Shelley now being her <laughs> assistant, nothing is anything less than 113% when it comes to Dr. <laughs> Shelley. So what did you think when I, I, I mean, I hit send on my resignation letter after 10 years of being at the university. What did you think when you heard that I was leaving the university? I was sad. Yeah. I was really sad because I wanted all other teachers to experience Dr. Shelley. Yes. Um, because it was something special. I had, from undergrad to grad, um, graduate school, it just, it was heartbreaking. But then I was able to watch you from afar. So maybe like a little stalker, but. <laughs> <laughs> And that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Because then we, we came back together when you were going through something in your own life. Yes. Um, I watched you on social media, you know, would comment when the kids birthdays and I couldn't believe how Alyssa was grown, <laughs> but it was one night you posted something on social media and I had been contemplating some things in my life and some big changes and I didn't have the courage. Yeah. And somehow I opened up to Dr. Shelley about actually leaving my husband and she listened and was there for me. And at that moment is when she asked me to be her assistant to help me and monetarily, but it isn't even the money. It is the friendship, the bond. I can be real with her. <laughs> And she's always going to take care of me, just like she does every other woman she touches um, one way or another. So it's she's no longer my boss or a teacher. She's my big sister. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it go, totally goes along with the global sisterhood because yes. we are truly a family. I think that that is the hugest thing is that when you're a part of the global sisterhood, you're never alone. You have family and there's always someone there for you. Like Annie's there for me and I'm there for her. Yes. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did they get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms. 
that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the Happy Entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. <laughs>
I have to leave my husband. I'm not sure how I'm going to do this with my kids, but I know you did it, Dr. Shelley. They say, I have a mission that the world needs to know about, and it's time, and I know you've done that. They say to me, I'm stuck. I don't know how to get to that next level. But I know you've done that, Dr. Shelley. And that's why I'm hiring you. That's why I want to be a world-class VIP. Or that's why I want to take your Empower You Masterclass, because I know you've been there. I know you've done your homework. I know you did the research. I know you interviewed hundreds and thousands of women, and you know how they found inspiration, empowerment, balance, abundance in their own lives. And I know you're the woman that's going to show me how to do it for my life. That's how I get my gigs. That's how I get my jobs. That's how I get on the big stages. Because they know that not only have I been there, but that I care. I lead with love, I care, and I will be there every step of the way with a proven curriculum, with resources galore, with a network that is unstoppable, unbeatable. And they wanna be tapped in to that. That's why I'm here. I have been put on this planet to inspire and empower the women of the world. And I thank you. I thank every single one of you that has trusted me and every single one of you that is watching this right now and thinks, yeah, I could use a little Dr. Shelley in my life. I could use a little inspiring lives. And you recognize the fact that it's not just a tagline for me. Every show, everything I've ended with, inspiration is just a story away. I have that story for you. And honey, you have that story in you. So let's inspire together. Well, what didn't I enjoy about today? I mean, this has been absolutely an amazing day doing the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I have been blessed to be able to be a part of this team and just, I mean, get over here. Everybody over, over, over. Come here, 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 come over, come over, come over, come over. Oh my gosh, they're taking forever. They don't like to be in front of the camera, but come here, come here, come here, come here. These are the people, these are the people that are making this happen. These are the people that have dedicated their lives to bringing, making yeah. of an entrepreneur, Aww. right? Like, so if you are out there and you are thinking about, you know, going with doing a docuseries, doing something in media, these are the people that you want to hire. They, you want the right people. Shay Brown, he's dynamite. We've got Randall, we've got Ivan, we've got uh, Kat. Uh, they're, they're fantastic people and they're just so so good at bringing the stories to the world. So I partnered up with them and so should you. Let's do this because the inspiration is just a story, a story away. away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown and um, I just wanna to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you the speaker, you the coach, you the author, you the network marketer, you the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid, right? And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door, how would your life be different? Um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people, and you're able to make a bigger difference. What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door, boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very carefully, because this might be you, so listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking, they like you, there's conversation going on, 
but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal client to me who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell that. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. So my challenge story number one was really one of the biggest, the first biggest challenges I actually encountered as a person that I can remember. Uh, it's being shot. So I was shot. I graduated high school, getting ready to go to college. And, you know, it was a regular day. My friends and I, we go to the store, you know, we hang out and have fun. And that's what we call it. Well, on this particular day, I went into the store. And then when I came out of the store, there was a gentleman that was by the car. Well, my, my friend's name is Rob. He was the driver. My name is Rob, and we got robbed. And it's funny now, but it wasn't funny then, right? So I get out, the, I come out of the store, I see this gentleman standing by the car, I think it's one of the people from the neighborhood. It's not. It's a guy who has a gun and he wants to take all of our money. We wore a lot of rings on our fingers back then. He so he wants to take everything. So long story shorter, he actually saw me, he said, get in the car, put the gun to my head, so now he, the shooter's in the passenger seat, my, my friend Rob's in the driver's seat, and I'm right in the middle, whatever you want to call that seat. And I'm really just feeling like this is the end of life. Um, and before I know it, my friend Rob was really uh, excited at the time. He gives me this look like we should try and take the gunman. So I look away, before I know it, my friend Rob grabs the gun from the gunman, okay? He tries to grab the gun, and the guy pulls back. And, and when he pulls back, all right, all right, rewind. First, Rob hits him in the head with a bottle, okay? The bottle bounces off the shooter's head, all right? It bounces all over the car. The shooter obviously has the best handle grip, so he pulls out, steps outside of the car, aims in, and shoots three shots. Three shots. And one went in my friend's leg, one went in my arm, and it went actually through my shirt because later on that day, I was holding my bloody Barry Sanders jersey up and I had holes in the front of my shirt. And I was wondering like, cause I only got shot in the arm, the holes in my arm right now, but there was holes in my shirt. And I wonder why there was holes in my shirt. But kind of find out when we both jumped back from the shooter, the bullet went through my arm, traveled through my shirt, just missing my chest cavity by those mathematical equations, whatever you call that, and then went into his leg. So the challenge was for me was really being, was trusting people. And my trust in people in my environment was really challenged and it, it affected me. But then I realized it also heightened my awareness. Because from that moment on, I became way more aware. I was way more conscious. I was definitely more mindful of everything that I was doing, who I was surrounding myself with and the environments that I put myself in. So I wouldn't take that back I'm glad I dodged a bullet and we were the matrix before the matrix. So my challenge story number two, uh, I call my championship fight with pain meds. And so it was 10 years. A doctor diagnosed me with uh, degenerative bone disease 
and he said, your body is 30 years older than you, and these are the drugs you're going to have to take. So I was taking all these different pain medications. And what pain medications do is it alters your state of being. Um, they, it does soothe in one area, but it causes defects in the other. And so it was challenging my temperament. Uh, it also makes you want more of the same. So I was taking more pain meds than I really needed to take because my body was becoming dependent upon it. Again, I was starting to fall into this funk until one day, you know, I realized that if I didn't make a change, if I didn't make an adjustment, that my life was going to be cut short and God's plan for my life is, is, is long. And so if I'm going to match up to what God's plan is for me, I better start having some free will and do the things I need to do today. And so I realized I needed to come off of it. So I began to wean off. I began to wean off. I was taking six or seven pills a day and I would go to five pills, then four and a half pills and then four and eventually down to nothing. And what that showed me, the, the challenge for me was being able to balance my pain and the discomfort and the things that I was going through, you know, without being dependent upon something. Because the moment you become dependent upon something, how you do one thing is how you do everything in sort of a way. So I realized that. And so through exercise and through taking up boxing again, I got back in the ring and I had a fight after not fighting for 20 years. I challenged myself. And what that did was it allowed me to not only become a better person, but a better husband, a better father, and just a better giver in this world. And so I'm thankful for that championship prize fight against pain meds. I was a pharmaceutical slave, but now I'm free. Free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty. I'm free at last. <laughs>So COVID, there were pros and there were cons. Um, and I'll talk about the cons first. There was a, a huge challenge on that my entire family went through during this time. Um, first, you know, there was a change in revenue coming into the house because of some of the changes that happened with COVID. And so we didn't have the money that we needed to really sustain our family. So we had to try and make things happen. And at the same time, we were renting our home at the time and our landlords decided because of the scenario, they wanted to do some different things. So in a blink, we had COVID, we had no home, we had a lack of revenue. And so that was the first time our family really experienced something of that nature. And so what we did, uh, we wound up staying with a family friend. We went from having a four bedroom home to uh, four in one room, there was five of us. Uh, RJ had his own room and but what that did though was that really helped to give everyone a great perspective about how much we love each other and how much we stick together no matter what because we got out of that we got a home we got our revenue coming back but in the depth of it in the storm in the middle it was us it was my children my wife and I and what we learned to do was we spent so much time together we had so much fun together and though it could have been just the worst time in the history of life, we found a way to come together as a family. And so it was the challenge of COVID and all the experiences that we went through that actually brought us together, that helped us to actually do some introspecting, you know, within ourselves, which even made us better as a collective. And so I'm thankful for the challenge. You know, they say no pain, no gain. And I think with that pain, if you can maintain, that's, that's where wisdom is gained. I think that's a wrap. I'm gonna write that down. I'm gonna, yeah, no pain, no gain is where wisdom is gained. So the, so the pain actually creates the gain because you gain wisdom. Mm. That's hot. That's what we did. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, 
or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I want to take that and I want to release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. Now, if that's you and you someone that's want to get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you want to have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. A real defining moment for myself and my entire family was the time that we all performed at the Kennedy Center. And this was the first time we ever performed together. And even my daughter, who I believe was five or six at the time a part of this performance. We did, uh, we have a cover of Lean On Me, the great Bill Weathers, rest in peace. And, but what's interesting about this time is that, you know, all of us struggle with, you know, self-image. Everybody has their challenge, but believing in yourself is a superpower. And when you do things and push yourself to do things that you didn't want to do, once you do them, you now gain more strength. That's why we call it a superpower, believing in yourself, because it allows you to do things that you wouldn't necessarily do. But once you do them, you know you can do them. Right. And so you do more of it. And so the belief, my daughter, um, all, both of them having that they had in themselves in regards to singing, my wife, her belief. It rose up and it rose up because they realized that they could come together and they could perform in front of people and folks enjoyed it. We did it for an organization called the Music and Me Foundation International, and they put on uh, events to, for, to support, call it anti-bullying, but call pro-love, right? And so this was a really good experience. And my daughter, you go back and watch the video, she's five or six at a time. She gets up on the mic and she looks at, out at the crowd for the first time, because we had rehearsed, but there was no crowd. When she got on stage and got the mic for the first time, you could see in her face because you can see people like a C all the way back. And her eyes looked up and she froze. And then she said, lean on me. And then the crowd went crazy. And from that, she got energized. My family got energized. And that really showed us, all of us, that if you just believe in yourself and you take a step, wow, you don't know what's next. <laughs> Two thousand and eighteen was a defining year for our relationship, my wife and I and Nicole. We've been together twenty one years, twenty one years together and sixteen years of marriage. OK, and there has been some ups and some downs. 
But 2018 was a breakthrough year for us. Um, Because 2018 was a year I decided to uh, exercise humility, right? And so I went to my wife and I asked her to share with me what she really thought about me (laughs) and the pros and the cons. And she shared. And of course, I knew all the pros, but didn't know the cons. Right. And one of the cons was I didn't know her love language. You can't be in a relationship and not know your wife's love language or your husband's love language. And so what happened in 2018 was, you know, I humbled myself would allow me to learn my wife's love language, which took our relationship to one other level. And then she herself revealed some things that she never revealed, which helped our relationship grow. And it was through the humility of myself of recognizing that I'm not perfect, you know, that allowed her to release some things which allowed us to grow together. So it's the defining moment was humility, taking that slice of humble pie, you know, and actually wanting to understand through empathetic listening, understand what my wife's true love language was and how I could be more of a giver instead of a taker. And I think just by having those kind of experiences, you know, it puts you on the path to where you really want to go. If you got that slice of humble pie, you know, so get that slice of humble pie on your keychain, put it on your mirror in your car. Put it under your pillow, right? Throw one in the closet. So you always got a slice somewhere. (laughs) So I want to prep this by saying this is the first time I've ever shared this story in public ever. In 1996, I was incarcerated. I was incarcerated um, and it was drugs and it was party drugs. I knew people, they liked the smoke and I found the people who had the smoke. You put it together, 20 years old, and I was selling a lot of it. Well, that road came to an end. And it was probably the most devastating and the most enlightening and the greatest moment of my life. It was seven months of my life taken away from me. Seven months of incarceration where I couldn't see anyone that I wanted to see or do what I wanted to do. I was on a schedule that wasn't my own. But I learned something by being incarcerated. By being on the inside, it gave me more time to be on the inside of myself. And through that introspection, I realized at 20 years old, by looking at the guys around me that was in this facility who had all intentions on coming back, no intentions for making changes. I realized at that time that it was a decision that I was going to have to make and that I was going to have to be accountable for the decisions I was making. And I was going to have to be mindful about what those decisions were. And so in that moment, I realized that I was going to have to make some adjustments, change some friend groups, start to open my paradigm, change my perspective, start to read more books that are going to encourage me to think those kind of thoughts. And so without this situation, of course, I couldn't get a job for a while. I was on probation for a long time. You know, you have this judgment that comes with the experience. But it was the experience of 1996 that allowed me today to be able to not only help other young people not go through the same thing, but at the same time, be able to articulate why and how you can make different choices. You can be a hustler, but be a hustler that multiplies, multiplies in the positive in your favor. Be a hustler that multiplies in the favor of you. And so look at the people that are around you. Look at the influences, the external uh, influences, people, situations, and ask yourself, is this who I want to be? Look at the future, because the future is what you do today. So do something today that will impact your tomorrow. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm going to talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience 
if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now, for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise. Then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, if that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. You know, what, what I would tell my 21-year-old self, number one, is to relax, okay? Don't move so fast. But most importantly, patience and commitment will be the foundation of all the great things that will happen to you. Patience. Patience, when COVID hit, my company was not producing the kind of money that I needed for myself. It was enough money for the company, but not enough for me. So then I had to make some decisions. Should I leave the company? Should I give up my percentage of the company? But I was patient. And I was committed to doing the things that I needed to do every single day to help the company grow. I was patient. And because I was, now I'm in a position where the company we're looking at acquisition being acquired in less than two years. We're looking at multiple investors wanting to invest in this idea. And so what I would tell you is that patience is going to keep you there, right? And commitment is going to get you there. Patience and commitment. It's like peanut butter and jelly. Eat up. <laughs>
you know, I really postured myself to pretty much deal with this, meaning end it. You know, I looked over at my wife and she was like, bro, just forget it. Because both of us were animated at the time. She was like, just forget it. Don't, don't worry about it. And when she said that, something fell over me. It was just, just that power pause, we call it, the stillness. Allow me just to say, you know what? My bad, man. I'm not going to park in front of your house anymore. I'm sorry. I was wrong. This is like in a moment. So what happens next is the guy who wants to fight me says, man, I'm sorry. And the guy's dad's outside was elevated, too. And he's like, oh, you know what? This is stupid. You're right. The whole thing it was like some kind of uh, paradox of uh, <laughs> yin and yang all at once. And then next, you know, the cops were there and the streets were flooded with cops. And the cops came up and said, OK, sir, you, you want to press charges? And I was like, no. We got any problems here? I was like, no, no problems here. So what's going on? Well, just a little altercation, disagreement. We communicated. And that was it. So my self-control allowed the situation to gain control. Right. The Bible says you know, a, a man without self-control is like a city without walls. OK. I mean, what that means is that back in the days, if you didn't have walls up, anybody could come in and then you're just destroyed. So a man who doesn't have, or a woman who does not have self-control, you don't have any walls, any barrier. Anything can come in and destroy you. It was the self-control that not only allowed us to be in a better situation, but those people, they were empowered and they were inspired because after that, our relationship had changed and you could tell that it was positively fruitful. So self-control, that will be a major attribute. <laughs>So when I was younger, I was on the ice with a bunch of friends. We were on a pond and it was solid until it wasn't. And I fell through. And I, I remember falling through the ice. And when I fell through the ice and I came back up, it was solid. And I, I remember looking around and I could see everyone through the ice, but I didn't see a hole. I got real focused. I remember focusing myself. And when I opened my eyes, I was able to locate the hole and get myself to it and eventually pull myself up. Focus has been the reason. Focus has been the guider for me, not just in my relationships, but in business. And it is one of the strongest attributes of a human being. Focus has allowed me to actually learn certain skills and focus in on those different skills and attributes to where now those skills and attributes are utilities for me today. It's only the focus. See, focus is, dang it, shoot. Focus is like, without it, you're lost. You know, focus is like wandering around the desert like the children of Israel. And what could have taken 11 days takes you 40 years. Right. So don't make an 11 day journey, a 40 year journey. Focus, hocus, focus. I wrote a book called Hocus Focus some years ago. And what made me write that book was that I started really realizing that if I could just concentrate my energy, if I could just laser focus on what I'm working on, not spend 25 percent of my energy, not spend 65 percent of my energy, but put all of me into whatever I'm doing, that it would manifest. That seed would sprout. And sometimes focus means you got to have the mindset of a bamboo tree. You got to know that a bamboo tree, when the seed is planted in the ground, it takes five years. In five years, the seed is underneath the ground. Five years. You have to cultivate that seed. You got to focus every day and cultivate your craft. Every single day, focus on what you need to do. In year five, it sprouts to the ground and it grows 90 feet in six weeks. It grows 90 feet in six weeks, and it's one of the strongest trees in the world. But it's underneath the surface where all the work was getting done. And it's the focus of the cultivator, of the planter, of the farmer that had to cultivate that seed. It was the focus on that seed that allowed it to grow. So focus on your seed and you will see its fruit. <laughs>
get more done in less time. We help people get more done in less time. Technology, so I'm a humologist. A humologist comes from the word humology. Humology is humans and technology and how we work together and how it integrates. And so in business, anytime you can implement technology to help you get more done in less time, to be more efficient, you want to do it. And so what we do is every company, every business has processes. And doing those processes are people. And most of the time, people are doing repetitive, redundant activity. So we remove that. We have these things called digital employees and software to where now that person who was doing the mundane, repetitive work no longer has to do that. Now the technology can do the repetitive work and the person can now be more focused on things of more value to themselves and the company, more customer facing, networking, sales, speaking, being creative, using their mind instead of head down, nose down, fingers touching the keyboard, doing the same thing. And so what we're helping companies do is become more productive improving the employee experience, improving the customer experience, improving the overall experience by removing the mundane. Humans don't need to do robotic work. Back in the days when we first started doing work, putting candies on the conveyor belt and doing the same thing over and over, that was cool, that was fun. That was the first time we knew about work. But now we are an advanced civilization people, all right? This part of the 21st century, we need to focus on using technology to be better and get better and have more and do more and have more time with our family and less time doing redundant things. And so anytime that we can educate, our phrase is educate so you can automate. Anytime we get a chance to educate, doesn't matter the industry, we educate the business owner, the business leader, the business operator on how you can use technology to get more done and spend less of your time, we're gonna do that. And I would definitely say, investigate. Investigate to see how you can automate. So hands down, so I've been a part of a lot of experiences, photo shoots, video shoots, video shoots, music video on stage. This today though, this has been to me uh, that I can remember the greatest production experience that I have actually had. And the reason for that is because the people around me right now, like they're so authentic and so genuine. The atmosphere that has been created will allows you to be yourself and relax. Uh, and you can also feel, you know, where the human beings, we have energy, we can feel it. Energy is transmittable. So you can feel when the energy is positive, moving in a, in a positive direction, you have good momentum. And so that makes you better on the inside. And I think when you're trying to portray or give a message or speak from your mind and articulate, it's all about how you feel. Because how you feel is how you think, how you think is how you speak. And so I'm thankful for everyone here today. And I'm thankful for this experience to be able to share, you know, what I'm doing, what I've done. And maybe it can reach one, right? Maybe, maybe one. <laughs>
I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you as you're listening, if any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, Sales, S-A-L-E-S, Hub.com. Now, the reason you wanna go over to EasySalesHub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. So I was in Lamarck, Texas at the Lamarck Middle School. It was my first race of the year and I was on track. The crowd was all pumped up. My parents was there. My family was there to see me run. And I started out, the race started and oh, I was out. I was out doing very well. And then all of a sudden, as they say, the monkey jumped on my back. And so I could not, I saw myself not finishing the race. And because I couldn't finish the race, because I knew that I wasn't going to win the race, I just stopped. I got off the field. And so after the race was over, everyone started running back over to me thinking that I was hurt. And so I have to be honest with you, I went along with the story. I was like, oh yeah, I got you know a couple of cramps in my legs. But the truth was, I was afraid. I was afraid to lose. I was afraid to lose in front of all the crowd when they had so much confidence in me. And I just, I stopped. I just didn't finish the race. And I remember in my head, uh, my dad always saying, uh, he would always tell me that um, nothing beats failure but a try. But unfortunately, um, I tried, but I was still failing. And so I could not finish the race. So there I was in Grambling, Louisiana at Grambling State University. And I got there by following my boyfriend um, to college. Uh, he was there, had already been there two years. And I decided that I was going to follow along. Uh, not realizing that he had his own set of friends, his own fr his fraternity um, that he was involved in. He also played on the baseball team, so he didn't have very much time for me. So um, my parents came, they packed me, uh, packed up the car. We drove to, to Gramlin and uh, it was time for me to move in. So I moved into my dorm and um, it's like when they pulled off, when I saw the car, the, the taillights of the car, I knew then, oh my goodness, here I am. I took this big step. I'd never been away from home other than on vacations um, to the grandparents' home. And so um, that night, I just bawled. I started crying and uh, I realized um, that I was there and I didn't have parents to call. There was a, only a payphone um, that was on the dorm uh, hallway. So um, they weren't, I couldn't just pick up the phone and call. So I felt so alone uh, being there. Uh, I didn't have uh, family. Uh, there was no malls to go to, no stores. Um, nothing. And so um, it wasn't very long when I realized that that wasn't for me um, staying there. You know, it was an HBCU. It was exciting to be there on game days. But after game days uh, and when the band stopped playing, it was quiet. And so um, I, that was probably the most alone I've ever felt uh, ever. <laughs> So I get recruited to this Fortune 100 company, and um, it's something that I'd waited on for so long, so I was really excited about being there. I was excited until I had to go to my first board meeting, or basically, or the senior executives uh, in a boardroom. And um, I 
felt like I was hidden in plain sight. Um, when I walked through the door, no one acknowledged my presence, although I was recruited there. Uh, no one really acknowledged my presence. Uh, no one said hello. Uh, the president who recruited me there, um, he greeted me with a nod, uh, but that was pretty much it. Uh, and so there were times when I would go to this, meet, this, this particular meeting and I'd be on the elevator with the same executives that um, sat next to me in the boardroom. And so um, they wouldn't say hello. They'd walk off the elevator. We were going to the same meeting and um, there was no response. But I said, you know, I'm, I, I waited a long time to get here. So I'm not leaving uh, if I have to prove my worth, if I have to prove um, that I belong there in that board reading, me, uh, in that boardroom at that time. Um, that's what I was going to do. Um, but it was very um, short-lived um, because eventually um, I ended up uh, I ended up uh, making it known that I was there and I was recruited there and that um, I belong there. But it was really a traumatic experience initially because I've never had that type of treatment uh, ever before. Uh, I was the only one that, only female in the room, only um, African-American, brown person in the room. So um, that had its challenges as well, but even more so uh, for the position that I was recruited there for um, was challenging. And so um, it was pretty, pretty different and pretty challenging for me. Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docu-series. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docu-series, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. And if that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. Go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. Themakingofanentrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. So I walk into um, this company and um, I noticed a familiar face. And it was actually someone that had worked for me at a previous position. And so I told her I was there to apply for a job. And she said, I'm sorry, I don't think that we um, have any positions, she says, but I will let you talk to our vice president of human resources. 
So after speaking with the vice president um, of HR, um, she, she confirmed that there wasn't any available positions, especially for a college grad or someone that um, was looking for a professional position. She says, but you know, um, I do have a position. It's not permanent, but um, it is a position that uh, we could use someone here at the front desk. And I'm thinking to myself, front desk. Um, but, you know, I decided to accept the position. And the reason I did is because I thought about it's not really where I started, you know, I start from. It's um, what I do with the position. And so I started at the front desk, literally. And so, um, of course, I had some individuals telling me, why would you do that? You know, why would you, um, you know, take a position such as that? And I basically said, because I needed to work. Um, and so uh, from there, my career tra trajectory really just took off. Um, that's where I got my start in human resources. And I um, eventually started climbing the career, career ladder. And, um, you know, I said to myself, and actually I tell everyone else, it's not where you start, it's really where you finish. <laughs>I was talking a little bit about my experience in the boardroom and um, in this role that I was in uh, it really uh, again it was a challenge but I took that challenge and I actually made it into um, a uh, triumph because I, um, I earned the respect for that position but one thing I realized is um, there's a difference in managing and being a leader. And in this particular particular role, I really wasn't recruited to manage as much as I was to lead. And so um, as a leader, that's where I developed all of my leadership skills because I had to basically change my whole mindset about um, why I was there, what job I was doing. Um, and I wanted to make certain that uh, in order to get the respect, you had to show those leadership skills. And so that was a defining moment for me because I never ever thought about the difference between managing and leading. And so as a leader, um, those skills were developed in that role. Uh, I uh, took my time uh, learning the organization and then also uh, realizing that uh, these individuals, they're not needing me for, them, for me to manage them, they want me to lead them. And I quickly realized also that as a leader, it's not where you're going, it's how you do it and, know, and being confident in doing so. And so that was a very um, pivotal moment for me uh, in that particular role. <laughs> So one of my pivotal moments is, I, and I love to tell this story, um, I actually was on my way in to work that day, and a particular day, and I was uh, listening to music, um, kind of meditating, um, but also kind of replaying uh, the week before. This was on a Monday morning um, after a long weekend, and so, but I replayed how hard of the week I had prior to that. And so I dreaded, I was dreading going in that day. And so I get into the garage, <clears throat> I hit my parking card on the, um, at the gate, and I said out loud, to, Lord, deliver me from this place. And when I said that, I don't, I don't even know why I said it. No one was in the car with me, but I guess I was talking to myself. Uh, but that was Monday. On Friday, I was called in by um, my uh, manager, who's the uh, senior vice president of HR. And she said, you know, Yolanda, we've had consultants come in and um, based upon the recommendations, they're going to remove all the middle management from this position. And of course, that means you. And I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, me? Like I'm HR, normally I know if there's gonna be a reduction of force. Um, but she says, yeah, unfortunately, it's going to affect you and two other managers. That day, I realized that um, 
I needed to make certain that this would never happen to me again. I wouldn't be caught off guard. Um, but it was also that day that my life changed because not only did I um, have time, because of course they gave me a severance package, of course they um, gave me a year um, of assistance, but um, it's when I changed industries. I was able to go from healthcare to oil and gas. And um, that was a pivotal moment for me because it made me even more diverse in my um, career. But it also made me step up my game. It made me uh, realize that uh, in order for me to be um, valued, um, I can't just be functional. I had to be the person that they couldn't do without. I had to position myself differently. Um, and from that point, I have now positioned myself totally differently uh, in, the, in the roles that I serve in now. Um, I make certain that they understand that um, my worth and my value to the organization uh, sometimes can't be replaced. It's not replaceable because of my experience, my knowledge, but also the person that I am and what I bring to the position. So that particular day, um, I realized that that changed uh, my whole world. And um, that's why I'm here where I'm at now, today. It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release or Maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're an expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. Now I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did they get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I wanna invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right, when, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you may be in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you, I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on, a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, I, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things out. We connect again real soon. See you out. One thing that I tell my 21 year old self is to love yourself first. And the reason I say that is because if you don't love yourself first, then you lack confidence. You lack the confidence to do anything else that you set out to do. You have this imposter that constantly walks with you in everything that you do. Um, telling you that you're not good enough. But if you love yourself and you love yourself first, then everything else you do 
is positive. You give yourself that positive. You give yourself permission. And more than that, you can't take care of anyone else if you're not well yourself. And so uh, my 21-year-old self, I realized that when I look back in life, I was so busy trying to please everyone else. I was so busy trying to make everyone else happy that I almost lost myself. I forgot about me. Um, raising children, being married, had this career ahead of me. I was traveling a lot. My first job required me to travel a lot. And so um, I just didn't feel like, you know, uh, I was doing it, but I wasn't doing it for myself. I was doing it for everyone else. So as a 21 year old, you have to love yourself first. Make certain at all times. <laughs>
but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal client to me who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay, and I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there, and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm going to give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, easysaleshub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you want to go over to easysaleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless. And there I was, eight years old, right there in the bathroom, I'll never forget. My mother said, hey, I want to talk to you. You know, it was right before school, and she said, you know, honestly, I'm not your biological mother. Me, I didn't even know the word biological men at eight years old. So she explained to me that she wasn't my natural mother. And that was the term she used, and I still didn't know what it meant. So then she explained to me that she was going to take me to see who my, see, she was going to take me to see my mother that weekend. So we went to this apartment building right there on Fifth and Rhode Island, Northwest. And we get on the elevator and we go up to like the eighth floor, seventh or eighth floor. And I meet this woman and this woman looks young. That's because she is young. Very, very light complected, very, very short hair, but extremely, but the woman's very pretty. And she greets me with a really, really big hug. I'm still kind of confused. And I'm just wondering how is this woman my mother when I've been living with this other woman all of this time? So that confusion, uh, you know, with, with confusion, you have questions. And I began to ask questions, you know, where was she at? Um, and she said she was living in New York. Come to find out she was living in New York because she was in a recovery home. Um, living in a recovery home, you know, trying to recover from uh, an addiction. So the addiction she was recovering from was using drugs right after she had me. So after she had me, she had met a gentleman. And this is the story I've heard. She met a gentleman who got her addicted to crack cocaine. This is in the year 1987. I'm born December 1986, so in 1987, she became addicted to crack cocaine. And when she became addicted to this drug, she would leave me at home with my grandfather. My grandfather became my caretaker. My mother, who I lived with, who was actually my aunt, she had come to visit me at the house and she said she didn't like the atmosphere <clears throat> that I was living in. She said it was a lot of smoke. It was a lot of women and she didn't feel like me sleeping in a drawer was um, feasible for a six month old. So at that time she went there and without my grandfather's consent, she took me from his house and she took me to her home in Mount Rainier, Maryland. <laughs> So, I'm working at the Highsville District Courthouse, and I come back from lunch from a fast food joint with one of my coworkers. And I'm sitting there, as I do, I drink one gallon of water every single day. But this day was slightly different. After lunch, 
we had got back probably about five minutes afterwards because it was right down the street. And as we're sitting there, I started to feel this outer body. <clears throat> I started to feel this outer body experience where I couldn't breathe. So I gasped for air and I said, yo, I can't breathe. And she didn't, you know, I'm a very playful guy. You know, we have a good time at work. So she thought I was joking. So I grabbed my big jug of water and I started to chug it and I felt better. And she said, do you want me to call the ambulance? I said, yes, please. Can you do that? So they came and in the midst of them coming, I felt it again. So I had to continue to drink this water. I had no clue what was really going on with me. So when they got there, they checked my blood pressure. It was 180 over 100, which was abnormal. So they told me, just go home, relax. I went home, relaxed, didn't feel it anymore. I went to another fast food spot the following week. And I felt the same thing when I started to eat this food. So I knew something was wrong. Then there was a night where I was leaving from a nightclub and I got pulled over by a police officer and I had dead tags. They had just expired. So instead of him telling me to go home, he said, I'm towing your vehicle. Now I have no car. I'm all the way in Riverdale, Maryland. I have to walk all the way. He locked me up and he let me right out. And I take a long walk home from Riverdale, Maryland to Mount Rainier. That long walk home was one of the last walk homes I could remember before I ended up in the hospital. The next morning, the very next morning, I didn't wake up. My sister found me in my room suffering from a seizure. So she called the ambulance. And the last thing I remember that morning was being carted down the steps at my parents' house in the gurney. And they took me to Prince George's Hospital Center. Prince George's Hospital Center ran a lot of tests on me and they could not figure out what was wrong. So they sent me over to GW Hospital. And when I got to GW Hospital, they told me, they ran CAT scans, they ran a bunch of tests, and they said, you have an ulterior venous malformation. I have no clue what that means, but they're basically saying that blood is not flowing through my brain properly. Do I suffer from headaches? And I'm like, I do have headaches pretty often, maybe like once a week. And it's all making sense now. So I made the executive decision to get it treated. They said, you could leave here right now and it could hemorrhage or we can fix it for you and it's going to be an eight hour surgery. That eight hour surgery turns to 13 hours. And I, the only thing I remember was waking up in the hallway, strapped to a bed, arms, legs, and seeing people walking back and forth. And I had a trachea in my throat and I couldn't scream for help. And I felt like forever just being there. And when they finally took me to the room, they took the trachea out of my throat, they unstrapped my arms, and they pulled a catheter from out of my penis. The weirdest feeling ever, because now I'm wondering how did it even get in there? So imagine being down and out, <clears throat> so imagine being down and out and not having any more funds and trying to find a job. You just really can't find a job. So I'm online, Facebook to be exact, and I'm seeing a bunch of my high school buddies looking like they're doing something and I need parts. So one day I hit my boy up and I said, yo, let me uh, meet up with me real quick. I want to talk to you about something. So I broke it down for him. I said, bro, I don't have a job. I have no money. It's 2008. It's a recession. Gas prices are high. What are y'all doing, man? He breaks it down for me and says, look, I'm going to put you in contact with somebody and they'll let you in on everything. So the next day, a guy says, this all you got to do. Take these bags right here. Go in this store. Return the, pro return the product and bring me back the cash. I said, that's it? Is it stolen? He said, nah, we paid for it. So I go in the store. I return the merchandise, I get the cash. He gives me $600 out of the, the bulk that I gave him. I said, bro, I'll do this every day. 
let me know. So I did it every single day for 30 days. I saved almost $20,000 cash. Now imagine, I just went from having $0 in a bank account to now having $20,000 cash, all in rubber bands inside of a push-up box. I kept it in my room, and the only person I showed was my little sister. And I showed her just in case something happened to me and she needed funds. So I find out a way to acquire these credit cards that are being utilized to purchase this product. I meet a young lady at a restaurant and she says, hey, I don't know what you do for a living, but I got this little box. I knew that little box from what I saw with my boy. And I said, she was like, there was a guy who gave it to me and he hasn't hit me back. First thing in my mind says, he must've got locked up. Let me get that. These little boxes are skimmers and they have passcodes on them. I can't guess his passcode, but I put 0000 and it opened up. He had 120 numbers on there. I'm good. Now I got 120 credit card numbers that I can utilize. Now I have a good heart and I do believe in karma because I was raised in the church. But one thing I did know is that if I utilize somebody's card, they could get their money back. So that's why I used it and felt okay doing it, even though it was wrong. So I had this 120 num credit card numbers that I could utilize and I was up. I no longer needed that plug. I had my own. And from that day on, I dealt with her one time and then I cut her off. Reason being, there's a compromise point that I knew about, that if too many people were reporting their cards from one establishment, it would come back to this young lady. So I said, let me use her once, use her twice, and now I'm on to the next place. So it sounds like I'm kind of like a criminal in my mind, but I was being very strategic. I had really, really long locks at that time. So when I would go to these stores to return this merchandise, to not make it look so obvious, I would wear a suit to go in there so that I could look like I blended in with the working class people as opposed to walking in in street gear on a random Tuesday. I would also wear, and my wife to this day remembers I met her for lunch, I had on scrubs like I worked at a hospital. Blue scrubs with the matching blue bottom, I would tuck it in and I would wear a lanyard around my neck and tuck it right here with no badge. Just tuck it right here so that when I would go in stores, they would think, oh, he works at a hospital. We're not gonna give him a hard time returning this merchandise. And there I was, almost a hundred grand strong with credit card funds. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching the making of an entrepreneur docuseries. I just want to take a moment to talk to you. That, that's right, you that's watching right now. Um, you the mom, or maybe you're the dad, or, or maybe you're, you're an entrepreneur, or perhaps you're an auntie or an uncle, but you're someone out there that, that has a heart to give, uh, you have a heart to serve, and as you're watching this making of an entrepreneur docuseries, you may be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, wait a minute, I've had some, some life lessons, I've, I've had some setbacks, I've had some experiences, I've gone through some things that have helped me become a better person, and, and I wanna take that and I wanna release that to other folks. Okay. Maybe you're a speaker and you're already doing it. Maybe you've written books and you've already done that. Or maybe the story that's inside of you, the expertise that's inside of you, the message inside of you, this is the right platform for you to make a bigger difference and a bigger impact in the world. Now, this whole making of an entrepreneur docuseries, um, if you had to sum it up in, in just one word, and it's kind of hard to do that, but as I'm talking to you and you're listening right now, you might be saying, Shay, what's the one word? And the one word I would say is just legacy legacy. Um, there's a legacy I understand that you want to leave for your family, and I get that, but there's also a legacy of your knowledge. There's a legacy of your expertise, and think about this. You're able to share your message or share your story or share your expertise, and, and long after you're gone, they still have a window into the soul of who you are and the impact that that leaves behind. If that's you and you someone that's wanna get the information, you're, you're someone that's ready to do something bigger than just your business and bigger than just making more money, but you wanna have more meaning in the world, uh, do me a favor. 
go over to www.themakingofanentrepreneurdocuseries.com. I know that's a long email, a long address, but I want you to hear it again one more time. The Making of an entrepreneur.com. Now, when you get there, just put your first name and your last name and your phone number and information in there. Worst case scenario, you have a meeting with the team and decide, hey, me being a cast member, this isn't a good fit, but I had a lot of fun. Best case scenario, you decide to take a step. Folks understand your backstory, uh, understand what you've been through, and uh, the world is much better off um, while you're here. And when the day comes and you decide to transition and, and move on, it's still doing very, very well. So with that being said, I just want to pop in. Thanks a lot for watching the Making of an Entrepreneur series. Uh, my name is Shay Brown. I want to encourage you to continue to watch, and um, I'll see you at the next episode. God bless. <laughs>
the little bit of cash that I had sitting in my closet for that night to go out taken. So now I'm like, I made a bad decision moving to Laurel with him. I'm out. But before I could say I was out, the apartment complex kicked us out. So now I move to another part of Laurel by myself and everything is all good. I'm making cooking videos. I had a girlfriend at the time, you know, uh, all my neighbors love me. I had a nice dog. We're still going to the clubs and partying. And before you know it, my girlfriend moves in with me. I'm making these videos. And when I say videos, I'm talking about cooking instruction videos on YouTube and Facebook. People are loving it when I post these videos. So I'm beginning to really think that culinary arts is my lane. And this content videos that I'm putting together, very amateur like now when I look back at them, but everybody starts somewhere. Let's fast forward to about two years down the road. Two years later down the road, one of my boys gets his door kicked in. They arrest him, his girlfriend calls me. Oh my gosh, they just took him. I'm like, who? Secret Service. I'm scared, but hey, I'm living in a townhouse at the time. It's not in my name. I don't think that they can come get me, but I'm still looking out my window. He gets out the other individual in the case. They kick his door in. The other individual kick his door in. I just know I'm next. It's all four of us, three of them gone. It's just me left, but they never come and get me. All three of them get out and they all call me and they say, you need to go turn yourself in. They keep asking about you. So I make the executive decision to go turn myself in. I call a police. I call a commissioner buddy of mine and said, hey, can I turn myself in with you so that I can get out? And she said, yeah, come on, turn yourself in. I turn myself in there at Upper Marlboro thinking I'm going to get out. And they say, no, you have an outstanding warrant in Montgomery County. They transferred me to Montgomery County. I had 82 counts of state fraud credit card. I don't know what they call it. I bailed myself out there. They sent me to Anne Arundel. I have outstanding warrant for a missed court date that took place during that period of time. From Anne Arundel County, I had a detainer by the Secret Service. Secret Service, U.S. Marshals come pick me up. And that ride was the longest ride from Anne Arundel County to the U.S. Eastern District Courthouse. When I got to that courthouse, Better yet, back up. That, that drive, when I asked him questions like, why didn't you come to my home? He said, we didn't know where you stayed at. We thought you lived with your mother. They said, you don't have any places in your name, but we see all your YouTube videos and we see all the cooking you're doing. I thought that was pretty funny that they were watching the videos but couldn't find where I was living at. But they said it was very honorable that I turned myself in and once I go in front of the court, they would let me out like they did everyone else. I get there and I stand in front of the judge, Judge Anthony J. Tringa at the Eastern District Court, Eastern District of Virginia. And he tells me that I am going to remain in the custody of the U.S. Marshals because I'm a flight risk. I'm confused because I'm now wondering how am I a flight risk? I'm an American, don't know how. And I stayed there. And I stayed there and this is my first long prison sentence in a county jail. So while serving time in a federal prison, you begin to realize that you couldn't have been placed in this place if you weren't doing anything wrong. Because at first I was blaming others for telling, for not having loyalty to me. And then I realized they wouldn't have to have loyalty to me if I wasn't doing anything wrong. So during the period of time while I was away at a federal medium prison in New Jersey, Fort Dix FCI, I began to realize that I got to really lock in on my culinary arts. So I would ask individuals to send me recipe books any type of recipe magazine book. And I just wanted to study it. 
and study different foods. Send me cookbooks. So when I get out, I can hit the ground running. I literally built my website in there. So when I came home, all I had to do was input everything. I had a bio, I had menus, I had pretty much everything to really start and hit the ground running as a personal chef. Because as people told me while I was in there, if you really put as much into your personal chef as you did with the fraud that you were doing, you may be 10 times further. And that is what motivates me to this day. So upon release, March 6, 2014, from prison, I was released and the first thing you're asked to do is find a job. So I would go to jobs and I would be honest on the application to say, yes, I have a felony and I would never hear back from him. But someone at the halfway house I was at said, you know it cost them a lot of money to run federal background checks. So if you don't have anything in the state, I think you're fine. And I had no state cases. Maybe a, you know, driving on suspended or maybe, you know, speeding ticket here and there, but nothing criminal on my state record. So I began checking, no, I don't have a felony. And guess what? I began getting jobs. And I just wanted to put food on the table. So I would take jobs making $11 an hour, $12 an hour. As a 27, 28 year old man, just to be able to feed my family. And these were staffing agencies. So I would have a job for two weeks here, a month here, at the most 90 days here, but it never stopped me from wanting to be able to provide, you know? I had a little bit of money when I came home, but that little bit of money, less than $10,000, didn't last me one bit. So I continued to look for jobs and I continued to get staff and agency. I continued to send my resumes to different places and I continued to have jobs for little, for short periods of time. No, I, could, I did not have one permanent job between 2014 and 2019. Staff and agencies, like, and I ain't gonna list them, you know, would literally hire me and tell me this job is temp to hire. And I'd get excited. Like I finally can take care of my family while still pursuing culinary arts and still being able to provide people with events because I was still doing events, but the events weren't coming in at the volume I needed to be able to take care of a household. So my last job, I was hired in 2018 by Lockheed Martin. Lockheed Martin hired me as a contractor and it was a year long contract to be renewed and possibly bought on permanent. So in 2018, February, they bought me on, I'm making $19 an hour, I'm excited, I'm rocking and rolling, business is kind of taking off at that time and the contract gets cut about 10 months in. Why did it get cut? They cut the contract because I asked for a raise. Why did I ask for a raise? Because they initially hired me to be the executive assistant for three individuals. But I'm so well organized and people saw how fast I worked. I literally was doing executive assistant work for 11 people. So when I asked them, could they give me a raise because I'm working for all of these people, their response is, you are only supposed to work for those three people and you cannot work for those other people. Now, what did that do? That caused tension in the workplace. So now everyone's upset with me because the staffing agency, the contract company told me to stop working for these other individuals. And guess what? I lost my job. The next month I went on TV one and I haven't looked back since. When I was on there, my following raised up, my following went up, people online began to look at me as a more notable individual and business began to thrive so much to the point where I didn't even need the job anymore. I started this thing called a juice cleanse. Now I naturally drink these same three juices once a week. Celery juice, carrot juice, and beet juice. They have ginger, lemon, lime, and all of them. Sometimes I put an apple on the beet to kind of cut it down. And when I started advertising this online, right after I lost that job, 
people started asking me, hey, are those for sale? And I said, yeah. And I made up a package called the three-day juice cleanse or the five-day juice cleanse. You get it for $60 or $120. I started marketing online and I literally was selling about 25 cleanses a day. And when I began selling these cleanses, I started to notice a lot of my friends started to become, become very envious of me because they saw the volume I was selling. And the joke around town was, Ant quit his job to sell beet juice. I can't make this up because I actually saw the text message that somebody sent to someone else. And I'm thinking to myself, if you made the type of money that I was making selling beet juice, you should quit your job too. So imagine the first time you heard about one of the biggest magazines in your area while you're locked up. I knew nothing about the Washingtonian while I was at home. But when I went, when I got locked up, I heard about this magazine called the Washingtonian and an individual had given it to me because they wanted to share some recipes with me. And I always thought to myself, if I could ever be featured in this magazine, nah, I probably couldn't. So what I did was early in the pandemic, I released a cookbook called The Little Vegan Chef. And it's a children's book with really fun, tasty recipes that probably take you five, 10 minutes and you can make it at home. I thought it was genius for the simple fact that everyone's at home, kids are driving you crazy. Here's some fun recipes to make at home, you know, as a family. And the book is probably, not even probably, it's sold more books than all of the other seven books I've put together. Probably more so because we're all at home, but also the content is great. So what I started to do was when I saw the sales going up, let me do my own press as I've always done my own PR. And I started reaching out to authors, uh, journalists. I started reaching out to journalists of different articles. So I would go to Google, type in chef, hit news, and go down the list. And I copy and paste the name of the person, and then I'll put it back in Google and say, uh, let's for example, Lorena Washington, email. And then you can find her email. Sometimes you can click on the name and their email be there, their Twitter be there, and I'm reaching out, hey, how you doing? I'm Chef Anthony Thomas. I'm a 30, well, how old was I then? 32, I'm a 32 year old personal chef. I just released this cookbook. I love your platform. I love the story you wrote about X, Y, and Z. And they'd write back. Thank you so much. We really appreciate it. Tell me more about this book. So then I tell them this and they set up some time. We'd have interview after interview. Um, and then they write a story about me. Those stories translate into dollars because now people is driving traffic to your website, is driving traffic to the book. They wrote about me in the Washingtonian, not only the Washingtonian, the South China Morning Post, the Beat, um, Vegan News, which is one of the biggest UK magazines. You know, it was really a really good time for me during the pandemic because I felt like I could thrive through these book sales. Even though I couldn't touch the masses and do personal chef events, I could touch them by being in their home, on their countertop, or on their bookshelf. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown. I just want to speak to you, the speaker, or maybe not even a speaker, right? Maybe you're not a speaker, but you have a message inside of you that you want to release, or maybe you have a story, right? A story of your life, a story in your career, or, or maybe, maybe as you're listening right now, you're an expert, right? You're, you're, you're an expert at teaching people how to do something. You're expert at raising kids. And I want you to imagine for a moment that you had an opportunity to share your message or your story on a bigger stage. And I'm gonna talk about that in a moment and what that would mean for you if you could reach your target audience, if you're an entrepreneur, if that target audience got associated to the problem that you solve, or if you're a super entrepreneur with sales funnels out there, not only did it get associated to who you were, but they were able to join your list. Now for other folks, that won't make no sense at all. But for you, the entrepreneur, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I want to invite you over to something called the Comeback Champion Summit. And, and the whole purpose of the Comeback Champion Summit is really to do one thing, which is one word, and that is possibilities. That's right. When, when you get a chance to get on stage, uh, you get a chance to do it virtually, and some of you maybe in person, and you get a chance to share your story. So something deep, deep inside of you. I always say your message, because some of you have a message or your expertise, 
then guess what happens? Three things happen. Number one, you get to make a difference. And isn't that why you are on this earth? I mean, I don't want to get emotional here, but you're really on this earth to make a difference for someone else. Something has happened to you so it can go through you to someone else. And being able to speak on a, on a, on a platform that provides an audience, it's like, a, like having a microphone that allows you to help more people faster. So that's, that's number one. Uh, number two, when you're on a, a platform, I'm gonna invite you to the Comeback Champion Summit, you get a chance to have more meaning in the world, to have more impact and to have more influence. And that's really who we're looking for. We're looking for folks out there who have an interest, want or desire of serving others. So if that's you, that's you, I'm gonna invite you to go over to www.comebackchampionsummit.com. Again, comebackchampionsummit.com. Click the button, it'll say apply to speak. Go through the process. And if it's a good fit, can't wait to share your story over at the Comeback Champion Summit or any one of our platforms that serves other folks. With that being said, um, my name, by the way, is Shay Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And um, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again real soon. See you out. So one thing you can do is you can make a mistake, but the mistake you cannot be defined, you won't always be defined by because you can always bounce back from that mistake. You remember earlier when I was telling you about how I had met my mom when I was eight years old and how she had made a mistake and how she recovered from this mistake. It's the same thing in life, you know, same thing with me when I went to prison. I made a mistake. I did the wrong thing for four years. And guess what? The government took two years from me. But the mistake that I will never make again is breaking the law by committing those type of crimes because it doesn't pay to break the law. Another thing that I've realized is how you talk to, in another thing I realized is how you talk to individuals is what you'll get back. So growing up, after I got my driver's license, police would pull me over based on my hair, I had locks, or the car I was driving. I had Grand Marquises, Crown Vicks, I had a Honda Accord, Range Rover, Aurora's, but some of those vehicles are stereotypical vehicles for thugs or gangsters or whatever they want to consider me. So when they would pull me over, I never told you I was a criminal justice major. In my mind, I wanted to challenge them and question them. Why are you pulling me over? You know, and talking to a police officer who took their job to protect and serve, but also to have power was so that you could bow down to them. So one thing I know now, when I get pulled over, police officer, black, white, Lady, man, officer, I'm so sorry, I apologize. I know I, I, I ran through the light, I was just trying to get home, or what, you know, whatever was going on, and, and, and they love that. And guess what they do now? Slow it down. Don't come through here speeding like that no more. Or, I'm not even gonna run your license registration. Don't let me see you again. And it feels good just knowing that I've gotten to that place now. And it feels bad that I didn't know this back then, but guess what? That's how I talk to individuals, police officers, people in the grocery store, people in the street, people anywhere. What you put into the universe is what you'll get back. And I think that that's what makes us decent human beings by putting that positivity into the universe. And you get it right back every time. <laughs> So realizing that you don't have to be stagnant in one career path. You, could, you can transition from one thing to another, no matter what, until you find what makes you happy. I wake up every single morning and know that if I have to do one event or two events, I'm not tired of it. One question that people like to ask me, and I say I probably hear it maybe once a month, is do you ever get tired of cooking? And I always think to myself, do you get tired of sleeping? Like, I truly enjoy cooking, but at the same time, it's something that's a necessity, just like sleep is. 
And if I know I'm going to use the highest quality ingredients, why would I go and eat something that isn't utilizing those type of ingredients versus what I'm going to put in? Plus, I know what's in it. It's made with love and I can have whatever I want any time of the day. And I don't have to drive somewhere other than the grocery other than the grocery store to grab the items to make. Um, you know, being able to transition from one career path to another. There's so many people that have worked with me. And one year, they're a chef, and I'm giving them mentorship, and the next year, they're a nail tech. I know one person that was a, a chef for three years, and now she's a blogger. I know another guy that was a chef with me, and now he's a photographer. And I know someone who, who really showed me a lot of passion as a chef, and now they're a fashion model. Doing, and they're all doing great in them. And I say that to say because you don't want to feel like you're chasing something because of the money. And I always tell people who say, oh, your price is a little high. I say, you know, my price isn't high because I'm charging you for um, the food. You're getting charged. And I don't say this. You're getting charged for the experience. You know, what I provide, you can't find anywhere else. No other chef is doing it. They're all cooking. Yes, we're all making mac and cheese. We're all making mashed potatoes. We're all making fried chicken. But at the same time, are they using the same ingredients that I'm using? the same highest quality ingredients that I'm utilizing. So, you know, to tie it all back in, you know, just knowing that you can, if, if it makes you happy, then you're in the right field. If it doesn't make you happy, find something that makes you happy. Like there's nothing I would change about being a personal chef. And I'm gonna leave you with this last one. When people say, hey, are you opening up a restaurant? Are you gonna open up a restaurant? Like that's the end all be all. And I think to myself, I got eight books on Amazon that makes money and running and operating the restaurant is not as easy as it looks. And it's not as lucrative as people think it is. You know, I've ran restaurants and I see that overhead really hurts people. My overhead is the commercial kitchen space that I utilize. And then I come to you and cook. So if I'm paying that once a month and I get to utilize that commercial space instead of paying 31,000 for a space down in Southwest, I could pay $800 at one commercial space and not to really drop numbers on spaces and how much they charge, but I could pay $800 and that's like an apartment rent and everything else is my profit. So like I said, it's really not really necessarily about money. The money's going to come. It's about your happiness and in your career path. If it doesn't make you happy, find something else to do. <laughs>
but those presentations are what help in or will help me take my business to the next level because now people aren't just buying into this awesome food they're buying into the experience of seeing the chef present and talk about the food and pouring sauces and like i told you earlier having a great personality and being a decent human being like it's two words personal chef so personal also involves having personality and that's a good personality and being a chef is being able to be creative in the kitchen and provide awesome dishes that you know not only you love and everyone loves and presentation is definitely key i eat with my eyes a lot of other people eat with their eyes i want people to look at the food and say i got to take a picture of this i got to make a video of this before i eat it if they don't i feel like i failed them so using nice garnishes and you know making it look really really pretty on the plate is a must so if you're not going to perfect those things then being a chef may not be for you but if you're going to study and figure out what's going to look great so that my customers will keep coming back then hey i leave you with those nuggets right there <laughs>so you ask why do people hire us i'll tell you why one thing i do is i handcraft the individuals who i hire so when i say handcraft there's a specific look i go for when i say look i'm talking about very clean well kept but on top of that the biggest thing probably the biggest thing is having a big personality so big personalities will gravitate people towards me and will gravitate people towards them so my servers are like, I say, like Chick-fil-A individuals. You know, they just love the customer service. You know, uh, they're always looking to assist or help or, you know, just try to find a way to, you know, just bring a quality experience. And my chefs are well-trained, whereas though I'm showing them if this is how I do it, this is how I season it, this is how I plate it up, you replicate it the same way, you'll win. And they follow instructions. You can't have someone on the team that thinks that they're smarter than you or thinks that they're a better chef than you or that they're, they can actually outcook you in a sense, you know, because those individuals won't listen. They'll actually say, oh, you put sea salt in this Cajun herb spice? But guess what? I'm gonna put Old Bay in pink Himalayan sea salt. And guess what? That throws off the flavor palette of what you just produced and, you know, to me, you can't have those type of individuals. You gotta have people who listen, um, follow instructions and execute it the way you want it, you know? Um, but people also hire me because they know I provide 100% quality ingredients, 100% authentic recipes. So I say I'm probably about a 90% scratch kitchen, whereas though my ingredients are 90% scratch, you know? And you can taste that, you know, you can taste when something tastes filtered or you can taste when it, it feels like this, this, this was breaded beforehand. You know, this came out of a box already pre-breaded and just, you just deep fried this and put a glaze on it. Me, I'm in the kitchen, I'm seasoning up the fish and then I'm breading the fish and then I'll deep fry it and I'll pull it out and I'll drain it. And that tastes way different. So people know that they're getting the highest quality ingredients, 100% organic vegetables. You know, I show myself shopping at Whole Foods, Yes Market, Moms, uh, at times Wegmans, Harris Teeter, you know. So they know that they're getting the highest of the highest quality products. Um, and, and that means a lot to some people. And some people it doesn't mean much to, you know. So to me, I'm here to serve to everyone and, you know, I just love putting smiles on people's faces, you know. When, when, when you're cooking and people walking in the house, their guests are walking in the house and they say, something smell good in here. It, you don't know what that does. Or when people taking bites and they're telling you, this, this kale salad is awesome. Even this is good. You know, and that's items that they didn't think. This is my first time having a Brussels sprout. This is my first time having vegan dirty rice. You know, I love being the guy to pop that cherry. <laughs>so today's experience has been awesome you know walking in the door it smells phenomenal i'm going to ask them what exactly they're utilizing to make it smell so good in here um very very bright i love the colors on the wall you know it looks like someone 
really put some hard work into the uh, decor, you know. Um, but like I said, really, really bright. Then you walk through the door, you see uh, four individuals in here, welcoming, very bright smiles, you know, shake your hand real firm, you know, and, and that, that says a lot, you know. Um, one thing I appreciate is being able to come here, spend time, be able to talk, you know, and actually seeing these photos, the highest quality photos I've seen, I want to say ever, you know, the, these cameras are, are phenomenal, um, as you see. And, you know, <laughs> just being able to be around good company, like I said, being around good people just feels really good and it feels like family. <laughs> It's a great day. My name is Shay Brown, and um, I just want to talk to all my entrepreneurs out there. And if that's you, like you, the entrepreneur, you, the business owner, you, the speaker, you, the coach, you, the author, you, the network marketer, you, the person that just want to do more good in the world by solving a problem and you want to be paid. Right. And so think about right now, if you had more high qualified paying clients that was like banging at your door. How would your life be different um, when there's more revenue coming in and you're able to hire more people and you're able to make a bigger difference? What would that look like? Or, or number two, maybe there's folks that are coming in right now and they're knocking at your door. Boom, 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 boom. But the only challenge you have is you're listening. Listen very closely because this might be you. So listen very carefully. They're not converting fast enough, which means they're talking. They like you. There's conversation going on but they're not converting. So there's two challenges, right? Number one, I need to attract my ideal clients who can pay me. And number two, once they get in here, I need to have a system, a sales model or a process so they convert faster. That means they pay you and then they come back. And if you're listening right now, you're saying, Shay, I want to be able to do that, but I don't want my labor involved. I don't want to work any harder. Shay, I'm, I'm at a place right now where I'm ready to reach more people. Um, I'm on a mission, Shay. And I want you to listen very carefully. You were called to serve a group of folks out there and you can't serve them right now because you don't have the revenue to purchase the resources that are necessary to execute that big vision. If that's you, as you're listening, any of that resonates with you, I'm gonna give you a website, which is Easy Sales Hub. Again, EasySalesHub.com. Let me just spell it. I know you can see it below, but it's E-A-S-Y, sales, S-A-L-E-S, hub.com. Now, the reason you wanna go over to Easy saleshub.com is that that's the place you can come to and you can do two things. One, we'll do a sales audit. So we'll take a look at your sales process, your sales funnels, and we'll see how those are converting. Number two, you can have the tools and resources you need to be able to generate more revenue with less effort so you can serve more folks. So with that being said, as you're watching, go over to www.easysaleshub.com. My name is Shay Brown. Make it a great day, everyone, and um, we'll make some good things how we connect again next time. God bless. Here I was at Galerias Preciados, a big department store in Madrid, Spain, trying to buy a blouse. But it seemed to me that there were more than a thousand blouses there, and I didn't have a clue how to choose. And I was so confused and overwhelmed that I ran out of the store crying. Now, you might say, what's so big? What is a big deal about buying a blouse? Well, the problem was I had just come out two weeks before from Cuba, my country of origin, where I have been under communism rule for 12 years. So I didn't learn to make choices because there were no choices to be had. See, the government will let me buy one blouse, one skirt, one dress, one pair of shoes a year. But that was if they were available on the stores. And half of the time there was nothing on the stores. So if, they, if something came, you had to go, get in line, and then by the time you got in, you were lucky if they still had your size, and they usually had only one color. So I didn't have to choose anything. But now I was in Madrid. I had left Cuba alone. My parents could not come with me. I was 18 years old, 
And I was a mess. I didn't know how to make choices. I had to learn in a hurry. See, I had only a blouse, a skirt, and a dress when I came out, and the shoes on my feet. That was it. So, uh, an, an aunt of mine had sent me $25 that to me at that time, we we're talking 1970, was a good amount of money, but I needed to buy with that, that blouse that I was having so much of a hard time with, a skirt, and I needed also shoes, and I needed underwear. Well, it took me three times to go back to the store before I could make my choices and buy what I had to buy. You know, it, it was a time of learning a lot of things, but by the time my parents came out six months after, I had a job, I knew how to navigate Madrid and its subway system, I had made friends at church, and I had grown a lot in my own confidence and in the things that I could do. My parents were kind of amazed because I had never before left home. And now here I was teaching them what I had learned. And um, so that was my first encounter with a challenging, really challenging moment. And from there, anything else was not such a big problem because it paled in comparison with that first moment when I just left Cuba and had to learn everything from scratch. One of the main reasons I left Cuba at 18 years old is because I have always been thirsty for knowledge and I wanted to be able to further my education. Well, you might think, wait a second, isn't education free in Cuba? Well, yes and no. After the sixth grade, if I wanted to be able to go on, I would have had to become part of the communist Jews, which meant I would have had to be willing to spy on people and tell on them. Well, because I was not willing to do that, I could not keep studying. So here I was, 18 years of age, and I had only sixth grade. So after a few months in Spain, when we moved to Costa Rica with my parents, I had to start on the seventh grade. I was almost 20 years old by then. I didn't want to go year by year by year, you know, it was too complicated. So I, I studied on my own and I took exams for every subject and of every year from seventh grade until the junior year of high school. And then during the school year, I took the junior and the senior years together. I was going to classes for the junior, junior classes in the morning and for the senior classes in the afternoon. So in a year and a half, I did finish high school. But now I wanted to come to the United States to start a college program in music education. There was only a slight problem. I didn't know any English. Nothing, zero. Well, I was ready for a challenge because I wanted to come and start my program. And come I did. Luckily for me, and that's what saved me, I came for the second semester because in Costa Rica classes ended in November. So I came for January. And therefore the college was not set up to give the English proficiency test that they usually gave to foreign students that were coming on a student visa like me. So they decided to let me register on a uh, let's see how she does. Now we are talking 1972. No internet, no Google Translate, nothing of the sort. And I was not the type that learns easily by just going through grammar and vocabulary and things like that. So what I did was I went to the library, I took out children's books, starting with fifth, first grade books, and I went grade by grade going up as I understood and could read whatever the kids in first or second grade will read. I will graduate myself to the next level. 
And meanwhile, the fellow students in the music program will try to really listen and figure out what I was trying to say. And they will say it back to me in the right way, you know, with the right grammar and the right pronunciation. And my roommate, bless her heart, she would make me read every evening from a book, and she will have to correct every other word at least to tell me how to say it right. Well, I needed to pass all my classes because I was on a foreign student visa, and I had to take full 12 credits, and I did. By the end of the school year, I passed all my classes, and I could understand about half of what was going on. Now, I didn't take classes that were too complicated. I took math, because the math in Latin America is higher level than in the States, so I knew I would understand it. I took Bible.